Chateau, it's Thursday, and coming up today on Building a Nation with Sirens of Malta, the Champions League returns, and we are in to the big group stage once again. Hamron join us in the Conference League this time to give us a chance to maybe get into double-digit points. In other news, it's deadline day. Can we get at least 20 players out on loan again like we did last time? Sign another banger, have a bloody lovely time. All that and more coming up today on Building a Nation with Sirens of Malta. And we're fucking dancing. And he fixed the poster. Look at him go. He's a man of the people. Can't be stopped. And such. <laughs> ah. Oh, it's not blue tack, Adrian. It is not blue tack. If you look very closely, you'll see that it is, in fact, sellotape. <laughs> I applied the logic of, if it takes five minutes to do, do it. <laughs> ah. Look at the mood. I know. I'm a new man. What can I say? It's all that walking. I went for a run yesterday. I did swear. It's, yeah. I got a bit cocky towards the end, but it's kind of like that bit when you've gone past the goalkeeper, the defender's not getting back, you can roll it over the line, you start celebrating before you even touch the ball, and then you miss it like Ross Barkley that time, but that's not the point. Ah, look at me go. Lovely stuff. But yes, I fixed the poster. Basically what it was, Ross, right? After last stream, I went straight to the um, the recap video to check the comments and reply to loads of them um, because there were actually some really interesting points in there. And I saw Ian's comment on the VOD and I was like, right, okay, I've got five minutes. Let me go find some sellotape and fix this before anyone else fucking complains. But on the plus side now, chat, we can see the entire set list. I mean, I say we, you can't because of the bokeh, but I can with my big eyes and whatnot. Uh, Eddie from Friends. Eddie from Friends. I've not watched Friends enough to know who Eddie from Friends is. Unless he's one of the main six characters slash really obvious recurring character like Gunther, I would have no clue who that is. My sister would be like, dead on, like her and her boyfriend are like super fans of Friends. Like they went to like that Friends experience thing or Friends Fest or something like that as well. Real name was that. Oh, is it? <laughs> For a second, I believed you. Still as gullible as ever. Um... If you look up Gullivan in the dictionary, you will find me. Is it Jesus Christ? Hey, look, Hadrian, you are looking at a man who changed the name of a youth player. Two minutes later, did a look up for that same name, then fell into his own trap. There is nothing I will not fall for, apparently. I bought a hot tub from Wilkinson's on a fake scam site and then was surprised when it didn't come. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves here, shall we? <laughs> Oh, Adam Goldberg. Oh, I know who you mean now. Really? Hmm. I can sort of see what you mean. If I had more of like slightly more frizzy hair. The old Wilco scam. Yeah, exactly. But is it? Oh, African folk. Nice. Good to see. <laughs> right, King Leopold. Five points clear at the top. Nice. Some small adjustments to bring. Yeah. No, seriously. The RDF stuff is incredible. Um, a lot of people actually, because I was doing the attribute progression in the vo uh, in the recap video, a lot of people have been like, oh, I need to start using RDF schedules. And I'm like, yes, yes, you fucking do. Because I was actually looking through, I don't know if some of you guys have seen the recap video. I imagine those of you that are in stream all the time probably don't watch them because you're like, you already know what I'm going to talk about. Um, but some of our players, I believe it was Palacio, had like a plus seven in one of his uh, roles. Do I have a fish? No, but I used to love fish as a kid. Like, my uncle bought me a fish tank for my fifth birthday, and it was banging, frankly. Let me just, I'll leave it there as I have another sip of my pink drink. Uh, we have quite a lot of stuff to get through today, but the first thing we get to do is the fun part. Well, I say the fun part. The whole thing's the fun part, but we get to do deadline day straight off the bat. Was it your buddy? I mean, it was not one fish. It was like a big old prop. My uncle was like super into tropical fish so he uh bought me this i say massive as a five-year-old it seemed massive but we had loads of fish in there it was dope master plan a hulk huge i don't know if i can even do that because i'd have to actually i could apply the filter to my face cam feed and then see whether that works it's actually a different scene but speaking of it since you've requested it so kindly i'll say yes 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 yes, yes. oh to be fair i kind of need that my back's been kidding me today Yep, I am now seven days in to the 10,000 steps of some former days. Actually, it'll be more than that, but that's just how it goes. Yesterday, after work, I was like, hmm, do I want to go for a walk? Not really. So I decided to go for a run instead. 
and then weirdly was actually able to run really far well i say really far it wasn't really far but for me anyway considering i haven't run in months normally when i come back to running it's like oh you've done 2k well done bro you know but i think the walking's definitely helped with that oh god right i can i yeah i can see what you, i mean i'll take it he's a handsome chap that coat is really nice too i i would wear a jacket like that in fairness so i can't really complain he's older version yeah what i mean he's probably what in late 40s i've had it's one of the comparisons i get is adam goldberg pozuelo occasionally pk which is extremely flattering and not at all correct um yeah i suppose well in friends he's younger isn't he so that makes more sense that's first yellow card there he is it turns out it was adam goldberg the entire time hmm Speaking of past, bro, uh, we have new kits, chat. And I haven't looked at them yet other than our one because I wanted to share them with you first. And yes, we are now sponsored by Pog Ventures. And I love that because you know how much I love the Sleemer Away kit. You've gone with the uh, same pattern for the uh, Sirens Away kit, which I bloody love. I just love that exact kit type. Are any clubs in real life use that kit type? So yeah, we've got Pog Ventures. But more importantly, I think I saw something with the Master kit. That's kind of dope. Oh, I love the collar on that one as well. Like Asensio. Again, I'll take it. Man's a professional footballer, you know? Can't complain. Very simple. Ah! Um, I, I didn't make them. <laughs> like, <laughs> the letter, they get three with their HSB. Oh, I like that middle one. Um, Yeah. We've got... That's kind of sick, actually. I like that way. That, that third kit's actually got proper dope. And Marriott, okay. Oh! That home kit, though. That is... What is that in the background? Is that like... I can't exactly see it. Is that Medi... Oh. Never passed much real life. But it, I didn't make them. It doesn't matter. They're pretty, all right? Let's get over it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, actually... Like... Mm, that's very like... I like that a lot. I always wonder if the... um, If the stripes were like a blue, that would have been... But hey, that's still proper sick. I really, really like that one. Yeah, some of the generator ones are really great. Like, really, really great. Mandoff! Thank you very much for the 23 months. Okay, stadium's expanded. Um, we've never asked for a stadium expansion. Like, as it goes, our stadium expansions have always been done sort of not without our permission, but essentially without our permission. Uh, the board have just done it for us. And in fact, as far as I remember, before we come back to this, the board have... This has been sat in my informational objectives for the last season and a half. So I suspect we're probably going to get another news article at some point. Um, it could be like that, in fact. Yeah, I don't know. But that's probably... They're obviously modelled on something. It was good, man. Oh, good. Chat will tell you. They will. Hammering, what are we saying? Oh, I love... I always love the away kits. Hammering have got a really cool colour palette to work with, too, which is really helpful. Hibernians, that's classy. Oh. Oh, and Joma as well. That's a really classy kit. Both of those are great. Uh, we've got Luta. Luta with the Maltesers. Oh, which means Marsa are up next. I swear I saw Mar... <laughs> kind of had to be done, didn't it, really? <laughs> Marcia have just gone full Marcelona. <laughs> I mean, it had to be done. Their badge is basically Barcelona anyway. That was great. Really like that. Made it to the league stage. We got one in terms of Hamrun. Goodyear made it to the playoff round, but they were both facing Romanian teams, and Goodyear lost to Dinamo Bucharesti, uh, who Hamrun will actually play in the group, which is interesting. Yeah, we'll have a look at the other ones too. Uh, Melita. Oh, love the sash. That's very old school Watford. It feels very Watfordy. Don't mind a bit of that. Moster, that's classy. And back to Sirenes. Now, if you look at the second tier, because they, they are all done, we might as well. Dingley, go on, Dingley, what are you saying? I love the um, part of the skin that Sass has added that allows us to show the kits on big scale. Morning, Beefcake! Oh, wow. Chat, I'd wear those. Maybe not the middle one, just because the way the sponsor is, but that's not your fault. That's just how it goes. Those Dingley kits are sick. Christ, can't we manage Dingley instead, chat? Those are... I love the colour palette. That's a really nice colour combination. Miss much life issues. Um, mostly us being like, why is tactic being weird? Pretty much. And then signing loads of people. Yeah, the, the third kit's dope as well. I mean, Dingley are back in the... I say, yeah, they are back in the second tier. It could happen. You know? Figura. Oh, I kind of... It's goppy, but I like it. And the fact that it's a, a lotto kit as well, which is dope. Uh, Floriana. Ooh. I get there's not much you can really do about that, is it? But they're like, hey, let's just play in our third kit. And they're like, hang on a minute. Spider-Man.png. <laughs> Hello, Jack. How's it going, man? Leah? Okay. It's weird that the stripes start so low on that one. That's interesting. Master Schlock. Love that home kit. 
Uh, yes! Nasha Lions sponsored by NASCAR. <laughs> I'm totally here for that. The problem is, the kit will wear out after 40 minutes. It's a problem. Blame Goodyear. <laughs> Leah with a bit of a love that for that. That's us. I really like that and that and, and that, honestly. They're dope. I really hope they get promoted again now. They can only run left. Uh, ooh. That's a cool background. That works for Sangwan. Sang Leia, or should I say Bradford City? That's dope as well. That's just really out there. I love some of the really weird designs. Go on. Sleeman never disappoint. I, I say this as if it isn't just past for making them, but um, Sleema always knocking out the park. Can we get this? I can put the pack up somewhere if you can download it. Yeah. If Pathro will, um, gives me permission. That's... Sleema just always... I mean, that's how you got to stand out at the shopping centre. Uh, what are you looking for, Brown? Oh, my name's Matt. Sorry. <laughs> I thought that might be what you were looking for. But I appreciate you trying to find out. Uh, St. Andrew... Oh, yes. I love me some purple. It's just... You don't see it often enough in football kits. Santa Lucia. Nice. That awake, it's dope. Tarshi... <laughs> Tarshim be like, mm. I'm loving it. <laughs> that one actually, I kind of like that one. <laughs> Jara just gone sponsorless. They're going pure. Oh my goodness. Zabuj. I feel like I'm falling into the, the event horizon there at Zabuj. Uh, Zur <laughs> Zurich. <laughs> Zuri sponsored by Zurich. That's actually a really nice kit in fairness. It's really clean. Back to Dingley. Fuck it. We'll do the third tier too. Passport's done them all. We might as well. Be silly not to. Hello, Inferno. We were just looking at some lovely kits that Passbro made for us. Uh, let's do General. Malta Air. No wow. Arura, a bit of a weird one with that one. What? Imagine having a black sash and buttons. <laughs> Love that. I don't know. No Gozo ones, no. Um, bit of Marks and Spencer. Yeah. Uh, for Asha. Cause kit Basha is such a good bit of kit, in it? Basha. Oh, Kirkop United have got a really cool colour scheme. Because it's like proper like the English flag. I... That's a kind of cool one, actually. Master Scala. I love the, the zigzag on that. Medina. Oh, yes. Medina would have to have kits like this because of how like classy it is as a place. Uh, Malika. Into sport. Nice. Uh, Mgar. Okay. Oh, Marba. Going for the full on... That That is... A wild. The Knights of Malta be like, mm-hmm, hello. Uh, Mcida, okay. Mtafa. That's quite, I like the home kit, actually. Pembroke. That's, I kind of like that. I like the fact that it's got the... <laughs> That's like the old, um... Was it the Puma ones? The really, like, low-effort Puma ones they did a few years ago. Ormi. Epic! Rendy. Nice. Rabat. Chef Carlson. Well, you got to draw the line somewhere. I like those, actually. Sugivi, okay. St. George. Little. Good up. Oh, that's good. St. Venera. They can't do any worse than last season. Tash oh, I love that Tash Spice away kit. Is that a Christmas kit? Because I'm, I'm on board. Don't get me wrong. A Zaytun? A Tard? Burzy Oh. It's just a little sausage dog on it. And we're back to Arur. Nice. That's some good shit there. There's some really banging kits in there. Like, every time we do this, I always feel like there's a couple in there that I would happily, like, wear. Particularly the Sleema one. The Sleema just always... Whoever's designing the Sleema kits knocks them out of the park every single year, I tell you. That fictional person is doing a banging job. Let me tell you that. Two Tycoon Takeovers. Ah, it could be that they weren't the right type of Tycoon. There is actually different types. We nearly had the proper type take over at Tarshin earlier in this save, and then it fell through. The Dingley home was so damn nice. Um, right, those were both look up No, not lookups. They, it was a song request, which hopefully went through. So, right. Pembroke... <laughs> So it is deadline day. I don't know where we picked off of last stream. I think we haven't done any matches, obviously, because we finished off with Lugarets. Um, I haven't... Oh, no, that's not true. I'm in the middle of maybe picking up a couple of guys. Just cheap players that came through the uh, scout reports in the minutes between there. Uh, Sorry Silla's under a bid from Sweetie, which is nice. Uh, Abbas Selim, which is just a cheap anchor guy from El Shorta. And Adrian Guerrero is just like a cheap guy from um, Mexico. Well, I figured, fuck it, why not, right? Uh, oh, and good news. Temelan Foman or Fomin joins us on a loan for the season from Andalek. So we did get our Kazakh. 
Um, cost me quite a bit. We did have, we have got an optional £7 million fee on the end of it, which I don't know if we're actually going to be able to trigger because that's a lot of money for a player that doesn't fit our system and probably wouldn't want to go out on loan. But he does look pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Uh, also, Krastev joined us, but you saw that. The other thing is our boy, the guy on loan, joined us. Uh, Mahmoud Kebi, who I actually think, the more I look at him, the more... I, well, I wouldn't play him at all. We just liked it because he was Kazakh. <laughs> like... Pretty much. Yeah, we got linked with Lewis Miley because he was still on our shortlist from when we um, had him on trial last summer. Good news. I try my best. Yeah, Mahmoud Kebi is legitimately good, isn't he? I've got him working on um, aerial. Well, his jumping reach. Sorry, his strength, which means his jumping reach goes up. But I think he looks genuinely excellent. Like, six caps for Saudi already. Great tackling. Great teamwork. Marking solid. 14 heading on a centre-back. Wonders will never cease. I like him a lot. He's obviously on loan for the season two, but we've got a clock. We've got a um, a clause on him as well, so I don't think we can do it just yet. Approach to sign. Oh, is that is that because we've already got the contract thing sorted out? I can't remember what the option is on him. Can we even see that? You think it would show it? It probably does actually. I'm just a moron. Oh yeah, optional fee five million. I would pay the optional five million for Mahmoud Kebi, but I want to sort of see how he does over half a season. He's on a youth deal. Oh, true. Yeah, but we've already got an optional five uh, million pound deal sort of him. But we can't do that yet. Um, we need to sort of... We loaned him in for a little bit because he wouldn't actually talk to us yet. But my hope is that by keeping him for a little while, we can sort of get used to him. The problem is he's got quite low CA. Then again, depth is going to be important for us this season. Full of that. Yes. Compensation lower than five million. Uh, it's not so much the compensation being lower than five million. It's the fact that he won't discuss terms with us anyway. So there's nothing we can really do about it anyway. If I approach to sign it, it would just go red anyway. And I don't want to jeopardize our chances at actually signing him. Uh, we can see the compensation, actually. Oh, no, we can't. Because he's technically our player now, isn't he? Scout report? That is annoying. I think it's because he's technically here now that we can't see that information. But I'd pay five million. We have we dropped 12 million pounds on a player last stream, for those of you that missed it, on Alejandro Cazola, uh, who is a Swiss international central midfielder who looked like he had really dope potential. And he's a model citizen. We've, we've Instead of overpriced Belgians this year, we've gone for an overpriced Swissman, Alejandro Cazola. I mean, he's got two caps with Switzerland at the age of, well, at the age at the time of 18. And he actually joined us on his 19th birthday, which means he literally slipped under the net by six hours in the end. Ref for punching opposition player. That sounds about right. Which game was that? Yeah, he'll lose model citizen almost immediately, as I've noticed that any time we sign a player with that personality, within a month it's gone. Um, because mentoring and such. Yeah, we've been throwing some cash about. Well, the thing is, we haven't... We have a little bit, actually. A lot of them are loans with options. So we have spent a bit of cash, but a lot of it's been like relatively cheap buyers with those kind of players thrown in. Obviously, Evdim Krashtev as well, who I accidentally forgot to register in the Champions League squad because I forgot he was here. So he might get pissed at me. We'll have to see. Hopefully he won't, but we are stacked in those options. He has value. I think the reason he has value is because we paid value for him. So the game has sort of established that he has a value of that around that amount anyway. So I don't think his value is likely to drop too much until his contract starts to wind down, pretty much. That would be my guess anyway. Saudi Club's coming for a place. Oh, loads. Um, almost all of our players are wanted by Saudi Club's. But we just have them on long contracts and keep saying no. Um, I don't think we're in any real danger of losing anyone. We have only have we only have we have one upset player and that's Palacio. I think it's one upset player and another other players upset because of it. As in players that I actually care about. Oh no, sorry, my apologies. It's actually three. We have Palacio, uh, Quasi Awua, and um, Luis Brandao, which is really weird because his dream was to join uh, Al Casilla. So there you go. Um, but hopefully that should be okay. It's not too bad. The atmosphere does need to improve a little bit. Um, but there's not a lot we can really do about that other than wait until the window shuts properly and then we can just keep those guys. But for the time being, the window is here. So we're going to take part. See if we can get some new loanees out. Now, attracting interest. Uh, so Millie, Piaggio, that's a... F oh, it's a Sweetie loan. Okay. That he's already under a loan. So Piaggio to Sweetie is a good start. Montagno is wanted by Benfica. That's annoying. Anyone wanted by Maltese sides while we're here? Probably not, right? Unless you, maybe? No, I can dream. Can we sell Jorgensen to anyone? We could try. Um, oh, there's more. Wait a second, a minute. There's more. I didn't think to scroll. Who's Siawane wanted by? Okay. That's surprising me. Vida's wanted by PS... Oh, he's wanted by that same side. Vida's probably only going to attract interest from Saudi at this point, I would have thought. Um, Saya's probably going to go to Balsam, which is okay. We could try and sell him, honestly. I don't think it'd be the worst idea in the world, but I think the first thing to do 
is to get Piaggio out to Sweetie. The question is, what do they see Piaggio as? Not the first choice for his position. It could be because Spanish. Maybe Brando. Uh, that's um, Luis Brando. He's a central midfielder that we signed a year ago. Hmm. My concern with this is that they wouldn't play him. But I suppose there's no harm. If no one else is interested, there's really no harm in trying it, right? The issue is I think the reason they've not bid is because he's not the first choice for the position. But I suppose if we got him out there, then it would make him the first choice because he, by definition, would be at the club. And I could always recall him in the January if it doesn't work. Uh, a lot of potential. Youngster. A lot of potential. Youngster. Soon, the amount of players we've loaned through part exchange to Sweetie, they're going to get to the point where they don't actually have any players for us to buy off them anymore. Uh, yeah, Piaggio. We'll try it. Okay. At least we don't have to pay for these anymore because they actually want the players. That's the great thing about the part exchange is that if they want the play, you don't have to worry about paying for it. Just ensures the loan happens for the most part. Steady loans because the player refuses to go back. Yeah, it does happen. Um, but please enlighten us. I'll be curious to know if there's anything we can add to it that helps us with the uh, the loan farm is always a good thing, right? So let's just have a little look. Oh, that's Sweetie's Club. Oh, awesome. Right. Um, Jorgensen. Let me just look at trans. Is he even listed? Uh, well, who are you wanted by? Oh, pfft. useless. Another Martinique club. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Right, who am I looking for? Jorgensen. Let me just sort by this. Just be easy to find the damn guy. Because he might just be a case of intermediary, if nothing else. Uh, there he is. He's unhappy. He has... Z the problem is he has almost zero value. He's also turned down a few offers. Wow, that's three hours and thirty minutes. I love that on deadline day it just speeds the fuck up. Um, that's a huge intermediary fee. That's around about the same amount of money, and it's a relatively low fee, and it's quick as well. Let's play on the team right now. Probably Palacio, I would say. He just on pure star rating is, I believe, the best player on the team. But also for me, pound for pound, I think he probably has the best overall attributes of anyone on the team. The fact that he can play centre back, wing back, and left winger is just bizarre. It's good. Uh, Kilnian, we've, um, we're back in the Champions League, obviously. Hamron are in the Conference League this time, so we've actually got it, which is good, because otherwise we were going to be in a bit of a pickle, because I'd be worried about our chances this year if we didn't have some support. Luckily, we do have support, so it's all good. Yeah, let's see if that Sweetie deal goes through. We've got 15 hours. Hopefully, we can drop up a bit more interest than in some of the others, but it seems to just come, like, hour by hour, which I really like. We're not probably going to get, like, the... What was it? We got 20 players out on loan last summer. I think that's unlikely to happen. But if we get, like, just a couple of unexpected ones, I'd be pleased. Ones that just pop up out of nowhere. Big clubs want to buy my... Ooh. But at least you've either got a chance to make loads of money off them, or... I would say just keep rejecting... Even if they get annoyed at you, if you're planning on selling one of them, just keep rejecting until the last minute, and then make the bids. Like, that's how we got rid of Rangelovic for an insane amount of money. He doesn't have to shoot. To be fair, he actually got nearly double-digit goals last season. He just has something about him. Oh, what's he got for Rangelovic? Yeah, we got 6.5 million for Rangelovic in the end. I mean, I know he's worth a stupid amount of money now because he's in Saudi, but we were being offered like 300k for him. So we held out and got six and a half million pounds for a guy that didn't want to be here, which I'm pretty pleased with. Uh, I don't think there's any new ones in here, is there? The usual suspects. See, if Ciawane was wanted by a Maltese club, that would be ace, but I'm concerned that yeah, his value is insane, but... Hang on, do we have a... I think we might have got a clause in there as well. It wasn't a huge clause, but there was a clause in his contract, I swear. We need to start, if we're selling clubs to sell, selling players to Saudi, even if it's for cheap money, start putting 50% of Excel fee clauses in there because their values go through the roof. They may even move to other Saudi clubs for those kind of money. Uh, we should just keep an eye on agent offers, even though I find that at this stage they're a little bit annoying. But anyone who's got stupidly high rating on here is probably worth a closer look. The issue as well for us is that because we have such a large transfer budget, even though we can't really use it, the game basically just assumes that every player you want to buy for a lot of the time is going to be like a £10 million signing, most of which are completely naff. Right, Cluj are in for him. It's £20 million quid. And they want us to pay his wages. Piss off. Ugh. Fine, fuck it, whatever. We get rid of him. I'd rather just get him out of the club because he unsettles players. Which we don't want. There's a B minus there, but he is extremely expensive. And a guy called Daniel Wolf that plays for Wolfsburg. Shocker. Set the asking price to 5 million, trying to meet offers are higher. Uh, they're not, because, for example, 
Um, one, the player won't let you set the asking price to five million. They'll just complain about it because they say it's too high. Two, actually, that's it. That's it. <laughs> There's really nothing more to say. That, that's just what happens. Uh, with the player values being so low, you can't put an asking price of five million on them. They'll just kick up a fuss about it and won't let you... I mean, you can do it, but then it just doesn't really work very well. Right, say has gone. Okay. I was hoping those other transfers would go through immediately so we could try and get them out. I'm a bit concerned. That, oh, by the way, Mike's moved to Leeds. Sorry, Mike was Mike is now at Leeds. He moved for like 25 million quid. Update on the skin. Uh, yes, there has been an update on the skin, yeah. Right, so... Uh, wait. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm not used to seeing names like that, but it's an Argentinian news player at Sweetie. What if alone? Was he? But was he wanted for loan by anyone that is in Malta? So, sorry, silla has gone to Sweetie. So that's... Oh, he's a striker. Actually, I'll tell you what. That could be really good for Sweetie. They've got really good, like, wide players and stuff, but they didn't have, like, a focal point. Yeah, it'll be the silly intermediary loans. Test it out. Well, but any player... Okay. Players I don't care about are going to be really low down in squad value and in terms of their status, so they will kick up a fuss but won't care. But any player that you'd actually want to do it on would care, and thus it sort of defeats the point, is what I'm saying. Um, let's see. Actually, I'll do it the other way around. I'm not used to that being an option there. Uh, Jorgensen is wanted. Yeah, Cluj and... <laughs> he got some lines going. It's Melbourne City. As if it would be... What is with it? being only Australian clubs. No matter what time of year, it's always just Australian clubs that are after them. So strange. Had to be, didn't it? Anyone new? Wow, a D-rated player for 10 million quid. Don't mind if I do. Good day. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Also, the best way to raise value of your players is not by doing that anyway. It's just to keep rejecting bids. Bid them up, reject it. Bid them up, reject it. Because then they'll keep coming back with more and more and more. To a certain point, anyway. Right, so Ojeda's in. We don't care about that. Abbas Salem. Right, we might in 10 hours get a chance to up players with higher rep leagues before you sell them. Uh, the value of their, their rep... Hang on. The player's value is determined by the league they play in and other factors to do with the player's reputation, not the league that they're playing in if they're on loan. So it wouldn't matter. So if I loaned a guy to PSG, he wouldn't suddenly gain shitloads of value. He would still be a Sirens player. So it wouldn't make any difference. Particularly he wouldn't play for PSG, but just in this example. Um... Also, you'd have to then somehow find them alone to those clubs in the first place, which is unlikely to happen because if a player isn't good enough for us, they're unlikely to join someone like Manchester United on loan as an example, or even anyone where they would actually increase their reputation. Uh, right. Abba Salam. You can see why I was interested. 120k, one Iraq cap. I figured, also, if he doesn't go out on loan, we have a DM backup. And I quite like his tackling. Got a bit of jumping reach about him. I like him. Wait, he's already under a bid. Oh, that's from us. Wait, does he not talk... Oh, hang on. He hasn't actually joined us yet. My bad. <laughs> That'll be it. Basically, the only real way to drive your values up is to consistently reject offers. Oh, no! Roy! No, Roy, don't do this to me! Chat is beginning. Oh. He, we've The first crack in the facade of Roy Fleming. He's slightly dropped in his max potential. I mean, I was expecting... And also, I think that CA's gone down slightly. Now, that could just be that we know more about him. And actually, yeah, all we need is this. I'm worried that because he's on, he's not actually got a club yet and Gia won't cap him, there's surely no way he declares for England. Then again, we thought that about Silvano Gorgoni, who was unlikely to declare for the Czech Republic. I know he looks so good, right? But we're just worried that he's actually going to be like two and a half stars or something, right? But I like his attributes. Also, I think he's gone up in finishing, you know? It's annoying because we can't actually put him on any training schedules. Because they're interesting. Oh, interesting. Close one from your Leah. Okay. Right. Next one. 10 hours. We get Saba in. Oh, okay. So he doesn't actually have the. Be I like his attributes. What's his injury? Gashed up a leg. That's fine. Right. Dev list. Transfer room. I don't think there's going to be enough time to get him out on loan, but you never know. Someone might be in the uh, market for a DM. And if not, like. And Guerrero as well. Oh, Guerrero might be one we could get out. Oh, wow. He, to be fair, he costs 28,000 pounds. So he's the kind of, he's the exact type of loan farm fodder that we need. The sort of 20, 30K signings that look a bit okay attribute wise, which means they'll hopefully play okay in the match engine. Right. So we get those two in. Now, in 10 hours, are we likely to get both of them out? Probably not. Or, okay. Tell a lie. Gazira are like, yeah, let's have a bit of that. They want a bit of a, they want a bit of a bass. 
That's transfer interest. I'm always going to scroll down just in case there is anything unusual in there. Blue Nose, thank you very much for the seven months. Hi, Matto, and Hello. hi, Chatto. So glad to be able to watch the streams again. Bring on the flood in Genema. Bring on the Flugelheimer. Indeed, it's very important to keep a keep tabs on the Flugelheimer. Oh, we do, but I don't think he's going to get a call up to the uh, anything for Angia until he signs for us. And bear in mind, he still doesn't sign for us for another year. And as far as I know, there's nought we can do about it. I think, honestly, I think if we didn't have him on trial, he might have more chance of getting call ups, which is silly, right? Sellable lads. Transfer value. Oh, yeah, true. Yes, yeah, so I like that. So Jorgensen, Mont Montani was wanted, but it's by Benfica, weirdly. And then obviously the rest of these guys. Like, you can immediately tell that these guys are, other than Siouane, actually, uh, who actually has quite high value, considering. Like, I love that Siouane has the same value. He has a higher value than Kamga and Lend. That's, um, although I guess with the interest from these sides, it kind of does make sense, but they haven't bid. Well, they, I think they, maybe there was one bid. Right. Okay. Anything new? So Salem is going somewhere. That's not going anywhere. Can't go. Oh, nice one, Dan. That's awesome. Oh. You bellend. Okay. Plan B. Would improve the str quality of the starting 11. That's the kind of thing we want to see. Um, so in this example, I found that sometimes if you do a part exchange loan here, it can work. So we're going to try that now. Because I had some success with that a couple of seasons ago. Also a guy called Terence. And if you, if you missed it in the intro, Saints actually have a youth player from Malta. So I'm kind of curious about it. I have put out a scout report on him just to see what he's like. Right, Ava Salem. Two-year loan. Boom. We'll see. Sometimes it gets pushed through easier if you do it like that, but we will have to wait and see on that one. Right, eight hours. Right, so we'll try again. Just accept whatever contract they want. It's usually 10 months anyway, so it's not a big problem. Right. Okay, anything new? So it's still Abbas Salem, and that's obviously going fine. Uh, now he's got transfer interest as well. Wait. Is that just... Oh, it's because he's under a bit... Yeah, it's because he's part of that deal, isn't it? Okay. It went good, medical car. I, if I say so myself, which I do in this occasion. Hmm. Yeah, it's not like last year. I think we just didn't have enough fodder this time. Uh, D and C and... Not horrendous, but I suspect that the wage demands with him would be pretty hefty and the caps would make it even harder for us to make it low. Also, that's an area of the pitch where we're actually pretty stacked in as it is. So he's now in there. God damn it. This is looking like a pretty quiet one. So nobody wants Adrian Guerrero, or do they? No, they don't. Okay. We'll try again. Although it was only six hours to do this in, so it seems unlikely. Maybe last year was just a flash in the pan, but I don't believe it is the case. It's just a weird one like that. Um, what I probably should do, even though we've only got minimal amount of time left, would be to just mass set these guys. Oh, I can't do that, can I? Where's can? Mass offer them for loan, just in case. I suspect it's not going to... I tried to go back in for that Duda guy again, but they now want £13 million, uh, despite the fact that it says that. So that's definitely a no-go. Oh, little update with the old John... Uh, not John. What's his name? Uh, John Ar Arbolida thing. So I couldn't get rid of him because, and this is the fun part, <laughs> when I went to the team report page after screen, after stream to capture the players that he was... Uh, the clubs he was scouting, when I highlighted him, it went blank. And then I couldn't see even on the other page, which teams he was in charge of reporting on, which is just hilarious. Man is clinging to a job by dear life. So now what I'm doing is every time a team report comes through, I'm assigning it to anybody but him. So over the course of like a year, it will just whittle down all the reports he's doing until he's doing none. And then we can just bin him off. Cadre loan. Yeah, but Cadre loan to who? Like, you can't just say Cadre loan. <laughs> Unless you have, it takes two to tango. A loan is necessary, sure, but we can't loan him to a club if he's we don't have a club to loan him to. Um, believe me, I'd love a loan for Kadri, but you can't force things unless they literally, you know. He's got quite high CA, and that's the problem. Like, we could try a cheeky... Um, we could just try and be cheeky and see if Hammer would take him. But I suspect they probably wouldn't, and they also have a lot of loanees and centre-back from us. It's worth a go? Do you know what? Fuck it. 
it, there's really no harm in trying but I suspect that because the only club he's realistically going to go to is Hammerin and frankly it's the only club I'd realistically want him to go to because they're in Europe and we need their help see if they've got any suggested players no um is this where he doesn't show up in here now I might have taken him off the loan list as it happens uh Salim Kadri who else would I want to maybe bundle in with this we've got four hours Cause quite a lot. I mean, El Kamaji would be kind of fun. If by some miracle they would take him. Let's try it. Let's see what, they, what they'd what they want. Because they would ask us for money here. I reckon they want like 2 million pounds. Or 2.6 million pounds. Now, what I have found with this is you can actually negotiate these quite a lot. There you go. I could probably get it down further, but I just want to experiment with this since we don't have a lot of time. And if I could actually get both of these guys out on loan a hammer and I would take it in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'd pay the 1.5 million to have both of those guys at Hammer. They are both five-star PA. But there's zero chance that either of them take this loan, unfortunately. We may have enough chance to try one of them. But I suspect that it's pretty much a no-go. I think they're just too high in CA. Hammer and I now, the one thing that might help us is that Hammer do have an even better squad than before. So maybe there's a chance because they do have that Armando Perez guy on loan from us. But I think this falls through almost immediately. Oh, a Vela Dube. Nice. Here we go. Who's one in you? St. Andrews. All right. St. Andrews it is. What are we saying with them? Would improve the quality of the starting 11? You know it. We probably don't have time to do any silly bollocks, so we might have to do a loan exchange. But it doesn't matter, honestly, because they, it wouldn't cost us any money. It's not like before where... Well, I'm a bit concerned that they wouldn't have a player that they don't consider good enough because it is St. Andrews after all. Their squad is probably not full of talent. Uh, I might just try this on a youngster instead, see if it works. Presumably they'd prefer someone like Avela Dupe for two years than... Yeah, okay, cool. We'll try and get that one done. Next sale. Hang on. You should add a loan back and percentage of the price. Um, We tried that and it actually didn't do any difference. If I recall. Yeah, in fact, we tried that last time, last summer. And it didn't make any difference at all. Because they don't consider any value in the player that you're buying off of them. Because it's a player that they don't want in the first place. So by offering them a player back that they don't want, it defeats the point. Okay, so nobody wants Guerrero, which is a shame. Uh, but he has been offered out a second time using that other thing, though. They shouldn't ask for huge money. True. A Libertad agent offer. We'll have a look. Oh, there you go. So they, one of them, or, one or both of them said no. What I will do is, because I want to see... I want to see who it is. Just bring this right down as well. Okay. Probably could have got away with less than that. But we'll see. Uh, agent offers... Ariel Portillo. He's quite cheap. 22, though. Plays in a position that we already have far, four starting players in. Wouldn't He's unlikely to accept a contract that's not regular starter, squad player, important player. And I feel like it would just be a waste to have him on our team. Who's he wanted by out of interest? Aldo Hale. Which means I suspect that he'd also want massive wages. What about this B-minus guy? A lot of caps. Backup left back. Yeah, but we already have th four of them. So which one's the backup at that point? Because we have Palacio, Mayhem Sultan, Jar Jar, Montano. And I think there's another guy we've got as well now. Plus, there's no way they'd stand for being a backup. Basically. Managed to get generous from foot and defensive. Oh, wow. That's insanely. And Vega as well. Yeah, technically. And I actually really like him there. See, we've still not managed to get a foreign affiliate, but I think that's just because our reputation... Out of interest, Tuffers, what is your national rep? Uh, sorry, your, your rep stars. Is it three or more? Because I'm curious. Because I've been told that we can't get international affiliates until we've reached three-star reputation, which we're just not there yet. I reckon this year, though, we get it. 3.5, yeah, so that would explain it. We just can't seem to crack it. I like this guy a lot, but he would cost us probably in the ranges of about five to six million pounds. He wouldn't... He'd want 15 grand a week. And a shitload of promises. It's just, I don't think, and he can't even cross a football. And he can't even play the position. Not that we, you know, obviously we could train him there. That's not really a problem, but it would take time. Uh, yeah, he's simply a, a not a necessity at this stage. Looks like we're going to get a Vela Dube out. What, is, what does this guy even look like out of interest? Yeah, okay, he's not very good, is he? <laughs> but hey, it's a loan, right? Uh, that's the one for a Vela Dube. All right. Accept that. 
I could see almost zero chance of this going through. But we might get one last chance to try Kadri. Wait, what? No way. Hassan Al Kamaji on loan to Hamrun. Yeah, we'll try Kadri next. By himself, maybe. That is insane. I, I don't think you realize how big of a deal that is. Uh, he plays in the same position as um, Amanda Perez, doesn't he? But still, that's a lot of depth. Perez can play up front and on the right as well, though, I believe. Hello, doll. Miss much. Uh, no, you've actually come in at the pivotal moment, which is uh, we've just managed to loan out our five star Libyan left winger to uh, Hamrun, which is amazing. That's a huge deal. Hamrun. Oh, not Hamrun, sorry. It is overdone. Oh, bear in mind, when I say it's overdone, I, I mean in terms of um, content, not people playing it. I think people play it. If you're having fun, you're doing the right thing. It's just when I make content, I have to think about what would fit in the space that I'm making content for, you know? 2064 that's insane fair fucking play also the fact that you've done ha you've actually got and are you managing the national team with andorra as well because that's amazing that you've managed to reach that far fair play is this a, are you doing this on fm24 or is this fm23 and carried over potentially because 2060 i mean maybe you just enjoyed the game a lot right <laughs> don't <laughs> you're in the right place okay um that's definitely happening that's definitely happening no well none of them okay right Ah, using a downloaded transcript. Yes, um, massively more effective than the regular ones, Harithy. It Harithy? Harithy. Harry Timothy. It's, it's the equivalent of um, going out for a one run and winging it versus having a professional, having Mo Farah coach you for a marathon. I suppose that's the difference between the two, right? So, yeah. Um, if you want if you want the uh, schedule by the way if you do exclamation mark uh, training you'll get a download link for it in chat as soon as start hey fair enough dar right you got to keep your brain smart right Bicky car smart are they wait where did you see that oh hang on doodoo -doo isn't wait you mean my doodoo -doo? <laughs> it might be the other dude was that in the news Am I missing something? Bring drugs in, maybe. <laughs> Either way, should be in here. I mean, that's also very true, but you got to kind of balance things out, right? Okay, before... Oh, odds... Uh, no. Maleka, no. Magabane, no. The Vela Jube, ironically. Massetti, yeah, boring. Right, um... Kadri then, right? So... If, if Hamrun... Had Kadri at... I'm just out of interest looking at Hamrun's setup. Yeah, they have Lucic, Lucic on the right. Pe can Perez play on the other side? Yes. Uh, Perez can also play up front and in the centre. Mm. In fairness, I think the only place we were ever going to get Komaji out on loan was to Hamrun. So we might as well try it. If he doesn't play, he doesn't play. But bear in mind, Perez can move into the middle where Bel Kebler is as well. In more depth. Uh, yes, if you actually click the link... Um, to RDF's website, embedded in the webpage is a video of his that explains it all in great detail. I just linked to his website rather than the video because that way you get both. Salvucci, yes, he's really good. Um, I say really good. He's good for Hamrun and has been for a while. Like, he's banged regularly. So, 23 goals that season in total, 29 that year. Only got 12 last year, actually, which is surprising. Maybe he had an injury. <laughs> yeah, football. <laughs> Ah, it is what it is. We all have issues, right? Um, okay. His explanation in the video is extremely important because that's where he talks about the things that I've now taken on board with regard to additional focuses and stuff like that. Uh, right, so Kadri. So he'd be up against Umaru Sise, who's actually really good, and Yunus El Amrani, who's actually really good. Oh, two hours. Is that enough time to tr okay i've got an idea hear me out this may or may not work i don't know if you can even do this or not kadri can play dm i don't know if he can or not but that isn't my idea but i'll have a look I, but bear in mind um when you loan players to clubs they're really unlikely to play players in their oh we, we oddly no <laughs> oddly no um that definitely wasn't the song you requested Fraj. let me just uh refund your points for that 
Yeah, pace links are much better. Um, I will keep whatever that is in there. <laughs> just because I like it when the uh, song bot just goes off on its own vibe. Yeah, I love that he can play centre mid, but not DM. Don't you dare to ask him to be DM. You're making a cracking ball with a midfielder. Right, okay, so here's my idea. I think Benson... I've heard the name Benson Boom before. I think I've seen them on TikTok. I think the guy's a really good voice, does he not? JMG, yeah. Better than the boat. He is, but... It's whether they would take him and whether he would go because he might worry about the uh, Oasis, whatever. Do you know what? I was listening to a podcast about Oasis and the bath yesterday. So <laughs> I'll accept that. Uh, right. So here's my thought. Can we do a part exchange with both Hamrun and the others at the same time? As in, can I use him as a make weight in multiple deals at the same time and then just see which one goes through? Maybe. Just an idea. I don't know if it will let you do this, but we could try. Doesn't... Right. Place to exchange. Uh, he's not on that list, is he? It's just a theory. To be alone. Lock it in. See what they say. 1.3 million is unhinged. They'll probably go for about 600. Okay, seven. Fine. We'll try that. No song found. Oh, it's an album. Right. Preseason pillows into Wellington Club now. Do you mean Andrea Pereira by any chance? <laughs> um, well, niche topic. I know, crazy, isn't it? No, I was just in such a vibey mood yesterday when I came back from my run. I was super happy with the run and how well I'd done, and I for once actually felt at peace because normally my brain is all over the place and I can't concentrate on stuff. But I was just laying there, like actually listening for like a good half an hour, which is very unlike me. Pereira has done really well at Fulham, but he is still very wasteful um but what i will say is we tend to lose control of games when he's not playing so he has he has sort of intangible factors on the pitch that may not translate into statistics a lot of the time but we do seem to play much worse when he's not on the pitch so he's clearly doing something it's just um difficult to quantify i suppose right so that's hammering let's try oh i definitely recognize this song uh we were gonna do goodyear as well because why not right I don't know if it'll let me do this, but I want to try it. Because otherwise, we'd have to, we wouldn't have time to like make the deal and cancel it at the same time. It may not even let me do this. But I want to see if it will. Oh, it will. Intriguing. I also wonder if they would want a different amount of money or whether there's like a set fee for players they don't want. Wow, okay, they're properly, like, being Marty about this. It seems like no matter what, it's about the same. How's he in the Brazil squad? Uh, because he's played really well. Like, end of the day, Pereira has played really well, so he's obviously there's obviously a gap in the squad there in his position, so they've, uh, yeah. Iwobi, yeah, but Iwobi has been, again, Iwobi's been absolutely brilliant for Fulham this season. Um, I was a little bit underwhelmed when we signed him just because I'd sort of always attributed Iwobi to being profligate, right? But... He's actually been far better at finishing this year for Fulham, and his creative drive in the midfield, particularly when he plays centrally, is... Well, actually, when he's out wide as well, because he hasn't, he drifts into the middle anyway. He's brilliant. Yeah, we've kind of... And it's annoying as well, because have we not lost at Wolves in a game where we were very, very good? But you know what it is. It happens sometimes, right? Where you just play well and lose. But it's nice to do it the way around as well. Bear in mind, Rodrigo Muniz was even in the uh, talk for a Brazil call-up. Wasn't quite him. Wasn't quite yet for him. But I'm... I'm so happy for that man. Uh, for Ruggie. I'm going to try Sweetie as well. Just to see if there's any option here for this to work. Because if it does go through on one of them, then we only have to pick... It's just giving them an option. Maybe there's the right club is there for him, but I feel like any other club would be far too... It wouldn't be good enough for him, pretty much. Um, as much as I would like him to go to one of these. But I suspect he turns down all three of them. But just in case he doesn't, right? Imagine the scenes. Yeah, I think it's literally dead on 675, isn't it? That's the, that's the amount. Yeah, they all want the same. Yeah, that was weird. I mean, I didn't watch the game because I was in Malta at the time, but I was very happy. I was um, we were down at the seafront. Pog was on fro on the phone to a mate when the uh the late the, what was it ninety seventh minute when I went in. I was dancing around the seafront. It was great. Fifth Champions League spot. Yeah, it just goes down. Um, promote from the Europa. Well, yeah, but they would be promoted from the Europa, but the spot still has to exist. So essentially the fifth place team would be in the Europa but then as a result of the extra Champions League spot they go in the Champions League which means that it has to move down um, hopefully all the song requests have now gone through 
Brick. I think we'll find a lot of guys called like Brickenhouse and stuff, or Scaris Brick of Reading. Who is a region, obviously. It wasn't Man United, actually. Hasn't played a lot, though, unfortunately. Oh. Ah. Missing his work rate. Oh, well, I think it does show. I mean, Everton have done okay, but like, it's hard to know. It's hard to comment on clubs I don't watch a lot of the time. Like, I've only really seen a lot of Iwobi since he's come to Fulham, but I'm really happy with the signing. I'm. We've actually made some really nice business. First, there you go, Moynton. It was just, it was set in, set in stone. Right. Let's see if any of this works. I reckon all three of them just get immediately turned down. But there you go. Right. So that's through. Uh, which is the one to... I can't believe we've got Hassan al Kamaji out on loan. That's wild. And we also, therefore, get uh, Avela Dube. Probably won't see him again in the save, honestly. But, right, let's try all of these. Imagine if more than one of them was accepted. Although, I actually don't think that's how it works, does it? It just defaults to the... Then again, we've never had more than one of them accepted from the same player, have we? But I believe it normally just defaults to whichever one is accepted first. But I suspect all of them just get immediately turned down, right? Millie's under a beard. Jorgen's under a beard. Uh, Kadri is wanted, obviously, but that's by massive teams. Imagine if we got him out on loan. Right. And... Yeah. Okay. So Kadri's going nowhere, but the fact that we got El Kamaji out is absolutely unhinged. Uh, let me just see, with the final 30 minutes, if there is any other really high potential players that are listed for loan. Corzola is never going on loan. Massetti? Maybe? Siwane, no chance. Montagna, we kind of need him a little bit at the moment. We could try Massetti. Just on a vague whim, of maybe the, he would go out and loan somewhere, perhaps. I think it's unlikely, but for someone like Good, you might be. Can't hurt. Striker couldn't finish their dinner. Anything can help the situation. Okay, cool. So, first thing I would say is, um, of those shots, because shots are great, but what's the XG looking like? Um, and how many of those shots are on target? The, the on target part is actually less important than the XG side of things, but they also do matter. But one of the first things I would say is what speed or what tempo are you running for a start? And also, um, what are like the basic sort of finishing and striker attributes of your main men that are getting the chances? Because you should be able to see who's create, who's getting the XG. Also, sometimes it will just happen um, as well that you will have games like that. Because it could just be that you're getting a lot of long shots that are actually really low value. And that's obviously bad. Um, it's fine when you've got them in comparison, like in conjunction with a lot of decent shots. But a lot of the time it doesn't work like that. Uh, right. It was Clifford, wasn't it? Clifford Massetti. Let's see. So he's already listed there, which is interesting. So they might go for this. Oh, Jesus. I don't think, even if they went for this, I'd be unlikely to want to do that. It seems that they'll accept just over half if you are trying to do it like that. Using FM is very flawed. It's, yeah, true, but it still has... You, when we, This is what happens when people say things like, oh, this is lying to you, that's lying to you. It's like, yeah, it is, but you don't have anything else to go on. So you kind of have to sort of use the information and then make your own judgments based on that information, knowing for a fact that it isn't entirely accurate, essentially, right? Highest tempo. Ah, well, there you go. Right, so... So firstly, if you're having 15 shots and you're only getting 0.6 to 0.9 XG, that means you're probably getting a lot of long range shots or low quality chances. So the first thing I would say to do is turn the tempo down because if the players are rushing opportunities, they're most likely going to be missing or having lower quality chances. Um, maybe as well, if you don't have turn, if you don't have work ball into the box turned on, maybe consider that. The other thing I would consider is maybe turning on uh, shoot less often as a personal instruction to some of your slightly more peripheral players, i.e. the guys you don't want shooting. If you could have a look at your some of your stats from the matches and figure out who's actually having the shots if you see a player and you're like oh that guy's a dm or he's a wide player with bad shooting maybe slap him on shoot less often and that might hopefully allow him to look for the pass a little bit more as well oh so yes we couldn't get that deal over the line that's what i would do in those sort of situations but i find if you're playing on a really high tempo you will often i find have less now oh, this is what i was expecting to happen we should be okay i just need to yeah, I will register him at the first opportunity because he actually deserves to be in the squad. That was a genuine, actual oversight on my part. Right, Champions League time. But first, a little look up. Uh, Marangols. Uh, let's have a look. I don't even know what that means, but we're going to find out. Oh, uh, am I spelling that right? Let's try that. They will still shoot, but pick better shooting opportunities, or they'll end up passing the uh, next couple of Just try a couple of th things out like that. So what I, what I would say is... Um, 
Unfortunately, no, none of those. Uh, do I have any games I can show you this? Yes, I can. Right, so for example, Ludigrets, right? Uh, right, we have 24 shots in this game, but notice there's only six on target. Luckily, I'm still happy with that because we created a decent amount of opportunities. But what I would have a look at is things like um, uh, attacking stats here, for, for you anyway. And just look at things like back. shooting, right? Voltaire and look at who's actually having the shots. So for us, that's a striker. That's actually our central midfielder, but he takes free kicks a lot of the time. And that's our, our wing back. But say you notice like a central midfielder that's got really bad shooting, immediately go in there and maybe tend to shoot a little bit less often. If you don't have work ball in the box on, I would sometimes consider that as an option just because I find that that will tend to stop you shooting from long range a lot of the time. Do you know what? Fuck it. You want to go to Melbourne City, you can go to Melbourne City. <laughs> Need you song, uh, with a song request, you just take the the channel point reward and then you just paste the uh, Spotify link into the channel point reward thingy, into like the message associated with it. Pressing further back helps with more more space equals better. Yeah, I mean, it, that will depend heavily on your like tactical setup as well. I, I'm thinking more on like the base thing. Now there is sort of like misconceptions about how like you know low tempo, technically low tempo doesn't actually mean you're going to have more shots on target, but I find that in practice it often does in some ways. Because it's not really about you rushing your chances. It's more to do with the way that the ball progresses up the pitch. But I found that I just... I take that logic and it just seems to work anyway, even if that isn't the reason behind it. But here's Gaetano Ciotti, who's an Italian at Liverpool. Different Liverpool. Certainly can't hurt to scout... Can't hurt, uh, can't hurt to scout him as we slowly remove John's workload. Oh, right. Okay. I, I don't think a Marangon was coming up with anything even before I added that, though, in fairness. Uh... Oh, there is a couple, actually. There is, well, they'll say that. There is one, one actual. And it is this guy, Alvaro Marangon, who is an Italian-Argentinian. He's out of contract, actually. 23 years old. The usual. I don't believe I do, no. Um, I shouldn't do. It might just be because this is a live performance that it might be lower in the mix because of Spotify. Even though I do have that volume equalization thing on, it's probably just because it's a, a live performance that uh, Spotify randomly chose when the bot came through. <laughs> right, finish the coffee. Coffee done. Champions League start. I love how his name just gets blocked out. So it's Mr. It's M Rang Om. Okay, bit of that. No longer concerned about promise. That's fine. That's a shame, Farouk. But you do realise. Like, okay, then leave. It's a shame because I like Farouk. But if he's going to be a little baby about it. Oh, hello. So. Do you remember about uh, last stream or the scene before, we had a couple of people asking about the new TV rights stuff in FM. This is this. This is what that looks like, basically, when you get... Um... So we are... there is a new TV deal, which is not the one that me and the Hadrian added. This is the actual inbuilt one. And you can see that there is actually an increase, right? But it's gone from 18 million to 28 million, which it's a good jump. But think about it in how it actually works. What that means is now, for the next three years, the clubs are going to get... 28 million instead of 18 million. But remember, that's not what you get. That's what the entire league gets. <laughs> and that's where it gets a bit confusing. Because the game doesn't tell you how much you get of this. It, that's how much the entire league gets as a group. So this won't scale very well. So the point where we're, when we're a top five league, we'll maybe be getting 50 million a season as an entire league, which means less than 4 million a year, um, which is still better, but it's not as good as it could be. Uh, I wish it provided a bit more detail. And also, with the, the deals being quite long... Yeah, that also isn't a 50% increase, is it? Oh, no, it, yeah, no, it kind of is an inch. No, it is a 50% increase. 50% of 18.6 million is around about 9 million, which is added onto that, which is roughly 50%. So, yeah, that actually, the math does be mathing. Right, we want rotation here, honestly. Yeah, that, that threw my brain as well for a second. Quasi and Watara, Ortiz, Cadola... What I, God, I like having some depth here. Since Abbas didn't go online, I could even put him in here, but I probably won't. Uh, because he's knackered for a start, and international as well. Cool. That'll do. We'll end up losing this, but I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Because we need to rest players for the... Uh, oh, yeah, we weren't doing that anymore, were we? I actually had a chance to test this tactic um, with Fulham yesterday. While I was doing... I was gathering some data for the elderly youth player video. Oh, shit. Which has now gone out on the Patreon. But I was working through a season with Fulham just to get to like the the intake day so I could show something. And I was playing the tactic with Fulham and it actually worked quite nicely. Can grow. Oh no, it, it can grow. Um, but hang on. So, but that's in 2062. Like, and I think like the problem is it, I feel like it scales too slowly is my issue. Uh, 
Cheers, of hemp. The fuck was that about? So we've lost the uh, Super Cup for the second year in a row. <laughs> Luckily, the what is that? The board don't care about the Super Cup, though, thankfully. Which is good. But hopefully that isn't going to affect our, um, like, morale too much. I'm just assigning everything to Scott Donnelly at the moment. Good God. Mm. God, that guy got... These two have both got really high CA. Mateus Paez. Fuck, he's good. <sighs> yeah, the physicals at 18. He's not even that slow. 15 acceleration, can jump. He's got great balance. Technicals are okay. Mark, and his weak point is the one thing that is super easy to improve. Mm, not yet, but he's one to keep an eye on. Easy pick out. True. I know that Scott Donnelly's at the bottom, which makes it easy for me as well. Wills, thank you very much for the 12 months. Hope you're well. 225. That's actually pretty good. Um, I think the problem is not when you start with bigger leagues that already have good money. It's when you start with leagues that don't have a lot of money. That sort of is the issue because it, it scales quite uniformly. But when you start with nothing... So two times one is two, but two times 50 million is 100 million. You know, it's that's the thing. Oh, true, we didn't look at the other player, actually, did we? Uh, oh, he's a wing back. Good agility. Also very good. And God, I hate those value ranges, man. Also won't talk to us. Definitely also going on the shortlist. Thank you. Thank you for drawing my attention back to that. Because he's got... And he's good on both feet. Six foot tall. Fairly professional. Fairly good on the pace as well, actually. Yeah, it's not a huge amount of money for the clubs. Give, bear in mind, they're going to get, like, probably close to a million a year um, from our current deal in terms of the one we have set up, which is going to scale much better. Although, I'm glad to see that the one in the game isn't actually being as disappointing as we thought it was going to be. In the original tests, it was really bad. So the fact that it's actually slightly more accept slightly more useful is kind of good. Spend city money on it. Oh, yeah, bear in mind, like, I would spend money on that guy. Ah, there we go. One of them's happy now. But we literally can't do a deal. But he's the kind of guy I definitely want to go back in for later. Like, I've got a load of guys on my shortlist that I feel like are going to be signings one day. Just a couple of them are only like 16, 17, so they're just kind of keeping an eye out. No, it was sort of one ring, right? So this is the thing again. I feel like it shows it. Uh, Where is it? There. That's all it shows. So once you get past that email, the only information you have about your TV deal then is the length. Why not add in the numbers into there as well? It just... Tell us about your scouting method. Um, what what something would you like? Because there's a lot of different scouting methods we're using. So it's not just as simple as saying this. So if you want to know the way that we found those guys particularly, that was a team report that we got on River Plate. So we got a team report up that, like this. Team report, River Plate's under 20 squad. That's how we got this information about those players. In in this occasion, that's what we did anyway. Um, but if you want more information about stuff, then let me know. Uh, that's annoying. Fuck. But I do have lots of videos about this as well. Uh, about that specific thing, in fact. So let's see. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, poor Marcelo. Oh, I feel a bit bad. Um, the lone man in the... What did he do in the first team squad to get him put here, eh? Right, Villarreal at home. I feel like we should be doing well in that kind of game. But I'm still a little bit concerned about our, the way we're playing lately. 20's player is good. Um, a couple of them. I've actually forgotten who was who now because they obviously went off the shortlist by now. But it was certainly worth doing. That I will definitely... Uh, in fact, he was one of them. David Orojuela was one of the 20th Plenty's players. Now, I think 2 million was maybe an overpayment on him, but he was decent. I feel like as well, that was just one season in one sample size. I think if you did this a couple of times over a span of like five years, you'd definitely find some absolute bangers in there without a shadow of a doubt. Weirdest football thing that misses with your brain. Swedish League has played in a calendar year, but the domestic cup is... Is he really? I didn't... Weirdly, I've managed in Sweden and I never noticed that before. This is where Jack's about to tell us all about it. Oh, I nearly gave that to John. That would have been catastrophic. God. They really do be cooking up some absolute magic at River Plate, don't they? Massive side benefit making the European Cup is that it triggers a lot of release courses on great players. Yes, yeah, it does, yeah. 20 is plenty methods. So I believe we have a command for it. But if Son of Akish is around, then basically it's a filter that you can use that finds you a very specific type of player. And 
Son of a Quiche has a media file link to that filter. Um, it's the same one that I've got here, but he's actually created a media file link for us, which is really dope. I'm going to make it into a command when I get the chance. Chipped off to seven oaks. Yeah. I've heard it's lovely. Seven oaks is in, is in Kent. <laughs> right. Okay. Virial at home. These ones are must win. Fafana Watara, not happening. Uh, Melman. It's a shame about Padilla. Ortiz and Kamga. No, no, no. It's got to be Diaz. Diaz is actually... He has the highest expected XG per 90 of anyone on this team, which is exactly what I want out of him. So I'm really pleased with that. Uh, Palacio Vida. Rojas Kadri. Okay. So who is it? Who's... Ex I'm trying to think who's not in the team. It wasn't... It, it kind of is Rangelovic, actually, isn't it? Oh, no, because we had the injury to um, Ever Espina, didn't we? Crocker's Revenge. Crocker's Revenge is a banger, to be fair. <sighs> Zero goals. Uh, sorry, I meant XA per 90, not XG per 90. Um, admittedly, only one assist as well, but he's already got 2XA in three starts and a substitute appearance, which is quite hard. You know that XA seems to be a lot lower than XG in general because it's more spread out. Uh, Kadri is not the fittest right now, but what's his passing like? Actually, very good. All right, we take that. No Lignon. I don't trust him in that position. It's it's a tough one. Like, Lignon also lacks a huge amount of match sharpness, which we know how important that is. A couple of FM people. Potential addition to the transfer toolkit. Using screen flow, set up transfer rumors from Premier League or other leagues, and then you can see it heads up weekly. All the players' big clubs are trying to sign in a rumor mill. Oh, okay. Okay, I like that. That's an interesting prospect. I think I'd get confused if I set that screen flow up, but that is definitely an interesting idea. I love the ingenious ways people come up with to, like, find stuff for that kind of stuff. That's dope. I really like that. Yeah, I th basically, we want players that are as close to match sharp as physically possible. So Quasi is actually doing really well on that side of things because it is just such a huge detriment. Um, I'd rather have a player, genuinely, that's missing slightly some actual condition rather than match sharpness. It's crazy, but... 20 matches, only suffered one goal. Christ on a bike. That's insane. It's like Van der Sar-esque. Okay. I think that's the team we want. Concerned about Kadri, but we've got options if we need to. Wait, I have got options, right? Yeah, Lignol can come off the bench if needs be. I'm a bit concerned about our lack of... Let me just get rid of the uh, youth team here so I can see who's actually available. So only really Cthulhu, and I do want to put Cthulhu in the team at least. Instead of probably a, instead of a Fifi, I think the likelihood of a Fifi coming on and making an impact is almost zero. Um, we're still persisting without the instructions for the time being, aren't we? To try that out, it's tactics, beefcake. In case you want it, uh, right? The idea being that when I've got more tactics to work with, I'll just bundle them into the same folder. Okay. I want to see some progress with this today. I want to see us play well, get results, right? Because we've been a bit weird at home in Europe this season, and I don't know why. And honestly, if we have another season where things look really sussy for seemingly no reason. I might consider us actually maybe building another tactic that still involves some of our key components to, in that bit at the end of the season. Because I know that the match engine didn't change in the latest winter update, but it does seem like a lot of this stuff has happened since the winter update. But what I would also say is I'm pretty certain that the winter update occurred Cooper, before the season eight. where we also had the best season of the same. So if that's the case, then actually eight. I'm less likely to want to do that. Wingers, the problem is we have wingbacks and a lot of them, and I wouldn't want to lose that because I think wingbacks are so overpowered. And having a system with both wingbacks and wingers would give us an enormous gap in the midfield. But we can work on it, potentially. Try some stuff out at that point. Guest in and Addy Dazzler. Thank you very much for the follow. Right, let's go. But I'm prepared to give it this season and see how we look. I've just been very concerned by our performances at home in Europe this season for some reason. Halfback and Libero, do they replace each other when attacking? Yes. Yes, they do. Basically, the reason we put the uh, halfback there is because um, we, we wanted to play a libera and knew that in order to really get anything out of him and not disrupt the entire balance of the squad, we kind of had to. Inverted wingbacks. Yeah, but again, our wingbacks are good because of the role that they play as wingbacks. So if I invert them, it completely neuters their ability to do what they like doing. Like, the reason our wingbacks work so well is because they get to the byline, put brilliant crosses in and create chances. If they're inverted, they're not going to be doing that. And it would sort of lose the point of having them. Like, we've signed these guys and developed into the players they are to play the roles that they do, where they bomb forward and get brilliant balls in. If they're inverted, I feel like it. they need to have way better finishing and slightly better sort of technical ability in certain other areas to make that work for me. Like, I don't want to tear it up to the point where we end up in a ridiculous situation, but I feel like there's definitely things we could maybe do to optimise. Feed up. Go on. Edge of the box. 
<sighs> that's poor. That that's really poor there. Mm. Right. Oh yeah, wingbacks have been super good this year in general. Uh, 20th, 29th of February. I'll have to have a look through the VODs and see where we were up to in terms of uh, the streams at that point. Because if it was during that ridiculously good season as well, then I'm less willing to consider that it was the game that did anything. Not that... Go on. Yes! Bear in mind, they also didn't touch the match engine in any of that. So, in theory, nothing should change anyway. But that doesn't mean there was some stuff potentially tweaked behind the scenes with reputation and stuff that might have caused teams to play slightly differently against you that could have the... Uh, yeah, I've never, I haven't managed to get inverted wingbacks to work at all this year. This was a lovely goal, by the way. Um, that, just an absolutely sensational piece of football. And Vida with another assist. Fafana has actually nearly matched his goal tally from last year already. Which I think should tell us everything about how much he's ready to fight again for this team. And we're leading in Europe against Villarreal, which is always a good sign. Maybe we just needed to get to the group stage, get the match sharpness up, get the squad bedded in and see how we do. Like, this would be a good test for us. If we play really well and win this at home, then I'll consider that the home thing was just a weird blip because of the low match shot. Let's Vida's in again here. So many bodies, he's inside himself. Vida makes it two. Oh, 2 0 in 14 minutes. Okay. This is more like it. I can always tell when we're playing well when we end up in this situation here. When their fullback gets pushed right back by our Trek sitting in this space, their winger, if they've got one, or a narrow system, which I believe they are playing, gets pulled inside and it just allows Vida all this space. And Melman is so good at finding him. Now, normally what happens here is Vida actually passes this, but they just stand off of him. And it, I love that he can play on his left foot like that as well. Oh. That's glorious. Yeah, they're like, bring us back the house that Memes built, damn it. Pressure of a home crowd. Uh, no, it doesn't. In fact, um, no, this is season 12 now, uh, ball back, I believe. Uh, not only that, not does FM not only, uh, sorry, not only does FM not factor in the home crowd uh, as we take a third goal uh, with another assist for Vida. <laughs> this is going all right now. Um, you're actually on average giving an eight to nine percent more likely to win at home with the same exact lineups and same teams. Uh, EBFM did the uh, stats on this. So you generally speaking get an eight to nine percent advantage in home matches. That's Vida's now got a goal and two assists. Look at that with the right foot. Fafana scored two Fiona! headers as well, which is not even really his, his, his jam. But RL, thank you very much for the follow. Whenever I see RL written down, I just immediately assume Rocket League. This is good. This is much more like it. Like, Villarreal are not a muggy team by any means, and we're 3-0 up against them, and have only actually created one XG so far, but there's only so much you can create in the first 20 minutes, right? Empty the midfield. Yeah, I suppose you probably do, but I'm thinking more like contingent... Oh, hello. This is... I think he goes for this, you know. Oh! Hello, Mats! Yeah, unless you stick it on Mount Everest, then shenanigans occur. <laughs> like, <laughs> things that you maybe don't want occur in those moments. Oh, I'm so much happier with the way we performed here. Like, it doesn't feel like a blip in this game either. Like, we've created chance. Oh, what a part. What a pass. Oh, he's offside. That's such a shame. That is an unbelievable pass from Melman. I just don't know if Padilla's making that pass. Bloody hell. Oh. <sighs> It's a shame that's offside, but he probably was miles off in the end, but I love the vision that Melwin has. Or was that Diaz? Oh, no, it was Diaz. Look at that. That's why I think he's going to be the GOAT in our midfield. Oh. Because he finds balls, finds balls like that, and I don't think we've ever had a midfielder that can find those passes so regularly. Yeah, they should override it. If the goal's good enough, it should no longer count as offside. I agree. New rule. Right, Diaz. Ooh. Right, now he moves back into midfield, covers off the space. I mean, he's on like... Well, I also find that Diaz seems to gain rating in matches even when he's not scoring or assisting, which is a real rarity for a playmaker, I find. Because I assume it means that he's creating good shooting opportunities for his teammates. We're just not always seeing them. Don't want to concede a goal randomly here, though. That's lovely. Right, go on, Diaz. For Fana. Set one up for Melman or something. Or find Vida on the overlap yet again. Go on, Vida. What you got this time for us, bud? Ah. Just keep giving it back to Vida. He'll take both of these wing these defenders on. He's gone past them both. He's just trying to find a little half a yard. But that's where I think his agility and balance come into play in these positions. Oh my goodness, that's ambitious. We've also looked much, much stronger defensively this season in Europe. No matter who we've been up against, obviously there was that random game at the start. It feels like we're barely conceding any shots at all now. We seem to be a little bit neutral with some of our attacking, but Thanks, it's sort of Mattis, balanced out by barely conceding. My own build -a -nation this Look year. It. Mole Fiavar now completely dominant domestically in 2030. 100, 100 loans milestone just reached. Next step European glory. 
at the, the sirens. The hundred loans milestone, I feel like, is a big moment because it feels like you just you're getting there at that point. Like we, I think the most we've managed to get up to so far in this save is 148, maybe. And we're still in the mid 130s as things stand right now. Okay. I just want to keep a clean sheet in this game, really, and not concede off their first shot on target. Or first shot, actually, as it goes. Which will inevitably happen, but luckily when you're 3-0 up, it matters a little bit less. Yeah, Vida doesn't, hasn't really performed that well for Malta just yet, but give him a chance, right? Diaz, what's he thinking here? Uh, okay. It's 4-0. Gonzalo Diaz makes it 4. Sirens 4, Villarreal 0. Okay, so we're back into the Champions League and we're beating a... Spa the irony, the irony of this is this would be our biggest win in Europe this season, which has seen us face teams from Bulgaria, Cyprus, and one other as well. But yet we're beating the Spanish side 4-0. Oh, new kit. Yes, we've got new kits for the entire Maltese League, thanks to Passbro. We've overperformed our XG massively today, without a shadow of a doubt. But we've been so strong defensively, it just really hasn't mattered. I just hope it isn't entirely papering over the cracks, which means I think now it's time for a bit of quasi. Maybe a bit of Cthulhu. Because why not? Don't want to disrupt the team too much. Vida could do with a rest, honestly. I might actually get Motwang on instead. If, if, they can't, if they don't have a shot, we cannot possibly lose. That's my logic. We just needed the new kits, true. I probably could have taken Sunday off, actually, for um, Ndoy, since he's now the sort of backup in that role. I wouldn't be surprised if now, over the rest of the, this game, we have loads of chances. Get the XG up to, like, 2.5, but still win 4-0. That's usually how these sort of things go. But I do want to give some game time to Motwang, because I like him as a player. His attributes look good, but we haven't seen enough of him in matches yet to know if he is a kind of Vida type of player yet. But so far, things look good. Palacio. Can we grab another? He's into a great spot. Dinks it up. Melman! It's five. Melman with his fifth of the season and we're five up against Villarreal. Yeah, what just win the Champions League without conceding a goal but then lose the league to Hamrun or something? Uh, we're five nil up against Villarreal. Do you know what? I think we might be okay tactically. <laughs> like, I know they're not the best side in Spain, but we're also been a bit of a weird one lately. That's more like it. Five nil, cruising, wingbacks for days. Look, assist from a wingback, goal from a wingback, assist from a wingback, assist from a wingback. What days on stream? Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays as of the start of last game cycle. Ajax have missed two penalties in their game against Celtic, by the way. That's just, just thought I'd let you know. Right, ball in. Palacio. Oh my god, it could have been six. Yeah, we're 5 0 up against Villarreal. Um, all of a sudden, things just seem a little bit more rosy for us. Now, 5 0 is insanely harsh, but they have not had a shot yet. <laughs> if we deny Villarreal a single shot, I will be very impressed with us defensively. That, I don't think... Oh, you bastards. We limited Villarreal to a single shot. I mean, that's defensive stability. Also, fair play to Salim Kadri. Don't know how he gets a 6.8 in a 5-0 win. But uh, they were beating Club Brugge, if I remember correctly. That is much more likely. Annoyed not to get the chance to complete his hat-trick. Oh, I did substitute him. That's my fault. Get in. They kept the ball, but we just were just solid. That, that's a good sign. Because next up is Ajax. 8-0 to Manchester United. That's um, a lot of goals. Yeah, I guess it's because what... Uh, the goalkeeper just gets a bonus for getting the clean sheet in the end, even though he's literally done nothing. Uh, he has not touched the football. What a start. Like, that's one win. We always need, like, three. Uh, Shanghai. Just give it to anyone except my boy John. Too many goals. I know. It's if anything, it's unseemly. I agree, Zimtone. I think that that goal conceded is, if anything, I think the tactic shit. <laughs> I don't know what we were thinking. Uh, let's see. Still, I love that five nil winners wasn't even the biggest win on the day. So we're playing Ajax next, who are a pot four side. In fairness, Ajax have struggled in like the Conference League in recent years. Yeah, I don't like overperforming our XG too much like that. But what I will say is we've regularly underperformed it this time around. So, you know, balancing out. That's the way I'm looking at it. And remember, uh, oh no, it's not first week, is it? There's no uh, Conference League game in the first week of the Champions League. It's the second week it starts. It makes me so sad looking at you. Because you could have been ours. You, you were the guy. You were the chosen one. If we had Miguel Morales up top, this is the group stage, yeah. 
things could have been so different. But they're not different now. We just have to get used to it. So, ro rotate against Marsa. I feel like our rotation options are also improving now, which is why wow, we have a lot of data on Maribor. Christ. Dayan Volk. Other teams in Europe. Uh, well, they haven't played yet. Uh, like I said, the uh, Conference League doesn't start until the second week of the Champions League. So Hammerin won't have their first game until then. I believe they're actually playing the team that knocked Ham um, knocked Goodyear out. Broken the Razor. Yeah. It and also, I feel like defensive midfielders like halfback should definitely get bonuses for clean sheets. Who we'll qualified? Hammerin. Hammerin is the team that qualified. League phase. Big group. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, you mean the League of O'Hays? Is that the Irish League phase, Jim? <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you, Dan. It probably is the vodka, though, let's be honest. Yeah, I feel like our... Oh, hang on. Oh, no, Europa League's got eight games, hasn't it? Having rigging games today. Nope, no rigging games today. They haven't actually had a chance to play a game yet. Uh, but they have, for those of you that have just joined us, got Hassan al Kamaji on loan from us. They took our two-star CA, five-star PA Libyan international winger on loan. Uh, gone very well, Mr. Callum. We just beat Villarreal 5-0 and they had one shot in the entire 90 minutes. And that came in like the 90th minute as well. We're feeling pumped a bit more today. Bayern, Bayern are so bad in this save. Getting knocked out of the Champions League third qualifying round. Now can't even win a game in the Europa League. Yeah, and remember, Goodyear were this close to getting to the group stages again this year. They are, they're going to do it. It's, it's going to come for them. Yeah, hopefully um, Nash will actually start playing you know, Dinko Christich this year. Because if if they don't, there's no way he's going to go back on loan for them next year. Which, um, you know, isn't the end of the world. We'll just send him on loan to Goodyear or something. Because he's he's good enough to play for Goodyear. <laughs> That's the dumb thing. But he gets a chance to play for everything. On the Youth Academy run, in it. Right. Lots of these guys here as well, which is good. Bayern stops dominating the Bundesliga. They fall off. Oh yeah, but Bayern were fourth in the Bundesliga last season in this save, hence why they were playing in the qualifying rounds and then didn't get through the qualifying rounds. Hello, Tommy. Oh, actually, Tommy, glad you're here because I was thinking about um what you said last stream about like you wanted to start streaming and stuff, and I forgot to mention basically if there is any help that you need with anything, just DM me on any platform and I'll do my best to help you out with whatever you need really. And that applies to anyone that's thinking of starting content in some way. To be in a Bayern save, oh god, I don't think I can bring myself to do that. <laughs> Get a, man a national manager as a coach. Do you know what? That is an interesting idea, Jim. <laughs> that is a level of meddling. That I hadn't thought. Oh my God. They lost their first game. Right. Who is the national manager? It's Steve D'Amato. Who plays a 4-4-2. Oh. All right, Steve. Um, okay. Okay. I guess that one's off the table. Um, okay. Financial trouble that you've had to bail out. Uh, no. Not that we've noticed. Although, admittedly, we've never actually bailed out anyone, even if they were, because it's like, that's their problem. Yeah, I guess the only thing you could do is be our assistant, but even I wouldn't... Well, actually, that's not true. I was fully... In had that worked, I would have fully intended to get him sacked. I don't know how... Is there anything that we could do with that? Like, the proper clandestine that could get him sacked? Because I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Uh, I will pay into Zlignon in this game because Kadri looks like he might end up playing in the next Champions League game as well, just in case. Good to give Motwang a bit of time. And it's great that Kazola's going to get some football. But I will keep putting um, Vizhnevsky. Obviously, we're going to have the usual complaints from the, the guys that were regular starters. Managing them retire. No, no, no. That's cheating for me. That's beyond the level. I'm willing to meddle to a certain point. But yeah. Well, I want to give Motwang a little chance. If he's insecure, you can do that. The problem is, if I um did that, my board might absolutely like. I don't think they'd sack him for unsetting the squad. That would just make them play worse. Okay, good. Three 0 Ortiz and two goals for Watara. Nice. Good to see it. Also nice to see Ortiz playing well. Melito struggled to start with. Uh, Most have done well. Oh, that's a loan from us. Uh, Bikikara losing is a little bit concerning. And Sweetie. Okay. Hmm. Give an honest story about Rival. I know. Where is the... I want, like, um... I want a sense of intrigue, like in CK. That's what we need. 8-1. Did Roy Fleming score by any chance? Yes, he didn't. Oh, it's under 23s. He's not in that squad yet. George C. Stokes, thank you for the 14 months. Hope you're well. 
YouTube is great for learning and stuff. Yeah, no, it, it, it fully is. There's a lot of good channels for learning stuff on YouTube. Um, what I would say is, uh, don't be... Don't get stuck in an analysis paralysis um, because sometimes you can learn too much and not get started with things. And sometimes it's best to get started and then learn while you're doing it as well as that, you know? I know, I want to sex the Pope chat. Nick Pope, in this case. It's great. And then Glitterhoof will appear. Uh, Malta in club coefficient rank. Uh, well, Malta doesn't have a club coefficient rank because the club coefficient rank is for specific Maltese clubs. But as for where we are on that list, um, like we are tw 32nd on that list currently. But that will slowly start to improve over the next couple of years as... Oh, let me scroll up so you can actually see it. Um, what's that eight goes? Because we're putting down regular like knockout spots now, I would say. I'm going to save. Jake Marquez. Okay. Um, who do you play for? Because bear in mind, there's unless you play for a... Oh, I've spelt it wrong. Yeah, I, I think... Oh, staff. Um, okay, but with who? Because a lot of staff members don't get loaded at the same time. Oh, welcome in, Hughes. I suspect that the staff aren't always loaded because there's... It tends to load staff based on the leagues that you have loaded for the save. And then, like, a smattering of others based on reputation, unfortunately. Right. Colchester. Ah, yeah. So, basically, in this save, I don't have most of the English lower league stuff twitched on at all. Which means that we basically don't get much information about them. Ironically, other than Conference South. Oh, sorry, National League South. Oh, who are you doing it with, Hughes? 5-3 to good, yeah? That is a lot of different goal scorers. We take that. And Matthew Said scores again. Two and a half star. Ah, we now have a two and a half star CA player at Goodyear. And it's Matthew Side, our Maltese, not Wonder Kid, obviously, but tell you what, he looks fucking tasty, doesn't he? He's genuinely. Oh, Haverford West. That's so weird. I saw a TikTok last night. Uh, it was just one of those ones where it was a woman discovering that foot manager is a thing and then a guy responding to it about how cool it is. And then a lot of the, there was a guy in the comments actually talking about doing a Haverford West save. Um, boom, boom, boom. It's called an own goal versus good. Sounds Bruno. Oh, he could be. Savaganda. Yeah, I don't think he's a wonder kid, but it's nice to see that he's got at least some quality. Which guy? Abdul could. Oh. Uh, hang on. This guy here. He is from Oman. Well, I'll be damned. Struggling to be able to sign people. Um, How are you trying to sign? As in, are we doing like loans? Are we going free transfers, agent offers? Because that's where I would start in that sort of situation. Right. Oh, go on. Cotton Sport. Bless us. They haven't had a youth... Oh, they have had a youth intake, actually. It's just not been particularly good. Martin Abega. Didier Mbida. Better. And cheap. So he might be a loan option. I said a you know, loan farm fodder option for January. Ah, good old Honvied. They were great in My Hungry Save last year. Right. If we could go two for two against Virial and Ajax, I'd be pretty pleased with that. Fafana Watara, no. Nope. Melbourne's got four and five. That, that's a really nice front line for me in terms of the 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 numbers being generated by that strike force. Like Fafana's got five goals and six and Melbourne actually has five goals and the four assists, which is really useful. Kadri's back in there. Okay. I guess Salim is being trusted. This is maybe the breakout season for Salim Kadri. rest of that's good. Uh, Afifi's not on the bench, which is nice. Most of free agents. Yeah, free agency is where it's at in the early stages of any save, I would say. Christ, this has got some... They've got some players. There is, like, Unavar, Okafor, Jarrell Hato in there as well, or Hato. Interesting they're playing a very similar system to us. I find that this one is actually a bugger to play against. Uh, once again, I've accidentally... I feel like we have got better since we stopped putting opposition instructions in. Which is really intriguing. Oh... San Marino played St. Kitts and Nevis, did they not, um, the other night? I believe they lost 3-1 after taking the lead. I think Ellis is actually, was, uh, maybe that's why Ellis was in San Marino, actually. Uh, right. Cool. one only one game. Yeah, I mean, it'll be super tough. When you start that low, it really is super tough. You, you basically just have to be trying to find young players who might have a little bit of potential to slowly stagger your way up. 
start the loan farm as soon as physically possible. The sooner you start the loan farm, the better. Because those players you loan out will grow with those clubs, which means you'll then be able to give them better loans. Um, that's one of the things that... That's the biggest mistake that people make with loan farms, is not starting them soon enough. They wait until they're a bit of a big club. By then, all the players that they're trying to loan are too good for the clubs they're trying to loan them to. Especially on FM24. Pickle personality. Um, with those kind of players, sometimes the best thing is to just cut ties. It's... Yeah. I don't know, Thomas. Maybe it's because they're being given instructions that are actually, like, negative to the player because it's stopping them from playing the way they want to. I don't know. But yeah, um, and yeah, that's the thing. Even we started the loan farm as soon as possible and we still nearly ran into that issue. And that's why we ended up doing the free transfer thing for a little bit to try and boost them up a little. Uh, we could see off the opening kickoff. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a decent Ajax team. I will be surprised if this one is anywhere near as easy as the Villarreal game was. I think this is going to be a proper battle. But I also don't want to see us embarrass ourselves now. And watch that Villarreal game be like the only bright spark now and we just suddenly go to shit again. I'm hoping not. Oh, that's a bit of space now. Al Jawai, don't let him into the box. I thought that was going to be a penalty and I have a horrible feeling we're about to get... And there it is. Wait, that wasn't a penalty? That probably should have been a penalty, honestly. I think Ajax were a bit unlucky on that one. Oh, please, for fun, make the run, buddy. Nope. Palacio's so good at taking on two players because it always frees up an option to someone like Diaz. Go on, buddy. Cuts inside. Diaz! Oh, it's 1-0. Gonzalo Di I think we're going to start to like Gonzalo Diaz quite a lot. Oh. But the thing I love about Palacio, Vida weirdly doesn't do this as often, is that he always gets doubled up. Palacio gets doubled up so often, and it always frees up space for players like Diaz to make these runs. But that is just a lovely finish. Oh, glorious. I, I think Diaz is going to be one of those double-digit guys that gets double digits and goals and assists for us this year. Good start. Now we just need to bed in, keep playing well, because obviously that was the opening chance of the game, but we took it. That's true, which might also explain why Vida gets so much space a lot of the time. People just seem to be afraid to go and go anywhere near him. So they just stand off and he's just got free chances all the time. Oh, this is scrappy so far. This feels like it could easily randomly end in like a 2-1 defeat to Ajax though. Because we're not creating much ourselves in this one. I think our top player is on just under 20k. That is. We're sort of grounding our way into the game. Little chances are coming in. But once again, that's a game and a half in the group stages. A grand total of two shots against, neither of which have been on target. I mean, that is defensive steel so far. Uh, you're right, we are playing in our own stadium. Yet we played... I think the last game was played here as well, or it might have been into Ali. I don't know. Okay, we're doing well, but I would need... The second goal is definitely important in this game because I don't trust our um, ability to hold on without conceding a chance here, even though we are looking very, very strong defensively. Possession's really creeping up. What on earth are we do? Look at this possession. We're just strangling the game. Certainly a new approach that I'm not used to from us. I reckon a bit of Henry Watara. Mix it up a little bit. Henry's shown he's got some quality. Kanga and Lenders struggled. I'm thinking Wilson. Palacios. Yeah, he's actually... I'm also liking that our defensive ratings have been really good. How big is it? It's 7,500. Um... Just under. I think it might be to do with stadium sharing and stuff, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, a shot on target. The first shot on target we've conceded in the group stage this year. Come on, lads. Like, if we got this over the line, I'd be genuinely impressed, even though it's only like a 1 0 victory. A win's a win. I actually having a few little chances late on. All right, come on. Kill it off now with a 2 0. Oh, hello, we're going for the pure shot. Not pure shot, sorry. We're going for the pure. Go on, Palacio. Have a, have a bop on it. A bit worried about the counter-attack, but at least we've got the possession. We can slowly build this up from the back now and second phase them. Let everyone get into their positions, and then we'll go for it. Here we go, Palacio. Why is no one marking him? Wow. There's so much... Oh, what a... Oh, that was a lovely idea from Diaz. Oh, I actually really do like playing out the back. All right, come on. Big header needed here. Or just... Let... That was really good from Vida as well. All right, here we go. Ortiz now. Palacio. Got two Ajax defenders on him yet again. Finds Diaz. That's nice. Kadri. Oh, go on. Oh, my God. Salim Kadri. Sirens 2. Ajax 0. That might be the best goal of the last two years. 
Uh, Kadri's not really, but we've decided to play him like that. And, well, this is why. Look at this from Kadri. On to his right foot. Absolute rocket. Whew. Sirens 2, Ajax 0. What a goal from Salim. That is beautiful. Like, we've been the better side again. Albeit with slightly um, less creativity today. But they are a stronger opponent. Oh, that's a poor boss. Don't screw it up now, lads. Come on. Keep that clean sheet. You deserve it. Kadri deserves it. Oh, well played. Look at the composure. It feels like we've just become a more complete team, weirdly. Like, we look a bit... We're like we're picking our moments better. Rather than just going all guns blazing all the time. Oh, that's poor. Okay. I mean, that should hopefully kill it. But there's always a chance. It is Ajax, after all. They've got quality in this team. Come on, just get a toe in. Oh, that's good from Vandenberg. Get across to him. Good save. It's the first time we've actually seen Richard make a save in Europe. Ah. <sighs> yeah, he is. I mean, that is not the sort of goal you expect him to score very often, but he did score it. Oh, well played, Vida. Two clean sheets in Europe would be really, really nice. I might just make a couple of subs now, actually, just to... Just freshen the legs up in these positions, because we last thing we want is injuries. Uh, I'll give him Doyle a little run this time. And Diaz, honestly, he deserves a round of applause when he comes off we'll get brand out oh god i love the options on the bench those midfield options now i feel like i'm taking off a first team player bringing on another player who is easily good enough for the first team as well it's such a nice feeling to be able to do that and it is looking like it's going to be sirens two ix nil bang two out of two albeit a little bit fortunate um but we scored the goals we did it again kadri's man of the match for us wait, wait hang on kadri's not man of the match oh diaz is four key passes i'm loving that from him as well front line was a little bit impotent in that game but who cares right two wins out of two no goals conceded in europe that's the start we needed there's gonna be tougher games coming like great start top of the league man united drops some points even better superb like very very solid defense we've conceded two shots in target over the over the two games so far and a grand total of six shots like if we'd only considered that in one game i'd be happy let alone two uh oh dear not very good there yeah, and the fact is, against teams like Ajax, we're never going to be dominating. Oh, wow. Hang on. He didn't even have to come off in the game with an injury, but somehow he's out for two months. That makes sense. Okay, so looks like Wilson Ortiz is going to get some game time. That's a little bit concerning. Although I feel like we are no longer quite as, like, done without him. We've got so many options in that midfield with Cazorla and Ortiz that missing Kanga is no longer the big hole that it was. New kit? Yeah, absolutely I can. Um, we're now sponsored by Pog Ventures. Oh yeah, we beat Villarreal in the first one, 5-0. Albeit it wasn't a 5-0 game, but we did also deny them all but one shot. I feel like we could survive an AFCON because all the guys we've signed in those positions are South American or, or European. Which means that we're less, losing less out to it. Although we have signed yet another South African wingback. So there is that. HMS Pistol UCL? Maybe. Camga starts. I think he's still three and a half. And his attributes are still excellent, right? It's just we've managed to get quality around him now. Uh, Camga? Oh, it's because he's just... Hang on, he's not there, is he? Because he's injured. Let me just... Yeah, I mean, he's still... He's actually a four-star player. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he's bad, because he isn't. He's absolutely sensational. But I feel like we've now got bodies around him to the point where if he was to be injured like he is, it's no longer the death sentence to our chances of winning a match. We've got guys that can come into those roles, like... Um, where are we? So the likes of Ortiz can come into there. We've got Brandau that can play there. We've got younger players as well that can step in. Uh, Ape James have not done no nothing since then. We have got them on the scouting, I believe. Uh, who can? Oh, I might have accidentally assigned that one to John. That's annoying. Uh, Franco Medina. Worth a little look, right? It is painful, particularly as he never gets any bids either. Six one win over Fiorentina. Oh, <laughs> where the hell is Roy playing in this game? Our San Marinese striker, who now has two caps for San Marino, just got a hat trick in the UEFA in the youth league, and we're now top of that as well. Which is a good sign as well, because remember, they play the same tactics. And if your youth team is playing well with the tactics, that's always a good thing. Right, now we got the first hammering game. Which is really good. They're going to be playing on Thursday. I think they're playing Dinamo Bucharest, but I've forgotten. So they need... Who are they playing, actually? Nope. Oh, dear. 
Okay, so they've got no chance against Napoli, probably. That's unlikely to yield any results. We need seven points from Hammering in this group. I think it's doable. They've got two really tough games and four kind of winnable games. So I feel like 10 points is doable, but seven is the minimum. Come on. They're going to get battered by Napoli. I reckon four... Napoli are, are kind of crap in this save, but compared to... They had a minus 16 goal difference under the bottom of the Champions League, but this is the Conference League. And surely they can't be that bad in the Conference League, right? He says deliberately bigging it up just in case it is going to be a good result for Hammering, but I still think it's probably going to be like a 3-0 defeat. But I reckon 3-0 defeat where it's actually kind of undeserved and Hammering play quite well. Yeah, Roy's everywhere. Uh, new contract here. I'm going to say no. Yeah. Either using Tony or the high squad stairs for those is usually okay. Right, come on. All right, chat, you were right. Hamrun one, Napoli nil. <laughs> yes! 95th minute winner. Oh my god, they battered them. Well, not battered them. They deserve the win. This is a Napoli team that still has Kavica Kvaratskhelia in it. Like, this is not a bad... Wow. Mamad Usao with the winning goal for Hamrun as they beat Napoli. Surely they've now got to qualify. I said they had two tough games, really tough games, and four easy games. This is one of the tough ones. Uh, no, he is actually working towards it, Dar. Yeah, uh, we checked his eligibility and it is actually increasing, provided the game doesn't glitch out. It's not just the fact that they won. It's the fact that they were the better team as well. That's amazing. Get in, Hamroon. Who are their remaining heads? I've actually forgotten. So they play... Yeah, Ferenc Farish away next. Then it's not. Not will be quite tough. But then RFS of Latvia, Dnipro at home, and then it's Dino Bucharest surely there's double digit points in there resets when he joins permanently uh, it doesn't matter though because he's joining at 17 which means that he'll have plenty of time to get homegrown anyway so it's not going to be a problem uh he will count as a homegrown player um he won't ever declare for malta though because i'm hoping he declares for Anguilla. right so that's just three points for us right yep six points on the board number two on the year just behind england okay malta's looking pretty sweet 18 uh, it seems to say 17 or actually, maybe it is 18. Either way, he'll still join when he's 18, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, nice. We're actually catching Scotland. Trying to keep Serbia at bay. We've moved up to 15th, by the way. As, as things stand, that is 15th because Croatia are dropping right down. So this would gain us an extra European spot for the season after next if we were to finish here. But I reckon there's more to go. Oh, Krastev's hurt. How much? And we can go a bit of a stronger team against Luter as well because we've got international break. Ironically, this game is right in the middle of it, which is always good. Cheers, cheers, fictional computer. There's everyone getting into that. Oh, Krastev called up. Malta with loads of people. So Vida's in there. Jar Jar, Arba, Alfred, Matthew Side, obviously. Um, San Marino get their call up too. It's going well, Inferno. We are top of the Champions League group. And Hamrun just beat Napoli. It's, it's the dream. Yeah, if you could just have a little word in Silvano's ear. Although I think he's on loan somewhere. I can't remember where Silvano is. He might be a good year, honestly. It feels like everyone else is. And not only did Hammer beat Napoli, they deserved to beat Napoli. It was They had like 2xG. Only won one nil in the end, but they were the better side as well. God, Seydou. I need to take him off of that now. I, I'm glad that he's doing that. Um, But I need to stop him being a vet. Wait, how do I... How do I stop him from being available for them? Because he's in the senior squad, and we set him to be available for the under-23 squad while he wasn't playing for us. Oh, like, just click it like that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because we don't want... It was great at the time, but now it's meaningless to us because he actually plays football. And the last thing we want is him being, like, um, of low condition because he's played in the team, the game the, team, the game before. Blah, blah, blah. Game the day before. Right, scouting group, dude. What are we saying? Still lots of other players... This is that wing back that I thought looked kind of all right, but it's not going to cipher it. Was he done? Oh, yeah, I showed you him last stream, didn't I? Uh, what else are we saying? Let Actually, let me just filter this first because we've probably still got lots of the weird cap guys in here. <laughs> I suspect, anyway. Uh, well, some fun nationalities in there, but I suspect most of them are not. Lester Chumney is a brilliant name. I'll give him that. Uh... Wait, why is a random Leicester City goalkeeper in here? weird uh 
uh, Angolan, Liberians, some fun nationalities. They're just not quite of the level. I think I call the cutoff like around about. Once they get into that fourth star, that's kind of where I'm interested in them. Wow, that's a lot of players. Yeah, get rid of these two, and then the rest I can sort of consider potentially there being something there. Because they're only going to drop when we actually scout them anyway. Get rid of the rest of these guys. Was that guy? Got some great nationalities in here. Before I actually scout these guys, is there anyone like ridiculous from a fantastic nation? Peruvian dude there. Percy Nunez. Benfica guy. There's a Lebanese dude there. Jamaican. Is that South Sudan? I think it is, you know. Saudi again. All right, cool. What I have now, unfortunately, done is deselect all the players that were scouting. Uh, just send these guys... Not send them around again, sorry. Just acknowledge them so they get out of my way for the time being. Okay. Still a few players in here. Anyone super old? Nope. Okay, cool. Anyone stupidly high value? Yeah, you're... I say not out of our price range, but they are at clubs that I feel like would be sort of would be profligate of us to try and sign them from. Okay, Beck Hansen. Seven million pounds. Oh, he's a striker, but 18 with three, two and a half star CA. Intriguing. Bojan Vasic as well. There's a couple in there with some potential. Let's try at the bottom to see if there's anyone wildly cheap in here. He's very cheap. Oh, and he's um straight up just Lebanese. Uh, no, I think he's quite high. I think every time I see him in like the recruitment focus thing, it still says five stars, but unfortunately he signed that new contract with Laav, so we can't do anything about him. He feels like Lone Farm because he's cheap. And also a Lebanese player. He's a face in the game. Oh! <laughs> well, that's usually a good thing for us, I suppose. Uh, there's a guy from, from... Is that Nicaragua? No, that's not. It's Guatemala, isn't it? Um... Mm. Recruitment focuses anywhere. Uh, yeah, well, they're not mine. They're, they're James's. But if you do exclamation mark RF, you'll get James's video about them. Uh, Kuzel, probably not worth it for the price. These guys are a little bit expensive. Guy Napradak might be a, worth a look. Serbian winger. He'd probably be a little too expensive, but worth a look. Guy Penyarol. Prazac. These guys are okay, but the fees are a bit high and the wages are a bit high. Daniel Connor. Oh, yeah, so he's, he's actually, now that he's been scouted again, his potential has dropped, which is probably for the best, because we were going to end up paying quite a lot of money for him. Saudi guy, if he did talk to us, £5 million. Pounds, yeah, no chance. Prieto? Winger, £1.4 million. Pounds. Not trying to convince. This guy's eight minus rate, which is always interesting. Wilson Aguila. He's not a winger. He's a striker. Just You'd whack him straight on final third. Get that up. Some tent poles there. I might scout him again, just to see if there's any effect on the PA. Bojan Vasic, right. DLP, but maybe he could dribble. Ooh, Bojan Vasic, okay. Uh, let me just move him up here, actually. See what he's like as an advanced playmaker. He's expensive and solid, yeah. But unfortunately, he's kind of in an area of our pitch now where we don't really need any more players, because I suspect that he wouldn't accept a low enough contract to the point where it would matter. Oh, he wouldn't even talk to us anyway. <laughs> yeah, very good heading. Better heading than most centre-backs, actually. In fact, almost all of our centre-backs, I would say. Yeah, he's a dream loan farmer if he would talk, but he won't. And I suspect he wouldn't accept a contract that's low enough to become a loan farmer. Geordie Holder. Wow. Pretty good attributes for 15, but his Ajaxiness would make him pretty much unaffordable. I want to look at Beck Hansen just because I want to see why he's... Oh, my. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's got a Denmark cap at 18. Physicals were a bit weird. And it's seven and a half million. Hello, Pog. He do be good. Physicals concern me, but he's young. And he won't talk to us either. Just sign a new contract. He, yeah, he accelerates very quickly to not very fast. How much speed manager? Well, yeah, indeed. Um, <laughs> but he would have to play as the advanced forward. Which means he would need that pace. That's why I feel like Quasi works so well. He's one to keep an eye on. But probably not one we can move on right now. Well, we literally can't anyway. Uh, any new guys on this list, perhaps? 
if he's in hospital. Wow, there's just nothing coming through these at all at the moment. I'll have to give him a minute to reset, I think. Uh, ooh. Uh, Sefris? Sefris? Thank you very much for the follow. I'm sorry I've said that incorrectly, but thank you for the follow, nevertheless. Uh, the Kazakh guy is the Kazakh guy is here on loan, so he has already technically signed for us. Tasana, Tasana, I believe. Ah, I feel that like they're like randomly like, it feels Balkan. Or like, oh no, what am I talking about? No, nope, that's that's Egypt. There we go. Okay, we'll we'll whack him in there as well. Um, he's not very good, but they might be. Want to look up? Uh, yes. Oh yeah, no, he won't be. He won't be as good in this save because of that. Hello, Pog. How are you doing? Right. Okay, Luther. That's fine. We can play a relatively strong. Well, okay, the same team apparently. Wait, that isn't the same. Oh, I already set this up, didn't I? Uh. I'll let them do that, but I'm always worried when my assistant does that. Provided it doesn't cost us, it'll be okay. Who's gonna? Oh, it's be a good opportunity for Kirby to start and get some game time with him because he's a guy I would like to pursue. <laughs> Thank you, Reese. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to get more and more in them for people because I know people say they wanted more con, uh, more like it's. It's a balance because I had some guy complain the other day that the videos were too long, and then at the same time people want more information, so it's difficult. It's tough to balance, right? Watara gets the win. Jar Jar and Vega. Well, that's just a lot of left backery there. But we get the win, which is the key. Sweetie now... Wow, who's this guy? Argentinian striker that Sweetie have got. On a free transfer, no less. All right. Well, strong start for them. Uh, oh, yeah, that's him. Ah, you know, I, I think it's possibly more just a case of people will find something to complain about, right? That's just how it is with YouTube. Um, you kind of just get used to it after a while. Can you go for that? He will. Nice. Eight-year contract. Cheers. Uh, it's cool that they are doing those kind of deals. It totally is, yeah. Oh, Martin's into the under-23 squad there, which you love to see. Uh, basically, the comment was they were skipping to a certain point. It was like, well, this didn't need to be in the video. I'm just like, yeah, but... It, it's one of those things where if I don't put certain things in, people say that I'm not showing enough. And that this wasn't actually in a recap video as it goes. This was a normal video. It's just that it's when I explain why and how we're doing things in like my weird experiment videos. It's just like people actually do quite like knowing that stuff. But some people just want the the how. And at that point, it might as well just put a database up and let them look through it itself, right? It, it is what it is. Not everyone. You can't please everybody. And I don't, I'm not attempting to really. I just want to make fun stuff. Um is what i tried to do with the latest video which you will hopefully most of you will see tomorrow night i think yeah i don't like gatekeeping information either exactly uh wow hibiki Kara have started very poorly but hibernians have started well goodyear have also look at us not ballsing up the start of the league make please which is exactly what i'm trying to do i'm just going oh i think that'd be fun let's try it you know not everything could be a banger um as i found out uh two wow that's annoying they've got i mean we'll scout them both but they've got two Big CA goalkeepers in this report. Disappointing. Has friend that they do have friend. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, he is gash, isn't he? Uh, wow. Oh, this is that really long bit where there's no games for a while, either in Europe or in the league. So we just got up. That's two weeks off. It's hardly, a, hardly a long break. But oh shit. Hang on. At least it remembers the friendly match that you've already got set in there. I don't mind that. Let's play against Matra because reasons. It's going to be like... Do you remember years ago we had a save where we found out that... Um, schedule too busy. Then why were they there then? <laughs> why were they available on the list of teams I could schedule friendlies against if they weren't going to accept the friendly? Ah, oh dear. All right, we'll have that instead. There we go. Tash Beach, know what's up. Uh, Mr. Crondogs, thank you for the follow. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get through all six Champions League games today just because there is this giant gap here. So Hammer and Mars, so presumably Hammer will win this. Yep, so they are still six, well, six out of six, essentially. Friendlies in one go. Yeah, you can schedule multiple friendlies. Uh, it'll only let you schedule four at any one time, but I find it's just much easier because it just, just makes it easier, right? Do you want to get a kicking? They're like, yeah, we didn't actually mean that, Sirens. Switch old with all of the newest video title. Oh, really? Oh, thank you. 
I will actually fix that right now because I will forget otherwise. What if all your youth intakes... What if your youth intakes were all 50 years old? Wait. Hang on. What? That is the correct heart, right? Have I missed something? We're getting him at least. And Soviet muscle! Thank you very much for the prime. That's very kind of you, friend. Melita could, but they do have a good defender. Oh, I think so, Sarcastronaut. So let me know what those tastes are and I'll try to cater. Any allergies? Nuts? <laughs> Wrong place. Original patron vid. Oh. That's really weird. Because I have not changed the title. Huh. Strange. Yeah, it is weird that you can't change whether they're home or away. It's like, let me just schedule four friendlies all at the same time and have them all be there. Hit to five, not three. Yeah, I don't do reading. Well, actually, I do. I finished a book this morning as it goes, but... <laughs> Trying to get more into that as well again. I find I'm just happier on those days. Looking forward to my walk this afternoon. Could be Calfax, true. I was elected to lead, not to read. Roy, Fla Roy just puts up good numbers no matter what. He's got two goals and six assists so far. He's definitely playing out wide, isn't he? It's a shame I can't actually see where he's playing. Actually, we probably can, can't we? We can just click on this. Roy Fleming is playing as the advanced playmaker in these games. <laughs> They're playing Roy in central midfield. Stop it! <laughs> what are you doing? What training do you do before and during the European qualifiers? Uh, I just... The same training as always. I don't change my training. If there's two matches, we do the, the training for two matches. If there's one match, we do the training for one match. We don't adjust accordingly. I wonder if it counts for those games. It must do, right? Uh, let's see. Where's the game? Hopefully it actually gets that uh, information for us. No. Yeah, it doesn't count those. Oh, hang on. It might do. Uh, friendlies? Wait, no. It's... There we go. Uh, advance forward. Oh, so it was only that one game. Uh, where he randomly played as an advanced playmaker, but he did get three assists from there. Do preseason training, um, in the sense that we have preseason and I put training in it, but it's still the same training. So I guess you could say no, but at the end of the day, it's still preseason training. If it's training you're doing in preseason, it's Spino's back, which is good. But I mean, Kadri's gonna be a tough. Oh, that's not good. Kadri will be tough to displace if he gets into that squad for a consistent period, and he has now. Yeah, I wonder why they played him in that one. I mean, he did well there, so we can't complain. Takeover. Uh, it's always just never to believe, be believed, is it? Somebody get a takeover, please. Uh, I might have just set that to John there. It must be, yeah. Yachik. Uh, well, we can't recall. Wait, wait, can I? I won't be doing that. <laughs> if he wants to be recalled, then he can do it Um, at the end. Roy's also got the best training rank of any player in our team, which is always fun. I think it just shows that there's a great... At least he has the right attitude, which means if he has got any PA, we might be able to get him to reach it. The last time I tried to rename someone in that list, it didn't work. It just kept them in the same place in the list. Like we had dude one. Uh, we'll try it the next time. What was his name? Actually, I'll try it now. What am I even thinking? Uh, John Arboleda. Scout Cyrus. We'll try it. We'll just call him Jobless. Sorry, Mr. Jobless. I'm not going to capitalise it. We're on the next friendly. Um, well, I, I don't pick the teams for friendlies because it just takes a... So look, then he just appears there instead. So it doesn't actually change his... Um, his it's not in any kind of order. It's just in the order in which they joined you, I think. So it doesn't change the order, which is really annoying because I tried that last time. <laughs> jobless. <laughs> uh, anyone new? Oh, yes, here we go. Leandro de la Canal. <laughs> that is an amazing name. Don't mind a bit of Leandro de la Canal. <laughs> just, just a bit out of pocket. Anyone new here? No, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's a batch. That is a batch. So Basel with no doubt already scouting, right? Uh, Marseille, we definitely are. Viking, I think we might be, but we'll... No, we're not. Okay, well, that's, that's good news. Lons, we are. Fortuna Sitar, we might not be. Okay, cool. Um, Montpellier, wow, there's some big clubs in here, annoyingly, but... Baldwin Wallazok is a great name. Wow, he's quite decent. 
<laughs> just any bodily yeah shamrock wrote they, they were a bit like that for us as well it's a made up <laughs> oh anyone interesting on here oh no it's barely any cash anyway i mean i might just get rid of it for compl oh go on oh wonder what mentoring stuff we've got this month why do they keep getting comes deep to get ball when they're not even in the mentoring group Maleka is in the mentoring group and has now got argues with officials. Cur wonderful. I even changed the mentoring group around a little bit. Yeah, how do you, what does that even look like? He sees him constantly arguing with officials in training and goes, you know what? I want a bit of that. <laughs> That's the only thing I can assume of that. This is how you abuse her. <laughs> Trying to explain it to him in Swahili. What's well, Swahili for? Shut up, ref, you mug. Right. Santa Marina. Let me click it, damn it. Ah, oh, just one guy. He's definitely unlikely to make 100 appearances. Argus Visual spot on option. Ooh, maybe. And he'd be able to see it. Oh, Matthew sighed. Ooh. He's learning the Maltese for referees and wanker. Right. I think there's a game midweek after that, is there not? You were straight to, like, Google Translate there, Jim. I can tell. You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> he did be sighing indeed, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mourinho would have a coaching workshop in there. Santiago Wanderers. Okay. Oh, he's 20. <laughs> very, very mug. Anyone killing it out on loan? You don't count. Belkebla with five goals and an assist, actually. God, I remember when he was five-star potential for us. I guess we've just grown. But Perez is still banging. Has our boy actually played in the games for Hammering yet? And if so, how's he got on? Jesus, they have a lot of loans. Komaji. Two pl he started two games for them so far, which is a really good sign. Because I feel like he's surely going to have decent potential. And if he doesn't get upset about not playing, then... That could only mean good things for us. Because it feels like he's had five-star potential for ages now. And it's not suddenly randomly dropped down like it always seems to. Is that... There we go. We're learning new things every day. Thank you, Yukas. Alberto Stewart, okay. Sell it. I feel like these, comes, these guys come through the team reports way more often than they should. Even though it's impossible to have them on there twice. Calling Okachukwu. Maybe, but the thing is, if we recall him now, we won't get a new loan for him. So I'd rather leave him out till January, perhaps, just to see if he does start playing football for them. Because he's not going to play for us, really. Oh, first qua first guard. I almost said first quasi goal for Ghana there. And in a way, they're kind of right. He has now got a huge wage bump. But, bro, deserves it, right? Two players called up Gonzalo Diaz and Ever Espina. They already have caps, though, right? 50, 58 players at max there on international duty is a good sign for us at this point. We should get a draw for the next round of the Maltese Cup at some point soon, too. Hello, it's the DM. Ooh, Colo Colo. Sometimes oh, there's the draw. It's their first team squad, so unless, I mean, as good as he is, which is extremely. Fucking hell. Imagine if we found someone like this that was actually a winger, like, not a winger. I mean, he is unbelievably exceptional, and it's actually surprising that he's not playing for it, but, like, where would we play him? Um, it's a lot of money to invest He's like full-on winger behavior, but it just wouldn't work for us. It's like, be better than that. Trek, maybe? <sighs> At 23, the problem is that how long it would take us to train him there. But you're right. Well, scout him. Let's get a better idea, actually. Right wing back. We have so many right wing backs already. Like, we already have four now. Right. Oh, we're playing Nashar in the first round of the cup. And we get to play Nashar. That's annoying. I was hoping that would be you know, a random lower league team that we could smack about. It's annoying when we actually have to play someone good in those games. Right, Bodder, go on. They usually have someone good in their youth intakes. Hey, might be worth a look. Some of those technicals look pretty decent. Birkeland, maybe less so. Still very young. So if he's any good, we'll end up scouting him next year anyway. So this is the bit that normally occurs off stream. Because usually we end up playing the first two Champions League games and then there's an off-stream segment before the last four. But because of the way we did so much on the last stream, we found ourselves into this random segment. Manima Union. Mabanza. Okay. 
Ooh, the physicals are very low, but he is 15, so he's got a lot of room to grow. Scrive Matondo. Ah, uh, nah. You can sometimes just tell. So I forgot about Sultan as well. Uh, Umaru Cisse. Wow, is he actually getting international caps? Oh, it's Burkina Fa Yeah, okay. He's Burkinabe. So that does make sense. But he's playing for Hamron, which is good. And I really like him. Wait, was there a guy with... Uh... Oh, you're right, actually. Yeah, Papel Makengo. Worth a look. League Face Games. Yes, we have. Uh, we've played Ajax and we played Villarreal. We have won 5 0 and 2 0, respectively. And only conceded two shots on target. Which is good. Yeah, I know. Uh, snuck in there with his cheeky little Birkenabe mother or something. A uh, little 5 0 win there, which is not 5 0, 11 0. Turns out I can't read either. But again, I was elected to lead, not to read. You know this. Plus, once this international breaks over, we should probably have a look at see how Motor have actually got on because they're no doubt playing some matches for something. Blooming under 20s. Okay, Carlos Freeman. I like the name, just Carlos Freeman as a Bolivian Brazilian. Ooh, 28 new players. Oh, no, that's the. Oh, Leandro de Canal. Not as good as we hoped. In fact, none of these guys appear to be. No one they're on at all. Did he really? God, get in there. I'm excited for him. I just want him to be good so bad. And I just don't want to get my hopes up about him actually being decent. Because, well, you know. For the season. Uh, yes, we did. Um, but I mostly ran it for wingbacks. Sorry, no, for DMs. Um, I don't... It's hard to remember because I didn't save them to a shortlist. So I don't know if we signed anyone specifically from it or not now. But I feel like it's always a good way of scouting. It just gives you some nice quick players to start scouting with really, really easily. Without having to worry too much. That's annoying. That Luhovi guy, isn't he the guy that we were looking at trying to sign? That he Sway was a wing back. That's the thing. Roy could easily be a player like that, who may know may well not be amazing for us, but could be a guy that could get into the loan farm. He's not bad, but some of the values on these guys are alright. A Wusu, 20 years old, can't head a football, doesn't have good jumping reach. Oh, a game against Nash. I was going to be televised. Oh, hang on. How is Kristic getting on this season out of interest? So they've... I think he has actually started both games for Nash this season. Which is a good sign. Oh, no, they've played four times. Right, okay. Which makes no sense to me, really. Like... <laughs> surely he's either the starter or he's not. Unless he had an injury. But we might end up with the same situation as last year for them, really. Uh... Oh, Chiavata. Wait, he scored for San Marino? How? Who? Bro just scored the winning goal for San Marino at 16 years old. Simone Chiavata. Luca Broccoli was even injured in this match. He died doing what he loved. When was the last time San Marino won a game out of interest? Surely they have one in this save. Oh, they have. That was their first win in six years, which was also against Liechtenstein. They beat Azerbaijan. Bloody hell. They also beat Finland. <laughs> oh. That's amazing. But it was their first win in six years, and our boy, who's 16, scored the winner. I was hoping it was going to be like their first one ever. A draw with Greece is insane. Uh, Beckham United. Okay, we're getting some really nice like African clubs in here, which means we should be able to find some potential talent. Achiapong, who will then inevitably desert us for AFCON. <laughs> See you later, Adrian. Uh, oh, oh, so Diaz might well now be our highest paid player, and if anyone deserves it, it's probably him. Because he is extremely good. Just good for Sam Marino. Oh, no, no, he's absolutely shit. Um, bear in mind, he came through our academy this window, uh, as in like this year. But he happened to have Sam Marini's nationality and was thrown straight into their first team immediately. Like, he's very bad, but I guess for Sam Marino, it was good enough. He'll be the making of them. I can feel it. Right, so there's Dengele. Nah, no one great in that one. Right, finally back to some... Oh, loads of league games again until the next Champions League game. And annoyingly, that game against Goodyear looks to be the one that we're going to have to rotate for, which I suspect could mean defeat. If history's telling us anything here. 
Let's get to that then. So the letter at home. These ones should be relatively easy. Oh, 3-1 over Luta. Did Roy play in that one? Yes, he did. And he definitely is playing in midfield, isn't he? Yep, Roy is just playing as an attacking play as an advanced playmaker and getting assists in the process. But the time he comes through at the club, he'll have bloody green here as well. Like, I, I hope that they don't, like, ruin him. Because I can't stop this. Well, I could, I suppose, but it's a pain in the ass. Who's getting call-ups now? Didn't it just finish? Is there, like, some other AFCON that I'm not aware of that we're about to get screwed by? Because now Kadri appears to have decided to go somewhere. Yeah, Luxembourg Hammock at the Euros. There was, like, um, a little TIFO video about it, was there not? I think that's where I saw it, anyway. Actually, let me just get rid of the gops first. Get rid of all the players with absolutely no potential. Oh, fuck. Just get those guys. Uh, right. Oh, there's a couple more here, actually. Martinique French. He's not horrendous, is he? I mean, he is, like, horrendous, but he's free. And he's from Martinique. Don't we already have a guy from Martinique? I don't know why I'm... Hang on, you have an agent? He's not interested. Oh. Okay. Well, screw you then, Sebastian. Bye-bye. What else we got? Those guys can ge get gone. Scout the rest. I think there's still some definitely interesting nationalities in this group. There's a Haitian guy there, who I think we might have looked at before, although we haven't got him fully scouted yet, so maybe not. Wait, what? Oh, that's 51 people. God damn it. FM, let me scout more than 50 people at once. I, I'm only going to have to click another button. Uh, right, we'll just acknowledge those. Then there's one other guy in here. Who, who, there he is. Fabio Garcia. Uh, it doesn't look like he's that good anyway, but still. Right. Chris Moore scouts here. Um, true. We, have we maxed out now? Yes, we are. Although we still have a gap for a technical director, which is not a role I ever want to use. <laughs> That Tenorio guy looks kind of all right. Right, let's see. Um, completely forgot what I was doing there. I love that. Be competitive in the Super Cup. Surely the only options are win and not win. Like, and surely by being competitive would be anything except winning. So surely we've succeeded there. Right, scouts allowed. They haven't let me for a while, but you never know, right? Actually, while I'm here. Networking... Could try for another affiliate club, but I think it's unlikely they're going to say yes. Yeah, they already have enough of them. Which means I'll probably end up cancelling that other one once we get three stars. They simply will not let us have... Um, don't go smash it. I know, and we didn't. It was only a 2-1 defeat. But apparently that was a fail. I am immensely disappointed by that. Uh, you are £46 million, so probably not going to be a player that will probably be able to sign. Call me crazy. Uh, you're at Porto on a list of loans, so we're kind of relevant. You are that guy from River Plate who we really liked the look of, but we can't sign yet. However, I feel like he's either a January or a next summer signing, for sure. Right. We could scout the... Yeah, I mean, to be fair, that I feel like is excessive, but I feel like you should at least be able to scout as many players who could appear in your scout report in one go, which is 100, right? Forgot... Just actually got <laughs> the stream also forgot what it was doing. It carries my my energy. Uh, Argentinian, 3.3 .3 million pounds. Probably not. You're cheap. Naeem Maratbi. It's annoying that there's no agent to go and to kind of compare. I'm just not sure on him, honestly. This guy, however. Ah, much more like it. Mbida. Cheap. Low wage. 18 as well. He's got Lone Farm written all over him, right? Annoying there's no agent again. Because when they don't have an agent, it just means you get less money off. 35k. Yeah, I think I'll be all right with that. 35k is good. That's weird. I didn't, oh, I actually have dropped some frames today. So maybe it was that. I, I feel like that was earlier. I definitely remember seeing the little thing flashing red. Okay, so we'll try and get him. That's what I used to do. Um... Back in the day, that was my that was my jam for scouting. Back when I was making old Let's Plays, I would just scout every youth intake pretty much. Well, within reason. Certain nations, if they're not producing anything good, I would actually do that. 
Um, but the problem is there's so many crap players that it just became completely point not pointless, but it would take so long unless you had loads of scouts. And even then it would still take a full year. And that's why I started scouting national teams and their youth squads instead. But then that's ended up with the same kind of problem, just with like, you'd be scouting 3,000 players a year and you just never get through them all, which is why I feel like the team report scouting kind of gives you the best of both worlds. It's a really good... He's very well-rounded. It's just the price and the £7,000 a week, I think, would put me off. But that's... Ah, he wasn't quite as good as his teammate, but I actually still quite like him. Diego Foley, he's at Milan, so we ain't signing him. And there's always another guy at River Plate here. One on one's very good. Low eccentricity, which is always fun. First touch is shocking, but he is only 17. And there's also Twal, who's. Wow, he's so new, he doesn't even have a face. Okay, yeah, not for me. Yet, anyway. Anything new? Oh, that looks like new stuff. Nope. Uh, oh, a new guy in the 16 16 one. That means that he might have a really low release clause. In fact, the fact that he's got a £210,000 transfer value indicates that he is exactly that. He could be one of those cheeky little low release clause guys. Hello, it's... <laughs> it's like it knows. Good you lose... Wow, sweet, you've turned it around. Sabar have started well. This is a very strange start to the season. The usual suspects are struggling a little bit. Keeps going. I once did an offline save where I turned Claire Fontaine into like a playable team in the lower leagues of French football and just with their insane academy just did like a youth academy save and it was actually quite fun particularly in the first couple of se seasons you could just absolutely blitz it for obvious reasons so Rojas, Kerby and Kadri I like that the RKK there in the back line bit of Diaz's mez don't know how much I like the idea of that but I guess the footedness kind of comes into play there it should be enough to beat Valletta you'd think anyway Was Oro Wailer in the team selection? Or was he just happy to see other players in the squad? I like that. He's just happy for them, right? 3-0. Whoa. Three assists for Vida in the same game. He is just the best, isn't he? It's hard to deny Vida's quality when he's already banged eight assists in eight games this season too. 0.68 XA. Although Mwatang's look pretty solid. But when you just look at the other wingbacks, Palacio, 0.29, it's just so much higher with Vida. Although, it's good to see that over 304 minutes, um, Motuang also is at sort of Vida levels, which makes me excited for his future as maybe he could be the next Vida. He's the first guy I've ever seen even get close to those kind of numbers, but it's small sample size currently. Uh, now, you're a youngster, which means I should be able to give you all the good contract stuff. I also do wonder if with the new changes after the winter update if having that promise to find a loan does actually help or not we need to do some proper tests with that just reflexes um for me for goalkeepers i like um i've sort of changed my opinion over the course of fm24 i like originally it was one-on-ones -on -ones, reflexes and aerial reach is what i really like but this year i really like command of area as well because i found that the problem we have with those first couple of goalkeepers is that they had quite low command of area, and it meant that they were often either missing stuff or flapping like crazy. I mean, take, they weren't taking charge of stuff, basically. They were often just getting caught out. So the cross would come in and they wouldn't come for it, and they would just get the back post headers all the time. Whereas I noticed that both Burnt and um, Guicune have decent command of area, and it just seems to make a hell of a difference. No, that is literally what's happening, Patrick. Um... We see it in a lot of matches that they're doubling up on Palacio, but they never double up on um, Vida Xenia. And it means that he's always in stupid amounts of space. But the thing is, what that I think in many ways it shows that how good Palacio actually is because he's still able to get goals and assists despite being doubled up on a lot of the time. Well, we're finally leading this chart, but I want to lead that other chart. Oh, no scouts allowed. What a shocker. Cool, multiple options. No more scouts available. No, you can do better. But our biggest rivals... I can't stress how important this is. They won't give us anything. Basically, the only way I think we're going to get any new scouts is if they just randomly decide to bequeath us with them. Which, as you know, happens very rarely. So I think that's the only way we've gained any ground on this at all lately. Uh, oh, that was a guy really scouted. Can't double him. Oh, true, yeah. But he's still, he's still able to make it work, and that's the main thing. Um, Hammer and Arm, as usual, putting the pressure on. But for once, we're not actually ca not trailing them. It feels like for the last few years, we've been trailing at the start of pretty much every single season. And we've got Leon away next. That feels winnable too. I would expect us to go to France and win. Like, Leon are not the team they used to be. 
Actually, they're probably better than the team they are currently in real life as it goes. Uh, Saura. Who are you guys? Ooh, an Algerian. Redouane Hermuche. 20 and he doesn't have any good attributes really. I mean, they're okay. They're not spectacular though. All the ability to put in my promises my own contract negotiations, I will sign if I get more scouts. Yeah. Like, it's like, why wouldn't we have more, right? Cruz Azul, oh, they sometimes have some real talent. 5'10", no jumping reach, can't head a football. Isn't particularly fast, can't cross a football. He is just so many things that I would have. He's just a massive work in progress. What well, two saying yet? No, I haven't. Um, well, unless I Unless he was just really bad and we just skipped him accidentally. I, why did I tap in Saints as if I was going to... I don't think we have. He was. He would have been right at the back of the list because I literally scouted him during the intro. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I mean, he's not bad, is he? But... He's not great either. But, if nothing else, we could sign him up and put him into the loan farm in Malta. It's not like Southampton want much money for him. Fuck it. Might as well. Breaking news is also they do indeed. Yes, that's why we're scouting them. Chucky. Uh, he is at Leon still, in fact. At 31 years old. God, he's very good. So he's still a better player than anyone in our squad, probably. But £170,000 a week. In fact, he has put in some great seasons there. 10 goals and 7 assists in League... Ugh. And the season before wasn't that much worse either. And he hit the ground running pretty well. God, those, just look at that consistent sevens and even mid sevens over the last few years. He's really hit a purple patch. Sort of grew in. And then when he hit like 28, 27, he just went for it. He's going to be tough to deal with in that game for sure. Um, Right, Nash are on the cup. We want to make sure we progress. So I'll just make sure that this is a reasonably good team. Good chance to get... More minutes for Multiwang here is certainly not the end of the world. Uh, God, we have so many options now. Oh, no, we're not doing that, are we? I need to get out of the habit of that. It might not affect the instant result games as much. Um, but more testing required for stuff like that. But I reckon the Maltese guy, the problem is he would still have the base in England thing, so maybe not. The fight, well, yeah, they're going to play Dinko against us. Watch him get injured. Oh, my God. Speaking of injuries, we've got two of them, both to Motowang, which is really annoying because I was hoping to see something out of him here. But Henry scores, at least. And we get the win. Remove reserve team for the club. As far as I know, no. But I could be wrong about that. Uh, oh. Ah, oh, new contract. Oh, that's fine. We'll, we'll shortlist him for the time being. Oh, wait, hang on. Sorry. We'll remove him from the shortlist for the time being and then add him back to the same shortlist for the time being. Not too bad. Broken ribs. What the hell was going on in this game? Cesar's out for two to three months with broken ribs. I think that's the second player I've had come down with broken ribs. A new contract. That's right, Tony. You're going to be okay. You ask me this literally every month and I say the same thing to you every single time and you drop it every single time. At some point, I will give him a new deal. The day is just not yet. Right. Mohamed Wael De Bali. There he is at Yes Tunis. He's not bad actually. He's been there the entire time. Never left T Tunisia, but he did get 62 caps of them as well. Alzheimer's Tony Sunday. Yeah, indeed. Maybe the reason he's called Tony Sunday is so he can remember what day it is once every seven days. <laughs> It's better than nothing, right? This guy's a world-class midfielder as well, which is crazy to me. The game calls him world-class and he's never left Tunisia in this save. I feel like this is calling out for like Montpellier or someone like that. Do you report ES Tunis? I believe so. Yep. Yeah, they still hold the Lions messages. There's nothing we can do about it. Very frustrating. Tony Sunder. You're right, actually, but I always feel like it'd be too... He's earned the quality now to, to keep his name. Uh, Atletico Juela. He's got pretty solid base attributes for, like, tent poles for a striker. And he's only 16. Like, 
Decent-ish physicals. Tempo, the actual base striker temples are really solid. Um, Actually, he's 16, though, so maybe he's a shortlist for later type of chap. For the time being. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a bit Roy-like. He is a bit, actually. Hey, if Roy's even... Maybe that's an idea of what Roy might look like when he actually finally joins us. A little preview of the Royster. Any shock results in there? Any massive clappings? Wow. Well, Hamron versus Goodyear in the first round. Oh, that's unfortunate. Highest weekly wage on one player right now. It's um max wage player for a player you just played alone. Ooh. Oh, plant a loan farm. No idea because we don't have any specific, like any player is technically loan farmable if there's a loan available. So I can't really answer that question. But our highest paid player at the moment, I believe, is probably Diaz. Yes, it is. Gonzalo Diaz is the highest paid player. 23,000. And that's, he's only just achieved that as a result of getting that fifth Uruguay cap, but he is probably in the top two best players at the club as well. So it does make sense that he would earn that kind of cash. But like, to me, every player is low farmable if there's a loan available. Um, I think Melman should fall for the same trick. But usually with him, I say Tony Sunday was a good lad, and so you are too. These guys will get new contracts eventually. But I don't want to be offering contract extensions to players who've got four years left on their deals. It's just such a waste of time. Cleave. Good name. Right. Good year now. Then it's Leon. I would like to take that guy from um, Southampton, though. Just to bring in any Maltese players we find abroad, it would be nice to bring them in. There was another guy that came through, I believe, a Spanish side, too. So, for all I know, his reports already come through as well. Let me just check. It was this guy here. Marco Antonio. Oh, no. Wait, did I not click scout on him? Shit. Oh, no, 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 that's not him. Wait. That's the wrong guy. Uh, fuck, who was he? Where's he gone? Oh, I think he might have... Decl oh, he's changed his bloody nationality, I think. I'm almost certain he's changed his nationality. That's very annoying. He's declared for Spain. There was a guy who had multiple first nationality and was in Spain. When you but did your agent videos, how Money. much of an agent fee did you pay yourself? Uh, whatever the ad revenue was from the video. <laughs> but thank you very much for the two months, Rooney. Partially Maltese. Oh yeah, I don't actually care about him that much. I was just showing you because he was Maltese, but now he's not. It's sort of irrelevant to us if he's not going to play for Malta. One day he might change back. <laughs> I've sent a report compiled by Mr. Jobless. Well, we know it's going to be crap then, don't we? Yaya Sidibe, I just don't believe you. It is all lies. I do love seeing Roy being the best trainer every single week for this club. To let him build a nation. There you go. It can still be done. Was he the best world's best left back when you loaned him? Or was he like a player that been developed into the best left back in the world? Chiavatis just got another three. Roy's still play Roy is like the best advanced playmaker in the world, apparently. He just keeps racking up assists playing deep with Chiavatta in the squad. That's wild. On the Kretios. Um I think it's like Mali or yeah. Oh yeah, they've got Diadia. Diadia Fanta. Fanta being in the name pool is great. In case you ever need a bit of fizzy pop. I mean I'm just the stars have changed on Roy, which makes me think that it's not just a case of it's keeping that same scout report until he joins us. I think he, we are actually gaining some knowledge of him, which makes me think that he might at least be like four stars, maybe, which would be great. That means that, to me, that means he's at least good enough for a loan farm slot. Ooh, oh, hello, Sasha Jevrich. Oh, he's at Red Bull Salzburg. That would be a much tougher sell, but I want to have a look at him anyway, because he's got insane CA already uh gremio i must be scanning gremio right i'm not okay we are now we're about to be anyway <laughs> die fanta yeah it's, it's actually uh the fanta v to be correct uh he's future contracting but because he never had a club and he was a free agent and he's not old enough to leave his country yet uh oh, sorry he's not old enough to sign pro terms we basically have to have him on a, a trial for 27 months <laughs> Until he's old enough to actually join us on a permanent contract. He's still just here. Wow. I want to see what he looks like. He says there's a guy at Talima. Uh, was he in the same report? Oh, wrong one. Matt. Moron. 
Which one was it? Was it this one? This one? That one. Uh, I'm not seeing a Talima guy. In the team report. Yeah, I've scattered them. I think, anyway. Yeah. But I have obviously looked at him before because he has an original scout report with us. I'm getting Mezzi vibes. And his contract's up. He might be a free transfer type of jobby. Which is even better. Getting those guys for free is the dream. So Melita, despite being newly promoted, not looking completely gopping. Unlike Valletta, who are looking like a relegation is on the cards again. Are Nashar back in the... Nope, they're a 10th in the league. How are they managing to be this bad? Also, Sleema have clapped it. Plus 14 goal difference already. Every tactics and views and filters. No, as far as I know, there isn't a way to do that. And it's really annoying because you'd think there would be, right? So this is rotation. So it's Quasi and Watari is good. Ortiz and Cathola. Krastev, Jar Jar. Kamga and Lenders the halfback. G, maybe not. Put Rob Hilton there and we'll bring in another rando. Maybe... No, it can't be Espino because he's going to have to start the next game. Yeah, Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia were top flight at the start of the save. I've just moved him across. All right, Baez. Uh, move that across like that. But they never came back up. And I've been third tier at times in this save. Right, this feels like probably a defeat, which we're going to regret later, but needs must. We need to be fresh for Lyon. If we can be, anyway. At least it's a three-day rest period. It's annoying because there's like um, there's this huge gap towards the end of the season where we have loads, we have so few league games, and it's just this enormous. Wow, what a win! Surprising, actually. And I wish, in a way, that we had a bit more of a gap when the group stages, because I think that's so important for us to do that. But I guess you know, you'd either be losing league games at one point or another, and that gap towards the end of the season is going to come in really handy later in the save when we're playing Champions League knockout games, and we don't have to worry about league games around those parts. Having like just being able to focus on, say, the Champions League final. Or sorry, Champions League quarterfinals or something instead of the league games in there would be really, really nice. So as much as I think it's bad now, later down the line, I think it's going to be really, really good for us. Right, nearly at the Lyon game, finally. Then I'll have a little wee before then. Sweetie with another win. They started quite well last season as well. Apparently there's a Kristic at Bikikara as well, who are really, really struggling, lads. Could you not do that? They were in Europe this season. At this rate, they're certainly not going to be back in Europe. Ooh. Ooh, he's Togan. Cloud Emagan. Actually, wow. Chat, I'd like to draw your attention to this chap here. It is a centre-back with 15 heading at 17. He is the dream. Jump, 14 jumping reach at 6 foot, which is pretty impressive, really. Great aggression. He's actually really good. Yeah, impossible. A 15 heading centre back. They can happen. Sign immediately. Well, I'll, I might as well scout him properly, but like, that's really surprising. It's good to know that occasionally there is the white whale. I mean, in fairness, with the way the match engine is, because it probably won't have changed much. Is his last coming his poached? Yes, almost certainly. Or they have like an affiliate agreement with them, potentially. And Tibor Sugar? No. Yeah, but mentals will come in time players mentals just generally speaking improve over there as they age anyway if you find a guy who's got ridiculous mentals wow we're not the favorites for this game i guess it's because we're away from home are leon better than i think they are because in my head i don't think like they're amazing dino zargo just got a draw with barca good up there does man united go and lose to valencia heading at least 15 yeah <laughs> three you think it'll be as high as three? Oh, i don't know Ajax just drew with Chelsea and we beat Ajax. So what's Leon's results been like in Europe over the last few years? So they've beaten Shakhtar and took him to draw with Dortmund. Last year, beat Dino Zago, draws with Arsenal in there, but they lost to... They got to the knockouts of the Champions League last year. Like, they're not bad. This one might be tougher than I gave it credit for. Come on, give me that next Ethiopian magician. Oh. Hello, Leaf. Don't want to kill the data. You no, know, you don't want to be killing that data. Man United lost to Valencia having beaten Club Brugge 8 0. Which is just their their inconsistency carries over into FM, it would seem. Estudiantes de Marida. Some 
okay players in there. They're at least young, which means I'll come back around the next scout report as well. 6-1 defeat to Inter. Okay. But even in a 6-1 defeat to Inter, Roy still got a 7. Did he only play 6 24 minutes? Oh, that's the time of the yellow card. My bad. Either way, just seeing him do well in even in the simulated games is a good sign. Right, Fafana and Watara, no. We do in Melbourne, Palacio, Vida, Tuncaro, Rojas, Nespino, because obviously Kadri's not even here at the moment, is he? Because he's at that silly tournament. Um, We want my boy Gonzalo. I think that's the strongest lineup, right? Bench is pretty stacked. Good scenes. Right, we don't want any opposition instructions. All the chat new gens. Uh, Dan Strong, for sure. Of, um, well, now of Chelsea. He's the one that's done the most up to this point he may not have the highest like pa or ca but he's the one that's doing the most right now uh first team friendlies playing who in a couple of first team friendlies D hang on they have darwin nunez up front oh god they do 35 year old darwin nunez up top for leon in this game still has 13 pace and 14 acceleration that's actually surprising not the first play for chelsea that's very true uh, also, there was a, a comment on the VOD from Adam Cooper, who's just signed for Bristol City in this save. Um, basically apologising to Danny for further limiting his game time. <laughs> Watch Danny have like 190 C uh, PA. Right, I'm going to have a quick wee, get some um, whiz quizzery, and then we'll resume in a moment. Well, if it wasn't Fulham legend, Tony Callio. Ah, good old T-Cals. I brought Bepis, worry not. Yeah, it was a bit of a strange signing. 
I nearly forgot to do whiz quizzes today. I was literally doing it like right until the intro of the stream started. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm a bit worried about Camgus fitness levels, you know. I reckon we might have to take a risk here and go for Ortiz instead of Kamga. Because Kamga has so low match sharpness here, and I don't want to risk him in this game. <laughs> yeah, clearly wrong. <laughs> right. Uh, I didn't accidentally set that up, did I? No, okay, we're good. It's a weird-ass team, though. Darwin Nunez is pretty much guaranteed to score against us now, or hit the post a couple of times. I think it's going to be unlikely that we're going to be able to keep the same levels of defensive stability that we've had against Villarreal so far, anyway. Anyone interesting on their bench while we're at it? It's probably mostly younger players at this point, I would say. Maybe a couple of older players as well. Just no one in between. We actually have a chance to go, like, clear top here as well. Well, not... Well, technically it would be, wouldn't it? Right. Pump fists. Uh, with the underdogs. Yeah, we've always got to call ourselves the underdogs, even if I don't think we are. Hello, Owen. Oh, look at this. Okay, other than those two, apparently. Right. Here we go. Away at Leon. Darwin Nunez through the middle. God, he looks so weird in my face, Pat. He just looks nothing like the Darwin Nunez I recognize. No Alameda in there as well. This is an interesting team. A few regens in their back line. But also still quite a lot of real players, which means they've probably got a fairly old squad, given that we're 12 years in. Like, the youngest a, a, a real player could be in this save now is, like, 28. Okay. I want to see how we do defensively in this one. No Chucky, which is a good thing for us. Like, Chucky's still there, but he's not in the starting 11, which is surprising, considering his attributes are insane. Right. Can we go to France and win another one? Because Leon are not bad. Oh, was he, was he in the starting 11? Oh, okay. Right, I was going to say. It's weird that they're playing him out wide, though, because he has lost a yard or two a pace. Um... I'd have thought that he'd have been better as a more central role. Oh, God. Please don't give the ball away inside 10 minutes and fuck this up. Oh, please. How did we not win the ball there? Oh, well. We had a couple of games without any silly nonsense. Sadly, today is not going to be a day without any. Darwin Nunez gives Leon the lead. Like, we literally get the ball off them. Like, he's there. How do we let him get that pass through? Ay, ay, ay. Fuck me. Right, okay, that's fine. We just have to deny them every shot for the rest of the game. But we do trail. But now's the chance to actually show a bit of fight. Yeah, he just sort of stood there, frozen. It's like, I've done my animation now. You must score. Hmm. It does just feel like we've just lost creativity. Weirdly. What do you reckon? A random red card now? If it's going to be one of those games, the random red card is bound to happen. This is better, though. Uh, it was Julius Sunday, yeah. That was him, right. Vitazini, they're actually marking him for once. Palacio! Oh, that's such a nonsense highlight. Um, that's not... Um, wait, is, is Noel Amina at Wolves as well? I thought it was only Mario that was at Wolves. I really like Mario Lamina's play. He was really good for Fulham. Even in a bad team. Hard to score from that angle. Yeah, I know, but that's what I mean. It's like, I hate seeing those highlights because you know it's never going to be a goal. Right. Four. Oh, really? Fair play. Right. Okay, Diaz. Will he go for goal? Yeah, we're not winning this game. <laughs> we're not winning this game. Um... Ah, oh, dear. Right. So we've conceded there. Are... We've only given up three shots on target in the Champions League so far this season, and we've managed to concede one of them. This unfortunately feels like one of those games that no matter what we do, it's not going to be a good result for us. Because, yeah, just how it is. Right. Second half. Fafana's played really poorly. Hasn't had much chance, admittedly, but I'm a bit concerned. Yeah, no, that's why we have look up, player lookups for things like that. Um, just so it doesn't disrupt the flow. Wow, Juventus are getting loads of injuries. But they are still winning. Um, right, come on. It's just going to be another long-range free kick to no one, isn't it? Yeah, okay. This is just one of those games, unfortunately. At least give them another shot on target so it doesn't look like we've just conceded to their only shot on target. 
Right. Sunday's had a poor day. Nope. Uh, I haven't tweaked the tactic at all. We've just suddenly, over the last sort of year, just been worse going forward in general. Like, we don't create as much. Uh, Padilla's... Oh, he's actually nearly back now, which is nice. I feel like Henry might be the one for this one. Palacio struggled. Wilson Ortiz is actually kind of dead. Maybe now Kamga. Tony's really struggled, but... Actually, you know what? Fuck it, Ndoy. Palacio's struggled, but we've only got Montano. Vida's done well, so he'll stay in. Gonzalo's Gonzalo. He does bits. We don't really want to bring on Padilla because he's not fit yet. That'll have to do. Clap Villa. Yeah, but we clap them without creating a huge amount of chances. And I want to make sure that we're... Cons it's always a good sign when you're consistently creating a good amount of opportunities. And in that game, we just overperformed our XG massively. This is going to be another free kick over the bar. It's just one of those games, unfortunately. I mean, Diaz has a good record from these, but just those, yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, good. Yeah, all right, FM. Do one, will you? I can't bring on Padilla. It's going to have to be a Wu and then swap the two over. <sighs> Frustrating, but... Oh, good. Here we go. They'll score their second shot on target now, presumably. There's a limit to what you can really do, right? If we basically stop conceding shots, they'll just score every shot that they do get. So we've conceded four shots on target in the entirety of the Champions League group stage so far, and two of them have been goals. Uh, right. Now we probably will score. This is what I mean. I just, for some reason, we just don't feel as good anymore. I, in Europe, over the last two seasons, we've just suddenly not felt good anymore. We just don't seem to be anywhere near as creative in game. Maybe I just got overhyped by a couple of really good seasons that actually was a bit of a false dawn for us. Oh my god. Right, come on, tackle, please. Well, Quasi has absolutely zero of that, if I recall correctly. Also, the footedness. Matara has nine passing and nine vision. Quasi has 12 passing and... Do you know what? Yeah, you might be right. And Quasi can play on both sides anyway. For some reason in my head, I thought Quasi was just a bit less technical, but actually he's quite technical at all. Right, Palacio. To be fair, we play a similar type of corner tactic. As, there we go. Watara slots us back into the game. It's going to be too late, but we do get a chance. Oh, dear. There's the meaningless goal that you always get after you concede the second goal. Um, good work from Palacio, though, down the left-hand side. Maybe there's still a chance for a two-all or something. Once again, he's doubled up on. The defender does an appalling job there. Oh, right. Maybe there's still a chance. Like, we'd be good value for it. Playing different against you. Um, true, but we haven't gained any notable reputation. But what I will say is it did come off the back of us having a really good season where we maybe did gain reputation. But I thought that was more of an issue in league games. But, but you could be right, honestly. But then that probably just means that we just need to keep developing our players. Espino's had a really poor day. We are going to lose this game with their only two so shots on target, aren't we? There's only so much you can do when they score both shots on target. Like, that's just <laughs> annoying. Uh, Banditan, thank you very much for the follow. But we can't really do anything more than that. We've barely conceded any opportunities this season. Uh, a couple of Palacio level players are developing. A, well, it would have to be development because we can't sign those kind of players. Like, Palacio's worth £40 million pounds even at our club at the moment. Six and nine is still decent, but my point is, I feel like a couple of years ago, we're beating Leon. We beat Liverpool easily. I say easily. We were a bit fortunate. We just don't look as dynamic anymore. Still have a shot at the division or a Winnipeg just too good. Um, I don't know. Like, we're on a massive run right now. Ever since we got the new guys in for the trade deadline. Oh, good. Well, we've certainly fucked it now. Because Padilla's not ready to come back in yet. Um, But so far, I don't think we've actually lost a game since the trade deadline. I mean, yeah, Winnipeg have got a couple of games in hand, but we'll see. Quasi Matara, yeah, and I just don't trust that to be the, the, the winning formula. Padilla looks good, but maybe he'll be back fit for the next Champions League game, as in Padilla, that is. So Porto just drew with Viri. Um, maybe I just overestimated our quality as well, but we were really looking very good in that season where we got a good amount of points. And the season before then, we got a good amount of points too. So it wasn't just like a complete surprise. More defensive against yeah, true, could be. But I've noticed we're scoring less in the league as well, but that could partly be down to 
And bear in mind, our reputation has been miles higher than them for ages, so they wouldn't have suddenly changed. Hockey in my mind. Uh, well, that's what we were talking about. As in, I was talking about hockey. I said the Avs have been, haven't lost a game since the trade deadline. So yes, hockey was in the mind because I was talking about hockey. <laughs> Being a change up is good. Yeah, yeah, but like we don't really have the time right now to build a second tactic in the middle of games that really matter. Like I I'm not going to start m building a new tactic in games that we must win because that would cost us more. Fine, at the end of the season, we can always try and work on something new, but it can't be a silly tactic. It has to be one that might actually have like genuine stability across the board. It is weird. And it could just be a blip again. Like you have bad games. We had bad games in the season where we did really well as well just less of them obviously but i've just noticed a consistent pattern oh here we go right hamrun were playing Fen what? fucking hell Far hamrun were playing ferenc varosh and one two nil in hungary so hamrun are two out of two so at least hamrun are doing their part score less goals true yeah but that's yeah no that's that makes sense actually thank you more seriously uh no they were they were always playing big teams against us. Fucking Superman, with the with the five gifted subs. How's it going, man? It's nice talking to you the other night. Hope you're well. Hope you and the Dank are well. The Ducks, yeah. Um, and there's Chicago Bedards and San Jose. It's, wasn't there a fight in Red Wings training the other day as well? It's quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, Trenton Middle Middle Slad is spent especially, and also Sean Walker, particularly as we got rid of Ryan Johansson out of that, sent him to the Flyers, who immediately put him on waivers. And Sean Johnson scored like two goals in that win against was it fucking St. Louis or was it the one before? It might have been the Calgary game, right before that. So that's good news. Drop of concern the winter update. It did, but we know that that isn't the thing that caused it because they didn't change the game in the winter update in terms of the match engine. So it's definitely not that. But at least Hammer are doing well. That's two out of two now for Hammer. They've already nearly got as many points as they need to qualify. So that's fine by me. Oh, Andy Hull, he's one of the Patreon regions. Has got eight assists this season for Malma. That'll be one to show in the recap. Uh, right, so what does that do for coefficients? 6.5 now. We're still second on the year. Here's me going, oh, we're not doing that well. We're second on the year of any team in Europe behind England. So we're still doing okay. And it might also be that the, the set of draws we've got doesn't feature any, like, stupidly easy games. Like, you sometimes get that one random game against, like, I don't no offence, but Slavia Prague or someone like that. Close to 15th spot, we're in 15th spot now, technically. As in, the space that we're currently in, if we finish the season right now, we'd be 15th. Yeah, I was a bit sad to lose Barn Byron, but, like, if... We need to make a push right now while McKinnon's having the season that he's having. Even if he's lost the points lead to Kucherov again. But, you know, it's, it swings and roundabouts, right? I mean, he's pretty close to setting a franchise record. I can't actually remember what the record is that Sakic had, but it was... He's not that far away now. Right. Sweetie at home. What, what, what exactly is he playing at? Under-23s. Under-23s Cup of Nations qualifying. Could you not do that during the actual international window? Silly. Yeah, Vetchin's still playing. Uh, scored the other night, didn't he? He's closing in on Gretzky's um, goal record. It's funky, even if the team is completely rotated and rested. Yeah, maybe. We haven't really had a chance to see how it would perform outside of that, obviously, because we only really get that one knockout tie a year, and usually we're just not at the level to make that happen yet. And it might just take us getting a little bit better. Goal uh, We lost 2-1 to... They had two shots on target and scored both of them. Uh, so, so far in Europe this season, we've conceded four shots on target. And managed to lose. <laughs> 50 goals from Gretzky. I reckon he can just keep going, right? It, it is what it is, son of a quiche. Um, first goal was one of those ones where the defender has the ball at his feet and then just doesn't do anything until he's tackled. It is what it is. Frustrating. We, we were the better side, but yeah. It seems that we can't really get through a season without having a game like that. Right, when is the next Champions League game? It's been in 11 days. So we can go full strength against Sweetie or as full strength as sort of we can right now. Let these guys get some match sharpness back, especially Kamga, who needs it. Job at work again. Didn't get it again. Fuck's sake. <laughs> at this one, I'd be like, fuck it. Screw you guys. I'm going home or to a, a different job. But I know it isn't as easy as that. Yeah, Bicky Carr are not good under friend. To be fair, do you remember what his attributes look like? <laughs> 
sadly that makes a lot of sense he's not a good manager and there's very little we can do about it unless we try and poach him like get rid of Becca Kara's manager like we tried to with Nashar and it didn't work but maybe it could work with him because he's so bad his horrendousness might actually help us out five one over sweetie good at least henry's scoring some goals this season and jong dong suck even got a goal against us right strong start uh yeah vicky kara could not be in the relegation now they have lost vladimir staver as well to a like um he'd probably say no yeah it's a shame because he's utterly shocking my my manager actually probably haven't changed at all uh because they were already very good to begin with actually i don't know if they've changed or not for his replacement. Well, it's not about replacement. It's about, I, we can't get rid of him. <laughs> Jar Jar has been at the club a while. Um, but I don't think he plays enough games to get that. The only icons currently, or legends or whatever it is, is me and Melman. Yeah, I've always wondered how much of an effect the manager actually has on the team. Like, whether, say, a manager with all ones in every attribute managing Manchester City over a season would, over a certain number of sins actually show too much of a decline in their quality versus a manager with all 20s because a lot of staff roles i feel like don't make too much of a difference it's like when i did that you know director of football video where i did that exact thing to see if there was any difference and there are some differences but most of the differences are pretty negligible the experience how much yeah it's the old um the old adage of you can't get experience unless you get the job which you can't get because you haven't got experience <laughs> it's, the, it's the classic uh oh it's under 23s i was expecting to see a usual goal from our boy media handling so high i don't know um i guess i can't have bad media handling if i never handle them right it's a bit like me saying i'm really good at juggling and you asking me to demonstrate and me saying no you can't say that i'm bad at juggling because you've never seen me juggle <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> i feel like it's negligible and hammer and lose at home to goodyear well that helps us out a little bit Stasny. That was Nordiques. Yeah, but... Um, was that really Paul Stasny? Christ. Maybe they were talking about the Avs record, because obviously the franchise record would be Stasny, yeah. 139. That being said, like, McKinnon isn't... I wouldn't say 140 points for McKinnon this season is off the table, given that he's the current points leader. Like, I'm checking all the loans, exactly. Do we need new signings and stuff? Oh, well, we're not in a transfer window. Are you good at juggling? Yes, very. Will I show you? No. Oh, the new... Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, like for the press conference stuff. Um, No, I, I delegate everything. And I will skip any new signings ones. 120 by second. Yeah, so... McKinnon gets that easily. Domestic player buyers of what? Yeah, I always get that in building a nation say since we never signed them. Good juggling. Now, there you go. I'm juggling them loans. It's gaslighting to him living as a juggler. It's just a clown. But I, they already know that one. But I could be a clown who could juggle Viking. I am capable. I am multi-talented with my giant red shoes and my giant red nose. Man City's... Oh, look, hang on. It's that news article again where it says, we're one of the best youth academies in the world. And it's like star graduates. None. Right. What are we saying? Wait. Oh. They've kicked us off the list. <laughs> Other clubs like Ace at is good for youth. Um, yeah, loads. There's um Dian Bars and Generation Foot in Senegal are very good. Um But you want like a massive list of them rather than just like one. NHL record for points. I'll oh, be Gretzky from the eighties or something when he was playing against snowmen. Um, but it's obscene. Like, if he took away all of Gretzky's goals, he would still be the leading point scorer. He and his brother hold the record for the most points scored by brothers in the NHL. Gretzky's got like three and a half thousand and his brother has like four. <laughs> Take that, Sundines. Or, what was, no. The Dome? There's loads of brothers, isn't there? Yeah, it was Matt Sundin and Henrik Sundin, wasn't there? Or was it Sundin? No, there was definitely loads of brothers. There was brothers at Detroit at one point too, wasn't there? And I reckon his brother did most of it. Schrodinger's juggler. Exactly. Until you see me juggle, you don't know if I'm a bad juggler. Uh, so who is... LAFC are actually the ninth highest hit. Three additional star graduates. They got a guy from Benin in their squad. And he'd be good. Yeah, the Sedin twins. That's what I was thinking of, yeah. 
We thirst a can to be free. I know. Bastards. Uh, on the plus side, Hadrian, three games into the Champions League, we've conceded a total of four shots on target over three matches. Sadly, we have still managed to lose a game. <laughs> but such is life managing an FM. Uh, sard the Sardine Twins. You know it. Okay, we're still considered rich, which is good. Won the third one. No, 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 no. Don't be silly. Uh, Leon scored a goal where our defender kept the ball at his feet and just stood there until he was tackled. And then a uh, corner goal. Watch for the confidence. And she's like, I never had 2002. I had 2003 through five. Those were great. Like, were the Sardine <laughs> twins close? <laughs> good. I like it. Yeah, it's annoying though, Adrian. But on the plus side, Hammer and a two for two. So we can't really complain when Hammer and have got back-to-back -back wins in the Conference League and are carrying us on their back at the moment. Won the freaking Champions League. Nicely done. Fair Whoa. That's amazing. 20 points. That's a good season. Hammer and back with a win. Come to the game before Bob. That's why they're, when they're in the penalty box together, it's a bit like that, I suppose. Right. So now we rest for Kasira. And make sure I don't give this don't give this report to Mr. Jobless. I've got a guy called Frank Collins there, which I just really like. Brandau drama. Drama that no one's talking about except for that one dude. Right, Benfica next. Benfica's gonna be very tough. Starting more games. Oh my god, not this bollocks again. Uh I could always try this. No, never mind. Fine, you'll play. I mean you won't, but you will. Right. We are at home against Benfica, at least. That's going to help us. But they're actually decent. See you on it. Wait. Had a chat with Ruben Siouane earlier today, and the player is frustrated at not being able to pursue a move to Real Madrid. When did Real Madrid... I blocked you. I never... They never bid on you. When did Real Madrid bid on you? Chat. It's the 3rd of November. Real Madrid have not bid on him. If it was just making things up now. Bon I have Whatever. returned for another month. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for the 18 months. That's a double Twitch Barbie. Oh, I've got some lookups to do. Um, set him to play 45 minutes. I don't think you can set players to play 45 minutes in the first team squad because you're managing the match. Yeah, it's now gaslighting me. Like, so what am I supposed to even do here? Why wouldn't you like to talk to Real Madrid? You, I don't know. Maybe because they didn't fucking bid on you? Five million? Fuck off. Bid on him in August. But then why is he complaining now? Anyway, piss off. <laughs> what a weirdo. That was very strange. Yeah. Oh, well. Set Maltese is just translate true. It takes a little while. Oldest, youngest, oldest real player. Ah, uh, yeah, we could use that filter, can't we, to find that? Just, just normal SI things. Um, use the. Oh no, what we're doing? That's not a filter. That's a view. Let's try. We have to use the is nougam filter and then set it the other way to is, which is ironically means that they're not. <laughs> so Wani, uh, like three point three million. Wasn't allowed to go on it. What do you mean she didn't ask me in it? Yeah. In my head, she did. She thinks I'm good and cute. Uh, right. So the youngest real player in the game is Julian Hall of New York Red Bull. I think, anyway. The game might not actually do it perfectly. 24th of March. Hmm. So they're basically 26. It doesn't actually do it naturally here. But you can see there's some 26-year-olds still. The oldest real player in the game. I'd have been before it was Nope, I don't have that set on anything. I've never set that to any player. There are a lot of American players there, aren't there? There's a guy here at uh, Felix Stalin. There's Jesse Gonzalez, who's 39 years old for Houston Dynamo. Oh, it's just one of those weird FM quirks, isn't it? Yeah, the back office have tried to keep it hush hushed. So much so that it was hush hushed even from me. I think. I can't remember what actually happened to Julius Sundat. Oh, he plays for Luther. Sort of. Actually, no, he does play for them. 23 appearances last year. Did a couple of years on loan at Goodyear, but now off to Luther, playing football. 
can't complain. Unlike Ruben Cioane, apparently. No, I mean, like I said, we have player lookups for that. So if you do a player lookup, I will look at him. Like, oh, fine. Like, sorry, the reason we have player lookups is to stop us just looking. If I basically just said, oh, chat can look up any player they want, we would just spend the entire stream looking at players and never make any progress. That's why we have a player lookup. But yeah, so that is no Alamina. Um, like I said, that's what I told you last time. Um, but either way, that is him. At uh, Obviously, you would never have the Wolves to join in this save because this is from the start of the save. The Sutter family, which is still less than Gretzky and his brother. But yeah, there he is. Do you know what? We'll start with the we'll start with the D's, Lavinia, and we'll move from there. Shadow. No, not shadow. Shades AOE. Thank you for the follow. We've got that hammer and came coming up soon. Luckily, it's after Benfica. The third Ardagulaire. Do you know something I don't? Has there been shenanigans afoot? Draw with Sweetie. Roy Fleming scores two goals for central midfield. Stop. I mean, I say stop playing him there. It kind of works. <laughs> for whatever reason, it kind of works. 1.3. Wow. Oh, it's Champions League. Got confused there. Marisberg. I've actually got a guy, and he's called Zulu, which is always a bonus. Yeah, true. Good old Chia Batter bread. Can't play up top otherwise. Fair, good point, well made. Gretzky, but do they really? I thought Gretzky had over 3,000 points for some reason. Uh, are we still on the low? Oh, yeah, we are. I don't... Yeah, no, some of these guys are still that. Uh, go to that guy. Boom. See how long it takes you to go insane. Immediately. His brother had minus points. <laughs> Alex, thank you very much for the raid. Wow, that's really kind of you, my friend. Welcome in, everybody. Still a Michael Scott quote. He did, yes. What a bastard. <laughs> yeah, Della Canal seems to have, unfortunately, gone the way of the canal and used it to transverse to a universe where he's not a very good footballer. I <laughs> Just follow the analogy. Mass renamed players. You probably could do it in something like FMRTE. I would say. Uh, right. Okay, all of these guys are half decent now, so we'll just... It's going to ask me to do that thing again, isn't it? I'm probably going to do a little chunks like that. It is annoying, though, how it then resets everything. God, the day that FM stops doing that will be a blessed day. Well, there will be much rejoicing. Carlos Freeman's still in there, though. Okay. Only three stars. That's a shame. Wasn't he quite good? Anyway. Uh, Yevrich is still really good, but we want to have a look at Yevrich now, right? Yeah, he's good, but he's another central midfielder. He'd cost a fortune, but he is very good, no doubt. Right. Chiotti, he was... a winger. And he wouldn't... Re he's not really a winger come striker. He's just a winger. Good about feet, which is nice. Good old Walazok. Wait, was that really the only high potential guy in there? Um... He was that striker. He's got okay potential. Won't talk to us anytime soon, though. No winger, no sign. It's weird that these guys are allegedly extensively scouted yet are showing no signs of actually anything useful here. So he's at Arsenal. Uh, you are... A Santa Kotoko dude might be cheap. You guys won't discuss terms with us right now because of your age. Pablo... Wait, where's Pablo? Pablo Toro. Yeah, he's got release calls, but five... 4.7 thousand... Actually, now that we can see him, we haven't Viking. We need to. Um, because the last time we actually had an an organised Eurovision party was before COVID. It was like 2018 or some shit. It was crazy. They are, but if he's got, he might be a Siwani type of guy. You're at Spurs, so we're not going to be able to sign you. You want quite a lot of wages. Oh no, it's that guy that's basically a full on. Uh. McGinley, you're at Liverpool. You're not going to sign for us. Rogerio won't sign for us right now. You, we like the look of, but you won't sign for us right now. What about Rivas? Cheap-ish. Very limited from a technical standpoint, but is a free transfer. Let me just make sure there's no... Yeah. Just want to check that. Let me look if I can host something. Yes. You'll have to see it. Um... Oh no, yeah, I need to keep the free the weekend of my sister's birthday free, but I believe that's the weekend afterwards. I hope. <laughs> I, I hope. 
Um, well, youngster contract, really? That's surprising. Okay. Squad sizes. Um, not as far as I know, anyway. We haven't hit one yet. Should have to move it. Yeah, it's true, yeah. Like, get with the program, sis. Kelly and Mercier. I've actually like those guys. They're a bit overpriced. Right, Pablo Toro. Injury prone. It would depend on what he wants as far as squad status, which doesn't actually tell us anything. And he's unwilling to compromise on wages. Hmm. I mean, he's got a short release course, so there's a low release course rather. So there's no reason not to try it. He's okay, actually. And he's probably cheap. Wages are a little... Actually, they're all right. Okay. Right. Both of those guys, hopefully. Windows 95. Am I missing something? Because I never literally, like, learn much about the Eurovision songs until literally the day of. I find it's just... I like to keep my mind pure, you know? Uh, well, Valetta are not having a good start, are they? This is a bit of a weird start in general. Set your recruitment focus. Uh, exclamation mark RF. Um, that's it. Basically, all the information about my recruitment focus is can, fi can be found in exclamation mark RF, which is not my video. Um, also, 20 different recruitment focuses is just going to slow your game down and probably not find you that much more than about five would have done. I would have thought anyway. Right. Uh, this is rotation. Padilla. Ooh. Is that wise? I think I'd honestly rather play Malaika in that role because Padilla is simply not able to start a match right now. Neither is... Ka well, Kamgari is, but I don't want him to. Uh, we'll put Salem in. Kadri's back, which is nice. Uh, right. Ah, to be fair, I'm more interested in the songs. Like, it's Eurovision, it's a song contest. Um, admittedly, it's not, but, like, that's all I care about. Usually because most of them are dreadful. But there's usually a couple of bops in there as well. That reminds me, Pog and I need to rewatch Fire Saga. That feels like it needs to exist. Billy Roy's boys, yeah. There was one dude that came through, I believe. Oh no, not only Roy's boys. There was another, there was a 15 year old dude that came through, um, but he signed a new contract the moment we actually tried to talk to him. He was at La Havre. Bopping Mitchell entertainment. Mostly, it's an excuse to get drunk. And wear fancy dress a lot of the time. 3 1. Nice. We're actually okay with our rotated squad this year. It's. It's nice to see us actually being able to win games with the rotated side for once. Right. Future prospect is okay, actually. Seven grand a whip. Piss off. I ask his agent, he says between three and four, and then he comes and he wants seven. Go away. Not doing that. Benfica will be very difficult. If he does need oh my god, every fucking year. Why is it only these two that complain, even though we have other regular starters? They're all rested. And yet, these two are the only two that complain about it. It's like, every year, on the dot, match day three, let me start complaining, boss. At least, what if that actually causes some upset in terms of some of our matches? Because they're unsettled by it. Even though it's utterly bizarre and stupid. I think they just need... Uh, although this one actually does make a bit more sense. I think... Oh, wow. He actually still has important player. I'll obviously promise him that. But in the meantime, I will also try to put it down if I can. To regular starter. And then do the... He's the one that might sometimes... Yeah, there we go. He'll still complain. But... At least now I'll complain a little bit less. Literally, Vida has like a calendar reminder the same way that I do to like make certain save file points. And it just tells him, right, it's time to complain again. He's like, yes, dear. Right, Escorpiones. What are we saying? Nothing. Okay. I guess we can't expect the world every single time. At least we can hopefully play a relatively full strength team against that hammering game, though, because that... We're actually starting to pull away immediately. We've won six out of six for once. This is a rarity for us. To actually be winning some of those games. Who are you? Oh, it's the guy Braga. Have I? 
Just all the first names there. Uh, upsetty Wacty. Yes, indeed. Once the Upsetty Wacty note comes through, all was lost at that point. Uh, oh, I, I forgot a couple of lookups. My apologies. Uh, Ferris Abula. <laughs> well, see, that's going to return no results because we don't have him called Ferris Abula in this save, but I assume you mean our, our good friend Arda Goulet. Uh, but which one? Wait, has he moved clubs? Nope. No, he hasn't. I literally just sort of... See, that's what tricked me last time. I thought his name... I thought the club he played for began with a V, but it was his original name that began with a V. Oh, we're actually going to be playing against Arda Goulet in this next game, who is now wanted by Al Hilal and the usual suspects. Yeah, lack of Dinko playing is disappointing. We may have to deal with that at the end of this season because he's going to lose development time. Boston was honestly ridiculous. Probably one of the best regions in the save right now. The fact that PSG paid £5.5 .5 million for him is a travesty. Norgeland, I hope they had some clauses on the end of this. He is insane. He's still not as good as that guy. Christ, who is it? There was an absolutely ridiculous player. And I can't remember who it was. He might have won the Ballon d'Or, honestly. I can't for the life of me remember who it was, but there was a... Oh, no, because every single Ballon d'Or winner so far has just been old player that's existed. Yeah, it was Zayim, wasn't it? It was either Zaim or Badini. And why Zaim is pretty good, but I think you're right. It probably was Badini, wasn't it? I don't think it actually was Badini, but Badini is also insane. I love that he came through at Napoli as well. Not even come through in... Didn't even come through in England. The Portuguese... I think you're right. It was the Portuguese guy, wasn't it? Um... Where is he? Oh, this is Man City. Matt, you moron. Uh... Oh, no. Anwar Zayim went to Man City from them. Uh... Yeah, I can't remember. There was definitely another player that had blues the likes of which I've never seen. Yeah, there was another guy. Actually, we'll just look at like leading transfers because he'd have been he'd have gone for like obscene money, wouldn't he? It's not like it's going to be a cheap deal. Uh, leading transfers. Look at the newest ones. Ah, this guy here, Henrique Guerrero, 116 million. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one. 116 million for Henrique Guerrero. Look at the state of him. He might be the best player I've ever seen in FM. It's... I don't think I've ever seen a player have that many attributes above 16. It's truly insane. And I thought Inamino Moreno of that last save was good, but he is on a different level. American Guam striker. Yeah, he might be the best winger ever. He can just do it all other than jump. <laughs> he can head, but he can't jump. The ball just has to come right at him head height. So we're getting Alejandro Rivas. Not yet, we're not, but we will be. Sorry. Wants to discuss the number of matches he's starting. What? Oh. Yeah, no fair. Um. I'll I'll compl I'll cause him a problem there, and then we'll just dump his rate. He he's not ready yet for that, but I had to offer him that to get him to sign that new contract right before we were going to get all the interest in him because I knew the interest was coming in the summer. And ah, oh, he's also a bell end. Oh well. Been too long. Hope all is well. JCM, thank you very much for the eleven months. How's it going, my friend? Uh, we'll do that, that, that. Right, cool. That's a shame, but oh well. He's a bit of a bell piece. What can you do? See, why couldn't we have drawn someone like Partizan? I felt like we'd have a chance of beating them. Then again, they gave Valencia a good run. Man United back to winning by loads again now. I wonder how Bayern are getting on in the old uh, Europa League out of interest. Bayern have only won one game in the Europa League. They drew with Lazio and lost to Anderlecht. Good God. They are... um. 
Skip it. Oh, yeah, probably should, actually. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't realise that. That wasn't on my uh, playlist or anything, obviously. Um, right. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Right. Kadri is star player now. He has good passing, which is why I think they put him in the middle. So, yeah. Hang on, you're saying Norwich were in there? Um, who was... Wait, in the Europa League? Holy shit! Do you reckon Norwich take over? Okay. This must be from winning a cup, right? Chat, how did Norwich end up in the Europa League? That they haven't won a cup. They must they must have qualified through England. Norwich. Norwich came sixth in the Premier League. <laughs> As a result, I've never seen that. Usually in these saves, without the league being switched on, it kind of just, you know, defaults to the same clubs pretty much over and over again with occasional exceptions to, like, random Premier League big table teams. I've never seen a team from the Championship qualify for Europe in one of these saves, like, as in a team that's in the Championship at the start. That's very surprising. Isn't it weird? I love that it shows you more information here than it does, like, anywhere else. Salford have won League One, by the way. Like... Auburn City relegate from the National League. Everton and Forest down, yeah, yeah with Leicester. <laughs> I'll keep the Prem happy. Gamer Raptor, thank you very much for the follows. Yeah, Norwich in the Europa League. And not only are they in it, but they're actually playing well. Um, <sighs> the usual. Oh, how dare you not play a player that wants to play in my position in my position? I would much rather you do this. That way I can then complain about not playing. Right. Okay, big change is needed, but that's okay. We've got the minerals. Except we don't have Melman, so... It might have to be Watara Fafana. Or even Quasi. No, I'm going Quasi. He's got better passing than Watara, hasn't he? As we learned earlier. Um, Padilla is just not ready to start yet. We want... I wonder what my assistant's obsession is with not starting Gonzalo Diaz, even though he's objectively much better. I guess it's just the lack of the footedness, but that doesn't count for that much. Palacio, Vida, Tuncar, Rojas, Espino, Sunday. All right. Cool. Ahona and Viga, not easy, but they are playing a 4-4-2, which might give us a chance. What will give us less of a chance is this squad that they've assembled here. Last time we played Benfica, during the season where we did really well, we still lost 3-0. So I'm not expecting much from this. Uh, I will, however, put Cthulhu on the bench instead of Melman because there's no point in putting Melman on the, on the bench when he can't. He's definitely not featuring in this game. Right. Okay. <laughs> How many shots on target do you reckon to concede seven goals today? I'm going to go with three. <laughs> ah. Yes, Benfica have won the Champions League in this save, so these guys are no mugs. And actually have a really solid squad. It'd be a good test for us. Arda Gula Hattrick wouldn't be surprised. Well, that guy's set really far up there, unless it's just the way it displays it. Okay. We are at home, though, and we've beaten better sides than Benfica at home. Just rarely. I just want to see how this one goes. I reckon this is the kind of game where we are going to concede opportunities. It just feels inevitable that there's going to be chances for Benfica in this game. Curious to see how Quasi does as well, starting through the middle. Like, it's a big opportunity for him as the... As the trek, I guess. Um, well, 20 minutes in, and we still haven't let a shot happen, which is a good sign. It shows that we're keeping it tight against Benfica as well. I would have expected them to have like a little peppering of shots early on. That's a good pass for Vida as well. Runners beyond. Go on. Oh, that's wait. Quasi. It's in. We lead. Sirens won. Benfica nil. Quasi gets the assist. Seku Fafana scores, and we lead. Okay. Maybe we are just. Maybe the Leon game was just a pure blip. Yeah, we're still not doing it, Hadrian, just to see what happens. Good from Vida again. Bad defending from Benfica. Though. That was absolutely appalling. So we've got... I'd be really annoyed if we conceded that goal. So it's nice to actually have one go our way for once. Let's say for once. We have had a fair amount of those lately. Right, okay. So we start off well. Now we just need to stop them from having shots. Half an hour into the game. And yet again, 
we've limited our opponent to zero shots. Which is always a good sign. Right, just slip it straight forward. There we go. Straight into the midfield. They're actually standing off of us quite a lot in those positions. Which is allowing us a nice... One thing I will say is it is actually meaning that our wingbacks are getting marked up quite easily, though, from our out-of-the-back sort of stuff. So I feel like Vida and Palacio might have quite poor games here. Although, Vida did technically get credited with the assist for that goal, didn't he? Or something. So getting them into space is going to be tough. Ooh. Yeah, their press is quite aggressive. But if we're sensible on the ball, the chances might come. Here we go. Diaz. He has to find the right pass here. Oh, that's offside, surely. Oh, Ed McGinty, maybe, yeah. Okay, that's offside, clearly. But again, it was a nice little bit of football. Diaz just took too long to play that pass. I think if he lets that go, the moment he gets it... If he just fires that into the channel with his first touch... Actually, no, Fafana was onside. Honestly, Fafana... If he just lets that roll across his body and just carries on running, he gets a goal. But instead, he sort of tried to turn it around the corner. But again, nice football from us. Oh, here we go. They've not had a shot yet. Will this be their first shot, first goal? No. Richard Guicune's up there. I want to get to a third half time in this season without considering a shot. I don't know why we've suddenly got so good, like, in general, defensively. Tony Sunday. Nice. Oh, this is glorious. Quasi, he probably will have to shoot. Ah. Oh. Yeah, he signed last stream. He's actually technically only on loan. Go on, get to half time again without conceding a shot. I dare you. Fucking hell. What is with us? This is like a. It feels very different to how we used to play. But it maybe, as you say, it is teams slightly slightly playing differently against us, and it means that they're they're sitting a bit deeper, so they're just getting less shots, but it's also meaning that it's harder for us to create chances. Potentially. That's possibly what it is. So the new tactic. No, no. It's well, I mean, yeah. Like, I think that's possibly what it is as well. Um, winning stop moaning. What? What are you talking about? Jesus Christ. I'm not I'm not moaning. I'm trying to explain the situation. Jesus Christ. I'm trying to explain the situation as to why the situation... Why you, this it is what it is. Uh, all right. How did he miss that? Which is more efficient, yeah? That was a massive chance, and I can't believe he's put that as wide as that. I'd have been annoyed if we'd have conceded that. I hear money. Okay, well, good for you, mate. Um, we're just analysing what's happened, right? Is that bad? <laughs> ah, dear. Uh, right. Um, but yeah, I think it's a case of, as our reps grown, they're playing slightly different against us, which means that they're not being quite so forceful with their attacking play, and as a result, is providing... So, the last three shots on... Uh, that's three shots on target. Three goals. Uh, good lord. Right. I mean, what can you fucking do anymore? It's actually ridiculous, mate. Mm. Wow, Tony has had a shit day, in fairness. So, what's that now? Five shots on target with, in four matches in Europe. And somehow we've... <laughs> Kamga's not had the best game, in fairness. The match sharpness is definitely not there for us. Um, we'll go with Wilson for a little bit. The strike force have done okay. Um, right. But that was just Tony making a mistake. Yeah, he is having a bad game, but like, you can't do anything about that tactically. You can't have a don't play badly tactic. I wish we could. That'd be amazing. I feel like we've actually been worse since we took put Kadri out of the team again. Oh, the better, faster, stronger. Uh, let's see. Right. The strikers are actually doing okay. And there's no obvious, like, change there on the fact that we're playing well, right? Um, we can't stop. There's only so much you can do tactically, right? <laughs> If every shot on target is just going to be a goal against, then 
No tactic will ever stop that. Palacio, come on. He's going to shoot, isn't he? Oh, what a save. That is, that's deflected, and then he's got the save. A lot better than we were against... And bear in mind, actually, remember, Benfica are actually good. So I, we should put that into context that we're actually playing quite well against them, considering. These guys are a decent team. And we're actually playing, in a way, playing them off the park, really. Uh, not off the park so much. We are the better side, uh, which is a good sign. Right. And it's more points. Or more point, anyway. Oh, come on. I, I actually give up with this fucking game. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> like, what was that? <laughs> this is actually ridiculous. So back-to-back -back games, they've just scored their only two shots on target and we lose. Ay. I'm genuinely blown away by that level of nonsense. Oh, they're kicking air balls. All right, then. Yeah, cool. I mean, this is not even a change of tactic. That's just FM's like, no, no, you're going to lose. Oh, what a load of nonsense. Back-to-back -back games now where we've lost to their only two shots on target. <laughs> Fucking hell. This is why I always prefer to build tactics where you create loads rather than try to stop the other team from scoring because it just feels like it's impossible to do so. And true, we were playing Benfica. Like, they are a good team. Um, that's just very irritating. So, what's that? Three, four matches in Europe, six shots on target, four goals. Cooper, do not hate me. I am familiar with oh, the other six. Dion, thank you very much for the follow. Now, admittedly, because we're creating, thinking. we're defending really, really strongly, it means that they're having to create better chances in order to get shots. But, yeah. Holy Lord. <sighs> that one is actually more annoying than the last one. Yeah, I mean, it's because, as I said, when you're defending like that, they, they are one of the tough games, but. Oh, they just are, right? Um, bigger at four goals conceded, yeah. <sighs> and it wasn't like this, like, our goalkeeper's four or anything. They're just, that's just how it is. Um, oh. Yeah, it's just random individual mistakes, which is one of the ways that, unfortunately, the game chooses to show them being better than you rather than uh, just, uh, just TV and then everything zoomed out to both sides, pretty much. We dominate. Um, only about as much as the Premier League's always kind of dominating these sort of saves, right? Did Hammer win again? Wait. Oh, no, they haven't played. Right now, they're about to. Watch them randomly look. <laughs> Hammer just won in non. Okay. <laughs> Screw us. It's not about us. It's about Hammer. Hammer are now three for three and have already won both of their tough games, which inevitably means they're going to lose their next two. But, like, the Hammer men are carrying. Oh, so clinical. Now, I I don't know. Um, I suspect it's just as our reps grunt they're playing differently against us, but it is very annoying to like not concede any shots and have everyone you do concede go straight in. Uh, oh, best. Okay. Uh, surprising that Badini's not winning this yet, right? It's definitely getting there. Um, he will inevitably once these guys retire. Although Yamal will probably be up there. Basically, once Badini gets it, he'll be the number one on this for like ten years. The ham men carry. Um, but okay, the Benfica loss is it is what it is, right? We expected that that was going to be a tough result for us. Um, yeah, he's insane. Let's try and have a little look at the coefficients, which won't have gone up by much because obviously we lost again. Seven points on the year. So we're slipping a little bit. We're still fifth on the year. We're relatively close to getting to touch with Scotland. We, we are the background character, yeah. They are having their own little vibe today. Uh, well... <laughs> We should be able to get another Champions League game into that hill. I don't know how far it is. It's probably the other side of the international break, isn't it? Nah, he's only injured for like two or three days. He'll be all right. 
Yeah, the fact that he's only 27 is crazy. Sort of after 12 years in. It shows how young he actually is in real life, right? Uh, Espino, right, so. I am tempted to put Kadri back in, though. Because we won our first two games with Kadri in. And since then, we've lost both of them. And Espino, I mean, he should be. He's a wonder. I mean, he should be very good. Ah, oh, dear. Now, Badini is on a different level. And the fact that they've actually got two of them, because they've got another guy, that uh, Moroccan guy they've got, is also absolutely goated. So City have got some, like, next-level guys who if must be, like, high 190s in PA and are probably already on there as far as CA uh, C goes. He should be really good. They've got Spanish as well. Oh, really? Okay. Christ. Porto midfielder Stefan Eustachio. I, I genuinely have never heard of him, but fair play. Uh, Damian scores a few goals there as well. Nice. Right. Another international break's come quite quick. Oh, we were going to check on what Malta got up to, weren't we? As far as their um, 161st still. So they probably didn't do anything useful in this window, but they beat North Macedonia 3 2. This movement. And also. Oh, wait, that's the wrong year. No, that is this year. Beat Andorra, drew with Lithuania. Both home and away. They're probably going to get promoted. Yeah, there's every chance Malta get promoted to the next stage of the Nations League as well, which is really good. Disappointed to only beat Mal um, Andorra by a goal, I must admit. Uh, Rojas is... Oh, Jesus. Lots of injuries coming in there. They could go up. I think they will. All they have to do is beat Andorra in their remaining game, right? Good, you win. Valletta finally get a... Oh, my God. Birki Kara under their new absolutely shocking manager at bottom. No wonder they did so bad in Europe this year. Help this type of saves? No. In no way does it help. But how would a dynamic youth rating infect the coefficient of clubs in European level? But it doesn't, basically. Uh, also, the dynamic youth rating doesn't change anyway, does it? So even if it did have an impact, we wouldn't see it for like 200 years of the save. Uh, right. Robert, Robert Alley. Did Roy get another one? Good old Roy. International teams. Um, well... Yeah, the save isn't about the international teams, but even if it was, it wouldn't affect it because it doesn't really work to the point where it would work over a 200-year period, but over the lifetime of this save, you'd be lucky to see a single point of increase. I think Biki Kara could... Ha it could happen. Genuinely. Okay, this guy's at Arsenal, so he's unlikely to want to sign for us, but I want to have a look at him anyway, right? Uh, Rail Sawacha. Yeah, but the, faci the facilities actually will improve. But once we start getting more teams in, like, the the European stages. <laughs> Unless you do Bulgaria. Hey, there, there's your tip, chat. Pro tip, do Bulgaria. Only affects player's reputation. Yes. Oh, no, that's what everyone wanted, Mr. Enforcer, when they brought in the youth rating, uh, dynamic youth rating stuff. Wait, has he got... Chat, Roy is two and a half star CA now. He's got seven goals and 11 assists this season and is now two and a half. Did he earlier? I thought... Because it's come back up again. He's back to being five-star PA. What on earth? Come on, Roy. Don't do drugs. Sign Roy Fleming. He feels like potentially, if he's actually any good, he might have next manager vibes about him as well if uh, Vida doesn't pan out. Oh, good stuff. Right. Yeah, whichever team puts out, it should be okay, even though it is hammering. Luckily, we've got a bit of a gap, though. And I don't want to damage them too badly, given that they're the ones carrying us in Europe. Yeah, if he becomes Anguian, which he must do, right? Surely he can't be good enough to play for England. Well, you're unlikely to see any improvements from Bulgaria in real life, uh, because Bulgarian football is in an absolute shit state, if I recall at the moment. 4-2 win, okay. Yeah, the rotated sides, albeit this has got quite a lot of strong players in it, but it is still technically rotation. They're much stronger. It's just a fact. Like To be able to beat someone like Hammer like that, we're five points clear with a game in hand. This season, we look much better. Nice place to go on. No, I, um, M works with someone who's Bulgarian. Like, it looks beautiful in places. Um, Banfield, they've got to have... Wow, really? Montenegrin guy, though, there. Lots of the second nationalities, isn't it? Because we're licensing. Oh, I see. Yeah, Zhongdong Suck is 
I think we kind of had a feeling that he was going to be a decent player, but I think he still technically has five-star potential, which is exciting. Because usually what happens is we send a five-star guy out on loan and then they're there for two years and then all of a sudden it's just like crap again. Well, not crap, but it's just much lower than it was. But he seems to be consistently maintaining a decent level of potential, which is always a good sign. So what's that? Yeah, we're up to 143 loans again now, which is good. Yep, he's still five-star. We've actually got four five-star potential players out on loan. And Kristich has still only started five games in the second tier, but has got four assists in those matches. Mm. And as their mid-table. Oh, plus 20 goal difference for Slima. Advaldo Mourinho, who is on loan from us, I believe, is the top scorer in the league as well. Damn. All right, we take that. Also, so it's an international break. Then it's Melita. Then it must be the last Champions League. Let's say last. The next Champions League game. He set up two goals in that game. Play him more, Nashar, for the love of God. But you're right. It's because he's not fully comfortable in that role. Uh, Saka's unhappy. It's annoying, though. Uh, cool. Okay, so we're now back into the European sets of scouting, I believe. Oh, we already were, weren't we? Any interesting promises? Oh, those ones. Crash never get back in the squad. That's fine. These guys I don't care about. We lead that. No surprises there. Red Bull Salzburg are bound to have a couple of absolute monsters, including that guy we already know about. They've got, speaking of, never mind, absolute Moses instead. It's Emil Moser, who's decent. Uh, Michael Bum was, was two, uh, two stars, I think. Or it might have been 1.5. That might have been why we actually got him out. Yeah, I think he was always 1.5. Uh, and remember, he's playing in a Melita side that are going to be up against it. Which means I suspect that... Luckily, it is a two-year loan for him, though. So my concern was be they get relegated. He then doesn't want to go back. But the fact is, he's going to be going back no matter what because he's got a two-year loan. So him playing in the second tier for them next season could be quite tasty. You've got 31. Ah! Right. Bit of that. Not quite at the level where we're getting the 100 players out on international duty yet, but one day, I could definitely see that in our future. I think we're slowly working down the level of players that John is... Not play, players, clubs that John is scouting. Let's actually have a see. It. Let me show it this time. So it's at least letting me see that now. But when I tried to filter it by John last time, it went completely blank. Yeah. <laughs> like, cheers, FM. Scott Donnelly's certainly got a nice chunk of them. Okay. It's... Oh, no, he's still got a fuckload. Yeah, he's getting there, though. We're slowly getting rid of the uh, workload for him until eventually we can fire him. Half the squad at AFCON. Well, yeah, indeed. Um, <laughs> hence why we've been trying to avoid signing purely players from African nations, just to make sure that we've actually got some backup when AFCON inevitably happens. For a second, he was already getting a whole series. No. Um, I think he'll... I mean, he'll get game time this year, which means he'll still be developing. But it's not going to be in a team that's doing super well. Although, Melita... I just say that. They have won a game so far and aren't in the relegation zone. It's, it's nice to not have someone being completely adrift just yet. Uh, Milan Penza is getting through his work yet. Yeah. Wait. Bloody hell. That's quite a large pay increase for you, but who are you wanted by? Already? Okay. Yeah, he'll certainly be up against it, so which means he'll get an opportunity to play sort of well. And uh, now he's scored. Mayhem Sultan's... Wow, everyone's scoring. But weirdly, I can only say congratulations to one of them. Maybe it's because of his debut? I don't know. What are you looking for? Yeah, Tarshin, there was a brief moment where they looked like they might be that. Already replaced him. Sorry, who are you again? Literally. Because there was a segment when Tarshin and Lua looked like they might actually be the European clubs for us. But now Lua sort of struggled to be around mid-table most years. Uh, Valletta have been in the second tier. The only club that's really... The only clubs that have come up unimpressed, really, are Zabar, who've been admittedly not that impressive for a while now, and Sweetie are the other one. But the main reason I think Sweetie have done so well is because they had Zhong Dong suck so early, and now they've been able to strengthen around him as he improves. It really is just the pot luck of who gets Liam Wilton. Okay. 
strange. It's just potluck of who takes those loans. It's how um, uh, Haladash ended up becoming so good in the last save. Oh, a few more. Uh, one guy at Palk. Certainly worth a look. <laughs> Lee Haram. Nice. Wait, did I actually do the last one? Yeah, I did. Cool. Do next. Can't go much worse. Is it San Marino time? Uh, no. San Marino, to me, is not that interesting. Um, I thought that this might end up being the last building nation save I do for a while anyway. It's nice to mix things up a little bit. We're probably doing OTI next time unless it's something draft. The only issue with that is getting a database that will actually allow us to turn all those leagues on straight off the bat. However, because of the fact that you can roll saves over, it might not be so much of an issue. We like the loans. Uh, no, Goodyear have been... I actually don't know. With Goodyear. So... In real life, they have been sort of mid-table. But if you in this save, they actually dropped out the top flight completely. They only came back up five years ago. But since then, look. Fifth, third, fifth, third, third, and they're currently fourth. OTI, Outcast to Icons. So it's basically a European journeyman. But with loads of very specific rules. I probably, I mean, I really enjoyed my Luxembourg save from a few years ago. A long time ago, so it was like 2017, actually. Uh, sad. Okay, there's actually a team called Turda. So there you go. I wasn't expecting that, but there is. True, Hadrian. I mean, look what happened with this one, right? We we all clubbed together and made it work. Uh, I already know about him. Like, OTI is. They're just fun. Red zone in the meat. Oh, yeah, that would, that would go super well. It was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the one where I ended up at Sassuolo in, on the YouTube side of things, yeah. And I think we... Um, where did we finish the, the the only ever stream OTI? Was it Atalanta or Leon? He's unhappy with that. It was one of those two. Do an MLS save for like three months. Oh, yeah. Like, um, for example, I had a comment on the VOD actually about this. About um, how maybe for the beta I could do an outside of Europe save. And we kind of did that with the US men's team. But the viewership is just not there. It, it just really isn't whether it's beta or otherwise. Oh, hello. Who's getting a... Ollie Cherry getting a New Zealand cap under Albert Riera. Wait. That's... Is that... Oh, no. I was thinking about Berto Riera. <laughs> Good for him. Motor oh, he's got it. I don't know what I'd do for the beta. They will be women's teams. I mean, the fact is, I would like to do that as well, but I also don't want to saturate things. Like, I want to do a Fulham save. It has Ian. I can't believe you didn't notice. Mr. Oh, I need you to fix the poster. I saw your comment on the uh, the recap video after the last stream. Immediately went and got some uh, sellotape and fixed it. I'll have you know. Great Pentagon Challenge. I would never go to a Pentagon Challenge. I would find that so boring. I don't really like Pentagon Challenges. And also, like... 80% of that will be outside of Europe and thus pew. <laughs> yeah, uh, OTI would be fun. Whoa, also, Joseph Vondra. Oh, he's 20. Definitely worth a scout. OTI, it's uh, Alcaster Icons. It's a European journeyman save with very specific stuff. Going to be streaming uh, to in about 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to, well, I say about 10 minutes. We're going to be doing the next Champions League game. Oh, it's Galatasaray. Huh. I wonder how many shots on target they'll have. I've actually got... I want to see, in total, how many shots on target we can concede. Uh, uh, the fewest in this group stage. It's a shame you can't see stats for the... Well, you can, actually, can't you? It's just a bit glitchy. It's weird that the game doesn't track, like, European stats properly. That'd be a nice fix, wouldn't it? If it actually, like, fixed... Stat... Stat tracked properly. Uh, team detailed. I guess it'd be defence... Expected goals against. We've considered an expected 7.17 in 10 games. Yeah, a data hub. The safe, uh, this is the safe. So it will be going on until we either win or don't. There's no XG table for the check. Well, there is, but it shows every single team that's been in it, regardless of whether they were in the group stage or not. It just adds all the stats in one place. Does this screen... This shot... Ah, shots on target against. Oh, yeah, because that includes the, um... 
the qualifiers as well, doesn't it? Yeah, so that doesn't really count. Um, so it includes all the qualifiers as well. It's all a bit of a mess. Point being, we know that we've conceded six shots on target so far in four games. Which I would say is a pretty good record. I could randomly see this game against Galatasaray coming up, actually, being a game that we win like 5-1 or something, but we actually concede a lot of shots on target. I feel like that sometimes happens. Hello, Vaughn. It's been a bit up and down, Vaughn. Um, we've won two, lost two in the Champions League, as I was just saying in the chat, with a combined four goals conceded off of six shots. But on the plus side, Hamrun are top of the Conference League and have won every game so far, including the two toughest games they had. Oh, that was that winger. Regarding the remaining scouts I have, I don't have anything to do. Individual scouting assignments. Uh, well, I don't know. It depends. Are you doing team report scouting? Because that would probably take up a lot of their time as well. And remember, they, they never have nothing to do because if you're scouting players, they will be scouting those players for you. Galatasaray. I feel like we have a good record against Galatasaray. It feels like we play them all the time as well. Uh, that's not going to be enough for me to do that, is there? Weekend. Yeah, yes, I'm around this weekend. Next weekend, I'm off because it's Easter weekend. Uh, so I'm Pog's got that weekend off, so I'm definitely going to be taking that off just because I feel like I need a little break. We're hopefully going to try and go away in the summer for like a week, which would be quite nice. Somewhere where we can go like hiking and stuff. Um, actually, for this, I'll just send all these around again so we can get to the uh, Champions League game. What tune this is? Anyone new in there? Oh, hang on, there was. There was a 50... <gasps> There you go. It's not a Roy's... Oh. We'll scout him anyway, but he's probably kind of bad. Does all the team reports. I have seven recruitment focuses and 22 scouts. Um, Yeah, but remember, when you do team reports, presumably you are scouting some of the players in the teams. So you're not just getting the team report, then ignoring it. So every time that you select a load of players and hit get scout report on them, that's what your scouts are doing. They're scouting those players. Oh, but Kikara have woken up. You'll have to see it. Sweet, you have continued to be decent, actually. Madeira would be really, really nice. I feel like I'd like to stay in the UK this time, though. I want a holiday where we can do some stuff like that, but also sometimes it's nice to not do things. Do you know what I mean? Like, just be somewhere nice and relaxing and just actually relax. Uh, Padilla. Mm. Melbourne might actually be able to play the next game, potentially. Like a staycation, yeah, but you're away from home, but you're still just... So I could just read a book, have a beer, sit in a hot tub type of stuff, rather than be like, oh, we got to go, 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 because Malta was great and all. Quasi does need a rest. Yeah, the problem is who plays. I guess Malaka? Okay, go yeah, something like that. Like the, well, exactly like the lakes, because then there's lots of walking available. Um, Rojas shouldn't start this game. Neither can Kadri. I will start... Kebi... And by I keep forgetting bias is even here. That's what I want to do. Just relax a little bit. Uh, I will actually play. I should really start playing our proper goalkeepers for these games because it doesn't matter. They're not going to lose match sharpness. Um, okay, that will be okay. Just nice to see Padilla back. We should be able to win this one, given. The results we've been getting against much better teams than Melita. But now that I've said that, of course, this will be a 2-1 defeat. I think if we get the win against Galatasaray, that gives us the nine points that we want with two matches to go. And it can... <laughs> well, there it is. Yeah, but we kind of had no choice in that one because Malika's definitely not an advanced forward. Padilla could do the job. Wait, oh, now you want him. But now it's all like very strange. Also, it's November. Why are you been coming in November? There goes the unbeaten season. But at least we'll have a fresh squad for Galatasaray. But it is away from home, so we're never, never entirely sure. We did play a heavily rotated side, but in fairness, we've played a heavily rotated side in a lot of league games so far this season and actually got the results and played well. But that one might have been a bit too heavily rotated, perhaps. Never mind. Hammer and have dropped points anyway. <laughs> We're still four ahead of them, and we have a game in hand still. I don't know why I'm even worried about the league. We're in a much better position than we have been for years at this stage. Normally, we're like either level on points with them or actually trailing them. Uh, he's got quite good... Uh... Mm. Oh, is that Poe that scored again? <laughs> right. 
too much is there oh that's the cup isn't it oh, at least we got by getting through the cup we get an easier round then cool I'm not entirely sure what the format for next stream is going to be because normally we come back after christmas but we've still got two more league game, uh two more games or are going this side of christmas so it might be a bit of a weird setup we'll figure it out oh hello Thanasis Simeonidis. And he's a centre back. And he. Nice. Tend to struggle. Well, I guess it's because often your rotated squad is going to have a much lower match sharpness as well. Even if it even if their quality isn't that much lower than your main squad, which obviously it will be to a certain extent. But I suspect that. Are we the f Why are we suddenly massively no longer favourites for these games that we were before? I feel like before we'd have been an easy favourite for Galatasaray. It's like they've readjusted something as well on that side of things. New contract. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, we'll take that. I love how whenever I talk to Ryan Faroudra in these meetings, he always just... It's nothing specific noted every single time. The man has zero mood. Be very interested to see how Sturmgratz get on against Lyon, because if they beat them, that would worry me a little bit. Okay, they did at least lose that game. Darwin Nunez scored again. Liverpool dropped some points. Five goals from six. I, I'll have you know it's four goals from six shots. That's much better. And it could be about to get worse. Right. Ooh, Honvied. Ah. Isn't playing out. Oh, no. So as long as he's playing. I don't care if he's playing outside of his... He's not playing outside. I think he'll probably just end up staying there. Probably comes back at the end of the season. Needs a walk in the woods. He does. He does. Just like I'm going to take a walk after this stream. In the woods. My legs are way too tired to go running again. I'll probably go for a run tomorrow. Because tomorrow I'm spending all day working on an agent video which is going to be fun. And hopefully you guys will get... Well, not hopefully. You should get a video tomorrow night as well that isn't the agent video. Take a four-year deal. Dimek is now homegrown. Or is that a different guy? Oh, yeah, sorry. We have a lot of Dimeks. There's that guy that gets in the Maltese national team sometimes as well who's also called Dimek. But I think he's on loan at uh, Moster? Right, so new contract for us. Pauk's under 19s. And then our fate... Wow, okay. Greece is cooking. They are cooking up some talent for us. This is Xera. Which is lost to FC Copenhagen, which is disappointing. Right. The 24th, which is okay. Where, what have their results been so far? So they beat Ajax, but then so did we. Drew with Porto, and then lost to Dortmund and Benfica. They scored two goals and conceded four. Then again, we're a bit like that too. We've Actually, we've scored nine. Our goal is a lot better than a lot of the teams around us down here. I think it's positive. We're going positive vibes. We're going to go there, play well, and get a result that we can be proud of and deserve. I think Melman does get to start this game, though, because he's nearly back to at least match fitness. Sorry, like, his condition is nearly back to normal. And we can always bring on Padilla if needs be, who actually doesn't have that on him, at least. Palacio Sunday, Ortiz, nope. we starting Diaz. Tucar Rojas Espino, except I'm thinking Kadri. I think Kadri in the middle. I liked him there. And for whatever reason, Espino's been a part of some quite poor performances. Well, the last two, <laughs> pretty much. Because uh, all are on the bench instead of... Ah, who needs a goalkeeper? What could possibly go wrong? Okay, so no instructions there. They're playing a 4-2-4. Okay, with Cole Palmer on the left. Okay, that's intriguing. I know Cole Palmer's been there for a couple of years now, but... Right. God, I love how every single player on our team, except for David Rojas, has a wanted icon on him. Every last one of them in the starting 11 has a wanted icon. Okay. Moment of truth. Can we actually pull off a good result? I won't tolerate anything less than a win in this game. Not with the way things have gone for us. We're the underdogs, because apparently we're the underdog in every game. Uh, right, cool. I wonder if something changed as well when the, when the money changed, but I don't think it did. Because we still had that really good season prior to that. Well, not prior, but like during that period. So, 4-2-4. It's... I just don't know how we're going to handle that tactic. When we played against that tactic with PS when PSG were playing it, we've struggled, but it is PSG. So, 
they're going to have a much more stronger force. At least we've got the uh, the backline to handle it, maybe. I think they will have a decent number of shots in this game, though. But time will tell. Possession started strongly. 15 minutes in, no shots for Galatasaray. Not that that means anything, because as we know, when they do get a shot, it's going to go in. Oh, they've had two shots on target and they didn't score. Chat, I take it back. Although we are playing like shit, so less good. Oh, God, this is more like a last year type of game now, where nothing happens in the entire game, basically. And, oh, good. Plasio is now dead. And we have nobody, incredibly, despite having all those wingbacks, nobody that can play there. Right. Uh, to be fair, and is actually really good on his other foot as well. So that shouldn't... I mean, other than his lack of familiarity, he's actually okay to play there. But we will still be punished heavily for it. So no highlights in the game. Uh, an injury to our star player. Yep. Seems like your regularly scheduled Champions League. We're going to have to work on a different tactic, I think, at the end of the season. Just because something doesn't feel right anymore. For whatever reason, something doesn't feel right. We seem like a completely different team, despite having better players. Right. Here we go. Diaz. Back to Vida. Can he find Diaz again, maybe, for a little banger? No. Ah, <sighs> dear. I thought maybe we were going to grab one like we conceded against, uh, was it Leon? The second goal was a bit like that. We've not had a shot on target ourselves yet. God, Tashra, I've seen what we're doing. Players forgot to play football. Ah, oh, I don't know. Players like with the tactic. Yeah, but that's not a thing, is it? <laughs> um, oh, here we go. Never mind, eh? Oh, I don't know. I think this season's just a write-off. Honestly, something didn't feel right from the very first game we played. That game against Ammonia. And it's sort of never really recovered from that. Even that 5-0 against Villarreal, we didn't actually look that good. And now we trail. And this time, deservedly so in some respects, because we haven't even had a shot on target yet. <sighs> Fucking hell, man. <laughs> it's just a bit sad. Um, go with Quasi. Tony's been shocking. Everyone's been shocking. But I ain't no. Even Kamga's been bad. Right, well, there we go. Cohesion's still great, yeah? It's improved massively, obviously, as just consistently playing it. Oh, please, not another fucking corner goal. Oh, there's a mismatch at the near post here. Oh! All right, then, whatever. I mean... Where's Vega? Don't know. Um, just a first-time banger. Top bins. Perfect. Somebody's, I mean, but what do you do about that? That's just long-range banger goes in the back of the net. I'm like, no, it is an extended stream today. Believe me. Uh, wow, a save happened. Yeah, I don't know. It just it doesn't feel right. I mean, we played like crap today. That being said, we've still had the same amount of XG in this game. <laughs> so we've not even played that badly, but we kind of have. Playing fullback on attack. Yeah, but that would kind of be a waste of our wingers. Um, uh, that and a calamity. I, I guess, but it's just like, why can't we just concede a normal goal where they like play through us? <laughs> to be fair, like, you're going to concede goals like that. It's just, this season just seems to be full of it. <sighs> but we've played like shit today. It's not like we've played well and then had it happen. Loaded FM today. No, because it's been happening for the last three or four streams now. Um, we've just consistently looked way worse than we did before. We had that one really good season. And since then, we've played way worse than we have even in like the three or four seasons before that. Despite having much better players. Um, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. Mostly just be sheet. But Latra on Sunday, in it. Why has he just yeeted that when there was a, literally a pass on? Although we're probably going to score off this now, though. Or concede off this now, actually. Mm. Wow, he should have scored there, actually. Oh, I agree, Bev. Yeah, for sure. 
Do you know if there's a train coming? We deserve to lose this, but my oh, point yeah, is, so very sure. we very easily were now. beating teams like Galatasaray and Fenerbahce and whatnot like three or four years ago in the Champions League, home and away, with creating like three or four XG against them. So something's changed where we're only having one shot on target in a match against them now with a much better team, despite playing the same tactic. Uh, Miss Stopic, thank you very much for the follow. I think we need a new tactic that we can use, but keep this one as another tactic to use so we can flip around between them. But like an actual good tactic, not one that's like a bit of, full of memes. Just every long range shot is a goal. Yeah, I haven't managed to beat gold stake yet. I've beat orange ever since the value drop. It does feel a little bit like that, but I'm pretty certain that we got our, um, rather, tw yeah, but tweaks, tweaks don't really mean anything because we don't know what we're tweaking because I'm not really sure what the problem even is at this point. Uh, Blatro, roguelike deck builder, I guess, but based on poker as a premise is the best way to describe it, I would say. Um, but yeah, so it happens since the value drop, but also, we also had our best season ever right after the value drop too. So, it's a bit of both, I would suggest. Um, we're just conceding so many goals out of nothing. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, constant offers is starting to mess with the players. Yeah, but there's nothing we can do about that. Like, is an FM... Well, there has been an FM update, but it didn't change the match engine. Trust everybody, yeah. I mean, sure they do, but that doesn't mean they're suddenly better when we know that their squad isn't any better. <laughs> Otherwise, they'd be playing better against, like, everyone else other than just us, right? Uh, it is what it is. Um, I actually want to look at our past performances against Galatasaray. In fairness, we've actually only played them twice and lost to them both times. But that was four years ago. Um, so there is that element of things. But it would be weird that we've suddenly got f worse over four years. <laughs> to be fair, we haven't. It's a one-off game. There's not like you can really read into that. That's just very frustrating. Uh, but now all of a sudden we've lost three in a row. And you're just like, what? These aren't even that difficult. I mean, that one is. Oh, dear. Yeah. Team forgetting how to play. No, it wasn't. It was like this last year as well. So admittedly last year, we had AFCON in the middle of it, which definitely cost us. Bogey team. No, they're not Bogey team. Because if that's the case, so are Benfica, so are Leon. So is the Cypriot side we lost to in our very first game of the season in the Champions League. Uh, we'll figure something out. But I think it's going to require us just pushing on through for the time being, because we can't spend... Oh, yeah. What we do need to do, though, is have a look at Hammer's game. Because they will be playing, right? And they're three for three. They're the main bright spark so far. I just figured that us being more consistent and going back to it. Basically, it's been since the start of last season. Um, That's when it's all suddenly just become impossible to not win, but like to look even close to as good as we should be. Or how we were before, I suppose, right? So who are Hammer and playing? Away at RFS. I mean... If they don't win that, I will be livid, considering the teams that they've beaten. Uh, cool. Right. Are we pished? But yeah, I mean, if it's something to do with our players getting all these bids and it's upsetting them and that's causing the problems, then there's nothing we can do about that. Because the only solutions are sell the entire squad, which then is pointless, or that's it really, isn't it? Um, right. Let's see. Regular formation loaded this year. Uh, no, I've got the second version of the formation, the flipped version, but that's it. But I've had that loaded for ages as well. But I could easily get rid of that for a little bit as well. Uh, right. It is a bit like that, Bev, isn't it? I wouldn't try anything. We can get rid of the second one for the time being, but I feel like that's been in there for a few years as well. Um, let me clear that slot. What we'll do at the end of the season, since we're going to be ahead of the curve anyway, we'll actually have a chance to be at the end of the season. So we can do a tactics incubator stream and try to come up with something a little bit different. The problem is we won't really know how well it is working until we play anyone good with it. Right. Come on. Hammering. 6-0. 6-0 to Hammering. See, they know what to do. Trust the process. Yeah, but the process is not working. Um, I'm, you know me, I'm a trust the process guy. If it doesn't work in two years, the process needs changing. They are absolutely atrocious, but look at some of the results this season. So that means Hammerin are at, um, did, oh, we wouldn't be in there, squad bully. Just copy Hammerin's tactic in it. 4-2-3-1 Gagan press. 6-1 to Newcastle there. Um, so Hammerin are not top, but they're damn nearly top. They're only off the top. Of, they're already qualified with two games to spare. <laughs> 12 points out of 12. Hamron with a carry. I mean, you know what? I'll take it. 
they're helping us out a, a great deal as things stand. What's that now? Up to 7.5 points on the year. Still sliding a little bit, but still sixth on the... Imagine what it'd be like if we were winning. If we'd won, like, two of those three games, which we should have done, we'd be on 8.5 right now and chilling. But it is what it is, right? Oh, dear. But I think we at least need to consider the idea of a different tactical approach to have, just in case, right? Um... And we can work on that at the end of the season, but I don't want to work on it in Champions League games where there's a chance that we could still play well because we've shown that we can. But it's just something that's just not felt right for a while. What I might do, I do actually is getting rid of the tactic completely and re-importing it. It sounds stupid, but I wonder if I've accidentally clicked something somewhere in it and it's changed it and I just didn't notice when we were like messing around with stuff. Oh yeah, how long is Palacio out for? I don't think it's that long. No, nah, it's only two weeks, which means we will be back for the next Champions League game, I think. Uh, yeah, that's not for another... Oh, actually, that's pretty close. That's a lot of games in there, isn't it? Oh, well, <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. Right. Started off so well, and then just went to crap the moment we had that Leon game. And we all sort of kind of saw it coming, really. Um, and it seemed to get worse from there. Next up, we have FC Copenhagen away from home. If we cannot win that... Shot scrub on... Uh, I think our tempo is still quite low. Standard. I'll check. But I think it's always been standard tempo. About game time, right? I guess so. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I say I mean, we should be beating them anyway, yeah. Bayern couldn't beat FC Copenhagen. What chance have we got? <laughs> right. Sorry if I seemed a bit moany. I wasn't intending to be like that today, chat, but I'm sure you can appreciate the under the weirdness of when something that's been working for ages suddenly stops working without any real logical explanation as to why, right? And over a long period of time as well, rather than just like one game, right? Uh, it's strange, but we will find the solution. Everything feels better when you find the solution. Obviously, <laughs> be a bit weird if you didn't. Uh, right, so I'm going to raid Gavin. Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay. Assassin. Well, in true, yeah. So yeah, I'll see you lovely. Uh, time for a walk then. Yeah, exactly. Clear my head a little bit. I will see you guys on Sunday where we will probably lose to FC Copenhagen off their first shot on target. Obviously. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me today, friends. I will see you guys very, very soon. Hold your gun, Capybara. Bye-bye.